Why do you have to scream every time I go live? Ah, uh, you just said it again. I just, you know, I, I think you need to get used to people seeing you for who yeah. you are. Mm, no. No, I don't think I will. Disgusting creature. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a bit harsh. Yeah. Kind of mean. Boop. It's the it is the truth, but Boop. come on. Die, this. Alrighty. We are live and in... What's, what's, a, what's a live and jiving? I don't know. I need a word that oh, rhymes. God of War's coming to PC. That yeah, it is. Sure. That is. Oh, that's definitely. cool. Maybe then you'll complete it for me. Hmm. Already listed. I, I actually, it's, it's actually more likely that I will if it's on PC, yeah. It's already listed on Steam as well. Right. But presumably okay. not to purchase yet, right? No wish list, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. It feels weird, man. As soon as oh. we get uh, Bloodborne, that's just... Oh, top tier. Oh, Victory. oh and I, I, yeah. I just switched over to the store. I had Vice City pulled up. Um, yeah, Vice City is no longer listed on Steam now. They have delisted all of the old Grand Theft Auto games, clearly. What's the Aren't deal they? with that? Uh, they're doing a remaster, so if they're getting rid of the old version, you can't get them. Oh, they did that with Dark so, Souls. Yeah. yeah, so your only option is to get the new one. Is there That's legal lame. reasons for that? I don't see why there would be. No, they <laughs> like, just don't want them to buy the old thing anymore. Yeah, that, that, mm, yeah. that would be my assumption. They don't want you to buy the old version. But again, if the new version is great, like, surely it shouldn't be a problem. So, yeah, but it's just a, the new version will be sold with like a heavy price markup, so they don't want people yeah. like because those games were like a couple of a, like a couple of quid. Yeah, they were like ten like, bucks. Cause, yeah, because they were old, so they're going to want everyone to pay you know a full full game full price for uh, essentially what's going to be a reskin. I mean, it will. Well, it's going to be a fucking reskin. I yeah, I'm curious to see what they do and how substantial the changes are. Yeah, we'll um, probably have an online component, and it'll uh, be full of shitty trash, and then they'll milk that well, shit for the next five, that, uh, six, seven, eight, nine years. Something that I think that we, uh, I'm not sure if it's been overlooked or not, but the soundtrack's probably not going to be as good. Um, oh, but Vice, Vice City, though. Vice City was my favorite GTA by far. I like, love Vice City, yeah. San Andreas, I usually default to as my favorite, but Vice City would be, like, the one right after. Ah, uh, the soundtrack was, like, really formative as well, in terms of just musical taste and stuff. And it's not gonna be as good. It won't. It's well, not gonna be as good, because it's gonna cost too much money to get all of the songs. <laughs> yeah. Not well, like Rockstar doesn't have money, though, but hey. Hopefully they re-release GTA V. That's what I hope for. Hey, look, I need it on PlayStation 7, alright? You know my game They're never going to make GTA 6, are they? It's, 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 been, it's been eight years. I don't know that they're ever going to make it. Um, but anyway, welcome to EFAP 157. Yeah, there you go, I remembered. <laughs> Yay! Good and job, since it is Halloween, we, 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 we got us a spooky movie, technically speaking. You know, because sometimes I forget that zombie movies are just horror because I just enjoy them so much that I'm not even thinking about it. Yeah. Like, yeah, this is just a straight up scary movie. And what a wonderful guest to have for it. Welcome, Count Dankula. Welcome back, actually. Hello. It's Hello. been a while. Well, not really, actually, because I spoke to you not long ago on Drinker's channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and funnily enough, this film came up. Yes, yes, it did. Perhaps that had something to do with me seeing it and then being like, oh, I should show my friends this, actually. This is pretty good. Um, I figure that, because uh, I know people are going to want us to talk about the recent Batwoman news, we'll do that once, once <laughs> Dankula's gone, don't worry. Like, I feel like he's going to have no fucking clue what we're talking about. Um, so we'll probably just jump right in because you don't have all the time in the world, unfortunately. But, um... I yeah, at one point I'm going to need to like run away to like catch the, like the last train home. Oh, <laughs> as well, yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll try and just get to talking about it so you can get all your uh, perspectives and shit out with it. So I don't know. Um, I guess I should mention like th this has been recommended to me like a million times. And I just didn't watch it for no particular reason. I was just like, I'll get around to it. 
I'm pretty sure it was uh, Fringy I was just talking to. I was like, I have three. I think they were all Korean movies. I was like, I'm gonna watch them all because I should. Yeah. And um, the results were great, good, and bad. Um, and this That's one is not one. Bad. Yeah, this is the one that I thought was great. Uh, so. Oh yeah. I was like, you guys, you'll gotta see it. Um, but I mean, you know, we could just quickly be like, what, what was the uh, just initial sort of short review from 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 you peoples? Well, I guess we could start with Dankler and just go from left to right. Oh, like uh, Train to Busan actually got me interested in like Korean movies because I had people like telling me for ages oh, I should watch this. Like I always liked Old Boy, but Old Boy the only reason I was interested in that was because it was one that got quite popular in the West for how good it was. Uh, never mind the American remake, that was absolute dog shit. But I watched Old Boy and I liked Old Boy for years, and people says oh you need to try Train to Busan because there was a lot of like hype around it when it came out, and I watched it and I, I would go as far as to say that it is the best zombie movie that i've ever seen Damn. hands down yeah it's like I, i've seen a lot of zombie movies like 28 days later and stuff like that would be probably be a close second but uh train to busan i just think's absolutely phenomenal i think it's brilliant uh what about you fringy what's just initial thoughts and shinizel i remember just being really impressed when i watched it um it's it's a really great story and it feels like they tapped uh they i when it was over i wasn't there thinking ah oh, you know like you, you didn't really take full advantage of this concept you didn't really fully explore these characters and try to uh eke something out you didn't fully execute on the theme it's like a really great well-rounded story um yeah that's that's my notes please write more <laughs> please uh -huh. make more things um yeah, it's just the same same thing for me. I was when I was watching, I was just picking up lots of um, stuff where I was just like, "Man, this is like this is like my jam. This is like what I want stories yeah. to be doing." And um, <laughs> then I started getting impressed with all kinds of different things in terms of because we'll probably talk about it a bit more. But just um, ah, zombies on a train. But then they're like, "We did this and this and this, and we went in and out of it in different ways." And like all the ways that they do it, it's just like, "Man, I don't even know that there's anything left for them to do with a train. They've kind of <laughs> nailed it." Because um, you'd think that, that surely they'll just be trapped in like a cart, right? And that's going to be about it. And it's just like they do a lot of dynamic stuff in this film, considering the uh, environment. Um, metal. What are your thoughts? Uh, it's none of your business. All righty, Rex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, I really <laughs> like Train to Busan. Uh, I, like I really. Aren't that one? Huh? No, oh, it's okay. You're quiet. I gotta. Turn I mean, neither of metal? you can go first. <laughs> I, I know, I'm just confused now. <laughs> you can go, Metal. Okay, bye. Uh, no, no, nothing, no, a lot to add. Uh, really, really good stuff they did with the whole train setting. Uh, and I really liked the characters. I cared about the characters, which is a, a big plus these days. Yeah, you don't uh, get that that yeah, much. Because the characters are mostly pretty, pretty shit. So, yeah, that's it. I don't have anything else to add, really. Alrighty, there you go, Rex. Now is your time. Uh, I really, really liked Train to Busan. Uh, I really enjoyed that it had, for a movie called Train to Busan, a lot of it does take place on a train. However... Um, they were smart to not have us on the train for the entire movie, which probably would have gotten a little dull. Uh, they took us to different places. They gave us a break from it. They got us to some new settings and new environments that they took uh, advantage of, I think. All of the characters behave pretty rationally, considering uh, what's happening around them. They don't rely on characters acting really stupidly in order to just have a plot progress. Um, I really liked a lot of the acting. I liked the, the effects of the zombies and how they move around. Uh, just generally, generally very impressed with how this one turned out. I really enjoyed watching it. It was good stuff. Definitely, if not the top zombie I've seen, definitely up there. Um, I think the issue is really a lot of good ones don't really come to mind in the first place. Yeah, there's a lot of bad zombie stuff. A lot of stankers. Yeah. Because um, I was I was talking to Danker about it. I was like, so 
my the competition against this would probably be stuff that includes Shaun of the Dead, and he said 28 Days yeah. Later. Um, and then I'm already like, now what? It's like, uh, <laughs> uh, like Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead originals. Uh, mm. Yeah, I'd have to see some of the originals, uh, Return of the Living Dead and Day of the Dead, things like that. Um, I I just. I, I, <laughs> it's just like yeah, 28 weeks later was like oh it had a cool opening scene and that was it um i'd have to watch that one again to be able to world do war z oh, fuck that movie that had <laughs> some visuals hey, look if you're really sick the zombies can smell that and then they'll just run around you that was a great I've been on the internet to smell cancer coming from a mile away i've been <laughs> on the internet long enough to do that that movie, man, that that uh, that whole production, like <laughs> when YMS and his video just breaking it all down, like, hey, does Tom Cruise look a little <laughs> pissed off in this in this scene? It was one of the reshoots. <laughs> uh, someone in chat mentioned I am Legend. That was all right. Uh, I wonder. <laughs> I've said about that one though. Um, they are. It's. It, I'm not sure I categorize that as a zombie movie or not. It's like because they are. That's fair enough. Slightly more intelligent. I say slightly. I guess significantly more intelligent. To to, to be fair, because mm -hmm. um, those things plan stuff. I just I want. If you get to the point where zombies are planning things, I just wonder if um, you could still call them zombies. I just wonder how I would categorize it. That's all. But um, well, I mean, what if you had a movie that was about like somebody who is a zombie? They're dead and they eat like brains, but they're sentient. I'm fine with them behaving in somewhat intelligently. Yeah. I don't know where the, the, the line is where I draw. I was like, well, once the zombies are smart, you know, da da da. I guess they're also. To think about. They burn in sunlight as well, right? Oh. Oh, so they have sort of vampires, like vampires right? Vampires. Well, so I've, I've, I'm sure we talked about this before, Rags, but I said, like, I think they're closer to vampires than we were. Uh, no, zombies in <laughs> I mean, oh I Am God. Legend. Um, uh, yeah, Daybreakers is one of my favorite zombie movies. Uh, really good. That almost uh, contradicts yeah. your statement on what terms are, Mola. No, it doesn't, because they never use the word zombies in the film. What about, um, uh, I saw oh, the remake of like The Crazies. Monster. That's a just, zombie movie. Just, like, they didn't even listen to what kind I of. said. You know? <laughs> um, so yeah, I, if, if you get given traits, then you go categorize this as either vampire or zombie. I should be like, if they're burning in sunlight, it really tends toward one of those two rather than the other. But um, at the same time, if all the characters in that movie called them zombies, I'd be fine with calling them zombies. Um, Vampire in the zombie comics, land? but zombies in the... Zombie Land was fine. Um, yeah, I remember everyone, when it came out, it was one of those movies, it was like, um, like The Hangover. When it came out, people mm. wouldn't shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> and then I saw it, and I'm like, wow. this is all right. I tried to rewatch it, I think, like, two years ago. I Someone didn't get into it. I don't know if it was, like, in a, in a mood that day or something, but I don't know. I just couldn't get through it. I stopped halfway through or something. I don't know why. Maybe it's one of those things where, like, the, if the comedy just doesn't work you, then you're like, eh. Well, yeah, that's, like, the main thing with that film, if you're not laughing and... You All I knew is the a whole lot out of it. The second one was like abominable. I saw a, a I, Cynic Snatch I, review I, it. I, I watched I watched that actually like last week. And the, 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 the second Zombieland double tap, I just I just thought it was kind of stupid. Like <laughs> I, 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 I get it, I own it as Zombieland. It's tongue in cheek, it's a complete take the piss type of thing. But mm -hmm. like they sort of did this whole thing where there's like, oh, there's whole new breeds of zombies and there's a super zombie and it's called the fucking t1000 and like the guy empties like whole clips into it and even you know the, the the golden button to kill a zombie is you shoot it in the head and he even shoots it in the head and it doesn't die and that, that's like the whole whole shit moment and then that's that's just it like after that they die really easy as fuck <laughs> like which is why i didn't get why why build these things up like that just to have them like die so easily like that mm. bit didn't make fucking sense Oh, I was happy. I was happy. That, I was happy they brought back that little young actress back, even though she got fat. <laughs> even though she got fat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Hollywood. Hollywood usually doesn't do that. Like they brought the little girl back, but she's all grown up now. And even though she, she's fat and she had teeth like a row of derelict houses, like they they still got <laughs> her in the movie. So that was nice. Guess they did find a truck of Twinkies after all. <laughs> <laughs>
there, well, there in 2014, uh, there was Zombievers. I haven't seen that. That looks like a banger. Zombievers. Wait, yeah, Zombievers. Zombievers. That sounds fantastic. And they make, what, a dam out of human body parts or something? I don't know. Maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe that would be, uh, yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's an interesting one there. Um, oh, of course. How could we forget the greatest zombie movie of all? Maybe the greatest film of all time. Army of the Dead. Uh, 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 why to do that to us? So rude. Yeah. Because we're discussing zombie films, and that is a zombie film. I guess you could say that. <laughs> it is Couldn't really, really bad. It might have been zombies. I don't know. So, we'll probably just go chronological with this movie and talk a little bit about lots of stuff in it. Um, I figure that's the best way to do it. Uh, some people, when they go into this thing, they don't know what it is. Um, but most people know it's just zombies on a train. That's the, like, the hook. And yes. so the first thing you get is just like a little, a little bit of nice sprinkling of uh, of a wheel building in the, there's, there's leaks are a commonality, at least to some degree in this area. And it frustrates the locals. And they're like, no worries. Sure, it's fine. By the way, and just then, for clarity, we are not talking about, um, we're, we're not talking about like the vegetable we're talking about like spills and seepage. Dude, there might be they, a few yeah, people who are very, very confused. Are. Yeah, it's like, oh, leaks. I mean, they're fine, I guess. I don't know why they'd really annoy that much of the populace if they were just out and about. And I so. would probably. I imagine that that could annoy people if you just had leaks all over the place. Yeah. Well, that that that's different. If you had leaks all over the place, sure. But if like we're if just you talking walked about around it. and you just kept tripping over on leaks. Fucking yeah, leaks. that would that if we had them to that degree, sure. But that that's just kind of anything. Point. If you're just walking around tripping on them, that's anything. Cats. Um, there are loads of cats around. Uh, benches, bottles. Lots of benches and bottles. <laughs> yeah, but not like where you're tripping over them. True. Uh, so the, the, that's the thing, and our our. In our apparent just POV character for this scene very sillily isn't paying full attention to the road and hits something. Your average encounter, on your average day, you accidentally hit something while you're driving an animal. And so it's like all bloodied and dead. And so that that's nice and normal. But the thing is, it don't stay dead. Oh, well, you know, it doesn't stay uh, not moving. Let's put on it that ground. way. Yeah. yeah, which gives you the full on. Like, I, th I wonder if this scene is something that was ended up putting in, they, they put it in later, or it was always here, because if the movie had started without this, it's very normal, right? Guy at work, he's got some, some things wrong, goes to see his family, bit of a awkward relationship with the different, and, and it's only like, people look awkwardly at the, like a, a crowd at the train station, and then someone falls over, someone's get you know what I mean? Like that slower buildup, but this scene is basically like, it only takes, what, like two minutes to reassure the audience, like, something fucking crazy is going on here. And then they're there's, like, alright, now to introduce the character. There's been a few movies that have sort of done that, like, no, like, movies just sort of avoid, like, coming in with the news headlines and shit like that, like, right away, and, like, zombies all over the place, unless it's a movie set, like, long after the zombie resub like fucking thing first happened but like uh Shaun of the Dead I know that sounds weird right but Shaun of the Dead actually did it very well because yep. they did like some subtle fucking things yeah. like you were sitting like having a conversation and there was a shit ton of ambulances and police cars going by in the background it was never focused on but it was happening in the background and it was like you were focused on the conversation but there was that little hint that something funny is going on I like that like it was sort of, and they they did the same in Train to Busan, where they did like lots of little subtle hints. Although I suppose that a, a fucking zombie deer getting up <laughs> after like that, that that was a little bit direct. But I mean, when it gets to the part where like the dad and the daughter, they sort of do like the same like little subtle hints. Yeah, and there's still going to be viewers who are like, "Wait, what's what's the deal with the deer exactly?" Like, because I think you can infer pretty quickly that's like oh shit zombie virus but i mean there's gonna be some people who are just like oh god what, what's going on his pupils are all white it's like that's spooky but you know enough of um a bit of an actiony hook so that when you get the next 10 minutes or so of just character you'll be like when are we gonna go back to that deer what's going on there is that the virus like, oh, yeah. just keep you keep your audience in a uh, bit of suspense there 
Um, but yeah, Shaun of the Dead is one of the fucking best approaches. They got loads of things going on in the background while you're just learning all about Shaun. Um, yeah. I fucking love that movie, by the way. It's top notch. Top yeah, fucking yeah. notch. Um, so yeah, uh, th th that's your little hook, and you're just like, hmm. And then we get introduced to our main dude. Um, and that's the thing. The, the, there's a whole set of cast names in this, and this is going to be the same thing with fucking um, uh, Squid Game. If we get to talking about that, where I'm just gonna be calling them by more so their position in the story rather than their their actual names because I'm really shit with pronouncing yeah. them and I can't quite remember them. <laughs> so you got like we remember you, the characters very well though. That's the, the I suppose an irony, right? It's just like uh, I know exactly who this guy is. I don't really know his name because I often mishear it or I can't pronounce it properly, or I'm just like it's uh, sometimes it'll be three words in a row. Um. It's just unfamiliar territory, but he is main guy to me, or protagonist. That is the uh, the easy way. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's doing doing some work. He um, I forget specifically. Is his job like he manages accounts? He's a fund manager. Fund, he's manager, a fund manager. manager. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he's scrolling on his little computer. He's looking stressed out, and we're getting lots of information about how local wildlife is getting fucking destroyed, likely because of pollution. Uh, and um, he says, uh, sell all related funds. And um, his, his, his person's like, whoa, that's a crazy thing to do. And then um, I think before, like, like we can even understand fully what's happening here, it's just um, this is more so information that's going to be relevant probably later when we find out exactly what the origin of this thing is. Yeah. Um, we immediately get into uh, what do kids, what are kids like these days? It's just like the, yeah. the, the movie being like, yeah. We so like this, this, we like Fortnite. That's the that's the funny thing about that is that uh, the, it's perfectly fine for a parent to ask that whether or not they're um, you know, super invested in their kids and stuff. Um, but it, it's just the it's just a hint along with much more overt information. The scene later that he he and his daughter don't have the greatest relationship. He uh, really loves her, but he spends so much time working that it's very clear he doesn't fucking know much of anything about her. Um, or at least about her interests, anyway. And um, he's like immediately arguing with his wife or ex-wife, I guess, at this point. <laughs> about like, oh my god, um, the daughter wants to see her, and she's gonna go on the train on her own if you don't take her. And it's just like she's Christ, she's like fucking five. <laughs> I don't know if she can do that. <clears throat> um, but even the daughter's like convinced if she can get on the train, the mum can get her on the other side. Which I'm assuming she would be stopped, right? Cause she's so young. She would have to be no, with somebody. You'd, you'd be surprised. Maybe I would be. Right, like, uh, I think what was it? I think there's like certain rules. I know in Britain, like, uh, I think it's children as young as eight uh, can fly on their own. Damn. Oh, Damn. Man. Is it Jeez. like? But with the the knowledge think, that they meet I, someone. I think, yeah. Is it with the knowledge that they meet someone at the beginning and end of the flight, or? I don't know. I think it's something. I think it's something like that. I don't know. I don't. I don't exactly send many y young children flying to random places. You know, I'm. I'm not Epstein, right? But like, <laughs> I. I know that. I know that children can just get on trains. Like, I like. I've seen them. I've seen like young kids who are about like five or six, like just getting on trains and shit like that to go like to and from school. Like that. That I have seen. Like I. I, I consider that to be extremely irresponsible parenting. But you know, I've. I've seen it happen. Hmm. Well, yeah, um, she's almost to that point, so the dad is like, all right, fuck, I'll take you, Jesus. Um, after giving her a Wii in 20, presumably 2016, it's like, oh my god, dude. That's fucked up. You gotta get a, a proto switch that he would have access to because he's so rich. Um, exactly. But yeah, uh, the, the problem, funnily enough, because I think I mentioned this to you guys when I was watching it, I thought that the, the sort of angle here was going to be that he bought her a Wii when the Wii U was the cool thing to have right yeah. now. But it's just that he bought yeah. her something that someone else has already bought her, so it's just awkward. No, he he already bought her. He, he bought it. Wait, he bought her? Yeah, he yeah, bought it. Yeah, he bought her the same present twice. That's how little he gave a shit. Oh, damn. I actually, I, I <laughs> thought the idea was that she'd been given that as a gift from, like, the mum or something, and he just hadn't looked into it. But yeah, okay, if he bought her the same know, thing twice. No, <laughs> she, she, she looks at him and says something like, Children's Day last year. Yeah, basically, okay. yeah, yeah, saying like you bought me this on Children's Day last year. Yeah, so that's that's the thing. He's clearly not remembering details like that because he's one hundred percent in his work, basically. Mm -hmm. And 
Yeah, this is what I like, it's just storytelling wise. It's like, wait, I came here for the zombies, didn't I? And it's like, yeah, 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 wait. <laughs> what? Yeah, they get, you, they get you set up a bit with characters. They give you that little deer hook at the beginning. Like, ooh, spookiness is going to happen. Dust you wait. Or, you know, we're going to cash this check eventually. And then sure <laughs> enough, once uh, the, the, the tism start going down and we've already got people we care about. Um, and yeah, it just becomes really clear that she's continuously disappointed in him as a not only like in his relationship with her but as we start to discover her view of him and how he relates to other people um and even his mum like it's, it, it, what was cool as well is that we see him putting his clothes away and it's just the classic sort of everything is perfectly set for every day just all the outfits and stuff and uh his mum is like Daughter's like, you need to fix the shit with your wife, you need to fix the shit with your daughter, and you didn't even go to the recital, and he's just frustrated, because you know that he's working his ass off sort of thing. Um, yeah. And it's got to be one of the most stressful jobs ever, but it doesn't matter, because it's like your family life's falling apart. And, um... Get a particularly like I, I thought it was quite moving, and I was only like almost, what, ten minutes into the film, where he's just watching the recital recording, and, um... Yeah. The daughter is doing a song, and she slowly stops singing and just stares at the camera. And it's just like, ah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's really just a lot of this is it's like carried by the acting, but it's not really like complex stuff. It's just done well. It's acted well. They spend the time to make the stuff stick. They don't try to blow past it. They set it up for later. Um, yeah, with with that knowledge, you're already just, just it's just someone telling you about a guy right now. That's what this film is. It's just like this guy is just you know you, 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 he's got a problem, and that is his relationship with his family. And hopefully, he can get it solved. But in the background, you're like, so he's gonna get attacked by zombies, and that's gonna be something that happens throughout the film, isn't it? Like, the zombie part <laughs> isn't actually gonna be what this is about, as they often say, the heart of the film. Um. Yeah, he needs to do better, as Falcon would say. Oh no, yes. do as Captain better. Falcon would say. <clears throat> the legendary Captain Falcon. So he's uh just commits to. All right, then we're gonna I'm gonna take her to Busan because that's like one of the most obvious things she desperately wants. I can at least take care of that. But as they're moving through town, some weird shits going on. Just um, I think oh, they get goodness. some news reports as well as they see like a big fire. Uh, like a building's on fire. It's like, jeez, yeah, what's sky's, going on? <clears throat> skyscrapers on fire. Yeah. Um, while having a chat as well, and I think one of the things he tells her, because she says, like, how did you know that uh, the song I was singing, I didn't finish it? And he was like, even if you don't see me, I'm there. And that's going to be relevant uh, to think yes. about. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. There's a lot of little bits like that. You you just just keep them in your back pocket, sort of thing, because the script is uh, purposeful instead of just random. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find that with uh, just a lot of the scripts that I really love. It's not um, about sorting out the problem of the scene, which is like we need to get them over here. So have a character say go over there. All right, good. Now we're over here. Like it's it's, it's like, much more like let's think we, about the entire movie. Yeah, exactly. It's it's the standard thing of like typically good dialogue achieves more than one thing, and in this instance, it's like, well, yeah, this is something that would be said at this moment, but also it'll be really important later on in terms of theme and stuff like that. Yes, just hit all of those beats. Now, um, something I want to point out because I thought it was kind of amusing. Both me and Fringy on our first viewings of this film. As they show the train, everyone's boarding. We get like a a more sharper focus on um, a woman, like a, a hostess helping people in, and we yeah. both have the same thought: oh, she's probably our second main character, like <laughs> because uh, it's just like the, we're gonna start, and you see the conductor as well. And I was like, oh, he's probably a main guy too, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Just uh, you never know because when you start a film like this, where you know there's going to be several characters, you're wondering which ones are going to be the ones that end up surviving, you know, mm -hmm. throughout. So yeah, hostess lady, pretty sure she'll be fine, you know. She's probably going to make it real far. Um, and yeah, uh, everything's just setting up, people getting on, everything's pretty normal, and we're already now in case any audiences were starting to get, uh, I don't know, frustrated with, with they're still just getting a couple more characters introduced. And uh, one of them is like, there's a bunch of school kids 
who uh, is like a baseball team, I think. Yeah, that's how they all like, so, yeah. have bats and stuff. And there's like the hot girl that everybody likes, and she's interested in the one guy who doesn't want anything to do with her. And uh, that cook. bastard. And he's even the, the detail of he's pretending to listen to music, but he's not because he just doesn't want to talk to anybody. Apparently, that seems to be the attitude. Tricks. He's, uh, he's, he's, a, a, he's a nerd. He, he plays he, baseball, and, he, and he's nervous around girls. Well, I think he, I think he seems sort of fed up with her. I don't know if it was this whole like, oh, I'm playing hard to get thing because he seemed like genuinely nah. annoyed by her. But yeah. then at well, the end of the I'm movie, just, like, I'm yeah, annoyed. Well, yeah, um, nervous, nervous, disinterested. Awkward. It didn't seem. It seemed to me that he wasn't interested in her, but um, he's definitely interested in her in the sense that uh, th fucking shut up, phone. In the sense that th there's <laughs> there's an investment of like, I like these people. He's just um, there's something you can interpret about that little moment. It could just be that he's like a little bit introverted, but that's going to become an interesting Maybe. thought uh, when things kick off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just kind of like, leave me alone. Mm. Uh, and our our characters get on. It's all it's all looking good. It's it's kind of funny because if you know it's a zombie film and everyone's getting on the train, you're like, oh boy, it's gonna begin oh, now shit. any second now. <laughs> Zombies are gonna get on this train. And yeah, um, there's a woman who awkwardly stumbles onto the train, uh, and she's she's worrying about what looks to be her leg. We can't quite make it out, and she just gets into the into the restroom just when the train's leaving. Unfortunate, and uh. Oh, no. I just like this little bit where um, the I don't know the one of the sort of host people just looks up the stairs and you can just see there's lots of people crowding around something. Mm -hmm. Someone yeah. that looks like two people are fighting or something like that, and you really can't make out anything else. And you're just like, oh, that's weird. Yeah, that they're building up. Don't think yeah, that was like the little subtle hint. You don't, you know, something's going on, but you don't actually see what it is. Yeah, and then the much more overt one with the the kids looking out the window and she sees them get tackled. Like, ah, uh, and yeah, the implication being that the whole uh, town, city, whatever, is getting overrun just as this train is leaving. So, people on the train, they wouldn't necessarily have any idea. Um, but yeah, the the lady who stumbled on, she's just making all the noises, and um, it's the first sort of examples we're getting of the makeup. Which, my God, the makeup in this movie is fucking great. Yeah, um, it is really impressive, and. It's not just the makeup too. There's a, a lot. A lot of stuff comes together to make these zombies feel thing and spooky. Um, the way that they move, the way that they look, the noises that are added—not just from them, but some of the ones in post, just like is cracking. And it's really, uh, it's really kind of it's it's spooky. Yeah, I'll try and show a couple of clips of that while we're going through for the for the people who can see and hear. Uh... The screen as well because there's just so many examples that i really like but uh definitely impressive um but yeah then uh, we have a, a businessman character who's immediately like some some weirdo is in the in the toilet get him out like mm. which is just nice on rewatch that you realize the first thing we see that guy do is like there's a weird person get them away <laughs> like, yeah, don't like him. as well like, thank you person and um Main, uh, main character's just gone to sleep while his kid's walking around, and she's spotted this as well, and so you've got, like, host guy, businessman, and the little girl just checking out this this bathroom, and for a moment we're stressed out as an audience, because, like, Jesus Christ, there's a fucking zombie in there. They open it up, and no, it's just a hobo man. <laughs> because they tricked us using filmmaking, those bastards. I hate that. And, uh, yeah, it's just a hobo guy, and he's just saying they're all dead over and over again, I think. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's, uh, reassuring and so yeah um we're still sort of at that point just like that was almost like a fake out but uh what's happening with the other girl um and i think the business guy says uh if you drop out of school you'll end up like him and yeah the little girl's yeah. like my mom says only like bad people say that and then he was like did she <laughs> drop out of school <laughs> yeah she must have dropped out of yeah. prick <laughs> And yeah, there's plenty to infer from that. If it's just like, uh, if you look at the actions of Hobo Man and Businessman throughout this, and that it's like, you wouldn't want to end up like Hobo Man. And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> just in terms of the heart both of those characters have. Uh, but yeah, um, and it turns out Zombie Lady's already exited the restroom and she's just walking through the, uh, well, one of the 
carts and um or cars rather i guess uh she makes it to the other side before she collapses so again it's, it's sort of like you can't help but think like oh man if someone would just stab her in the brain we can save so many people right now <laughs> just do it quick <laughs> uh yes and then the little girl ends up at a different restroom with someone who i can only refer to as chad i think Gonna have to be his yes, name. I think Chad is the apt name. Chad is, yeah, Chad is appropriate. Yeah, and he tells her you're gonna have to use a different run because uh, my girl's busy in there for a, for a little bit. And it is funny because he's like, "Hey, honey, how's it going in there?" And she just bags on the door, and he's like, "Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay I'll, I'll leave you be." Sure. And I guess it's playing with us a little bit again because it's just like the fact that all he hears is a bang. It's like, could there be a zombie in there? What could be happening? Just keeping us nice and just this, that, and the others going on. Suspense. And, um, yeah. And then Hostess, our second main character, we're sure of it, spots the, the girl on the floor and is like, holy shit, I'm gonna call for help. And she's just going, blah, 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 blah. which blah, blah, blah. Um, this is the benefit all zombie films get. I assume you guys sort of see this as well, where the first set of people to get bitten, you get them for free because humans are very helpful in times like that a lot of the time. They will pick someone up and be yeah. like, oh, gotta get them straight up. It's like, you okay, miss? It's like, oh gosh. And um, I don't think the zombies have any bonus strength in this, right? Some stuff does that. No, they don't seem to. Um, there's a lot of hand to hand, like pushing and shoving with zombies. I think they're, I don't think they're particularly strong like or well coordinated. Well, they've got the main, they've got like the major downsides as well, where uh, they can't see in the dark. Like yeah, even yeah. even if even if the room is like somewhat lit, if like, it's Batwoman Bat dark, they can't see in it. <laughs> Batwoman yeah. dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think uh, the only buff that we can presume that they have is pretty good endurance and rage. Yeah, yeah just that rage yeah. will get them. Exactly. Yeah. Um. And yeah, we got more characters who are just observing that the, there's riots breaking out and the like, huge amount of police are just everywhere. But it's unclear what's happening exactly. Like, hmm. Yeah, and then uh, Lady's dead, or seemingly, and Hostess is like, "My <gasps> goodness gracious, we got to get someone here right now to help." Blah blah blah. And there's just this this cool. And this is like it just feels like a zombie moment where it's they're slowly rising behind them, and you can get yeah. them cracking yeah, sounds yeah. and stuff, and the oh, neck I... just looks back. I don't think it is that a, was that a slow rising one or is that one of the ones where she like that so that because they do this thing like three two or three times in the movie where zombies just kind of on the floor and then they lift up in this weird mm. way and I they used wires or if they got a legit like contortionist or someone to play those roles as the zombies do this weird standing up motion um that's I, I kind of want to look into it and see what they did because it, it looks really creepy and unnatural the way that they just sort of stand up. I think it's both because uh, there is a scene, I can't remember what one it's in, and it's in a what's it called? Kingdom, that's what it's called. And uh, uh -huh. on that, yeah, oh, yeah, the Korean mid mid oh, medieval oh. Korean zombies. And there is a scene in that where there's like this female zombie that's like got her neck like snapped and her arms all contorted and shit and like she's on the ground and she does this like spinning weird spiral she's almost like an insect but as i was looking at it i was like that wasn't cgi that bitch actually did that <laughs> like, <laughs> so, like, and i was like what the fuck man and i this... so it must be a contortionist or something because that was fucking mental yeah, this some weird this one Tim Burton Cirque du Soleil shit this one yeah. looks mostly normal, but there are ones in this, and I'm going to try and show them when we get to them, but the one I remember is... <laughs> the, the soldier zombie. with the dislocated shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love dude, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of the ones I remember is uh, they're running toward a zombie who's facing away from them, and it breaks its neck backward to look at them, and then it flips its body around, and then it starts running at them. I remember being like, fucking hell, what is going on? <laughs> like, what did you just do to yourself? It's like, it's that desperate to grab people. It's a really quick way to spit around. Uh, so yeah, uh, she's... They're, form, she's... They are, they're a function over form. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, the, the, uh, we know that she's probably going to be in trouble, and then everyone's just like hanging out and chilling out in the in the high school section, and they just see this woman slowly walking through with another woman on her back, <laughs> biting her neck. It is the most <laughs> yeah. like, what the fuck? And what's great about it is that 
even when she's on the floor doing it, they're still, they don't know what to think until the zombie, uh, I guess, completes the, uh, the bite thing and just rises up and the music kicks in as well and everyone's like, oh fuck, this is actually, like, terrifying. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And, um, yeah, uh, there's a lot of interesting sort of, like, what I like about this film is that all the humans react differently. Several of them are frozen, several of them are already screaming, and then several of them want to help. Like, just diff yeah. different sort of uh, things will happen. But the most interesting one is, um, I guess if I call him introverted high school guy, he's, uh, immediately tries to help when one of his friends gets attacked, while everyone yep. else sort of stays yep. still. Our instant, instant characterization, right? Yeah. Just, just add water. Like, Very important. Yeah. Every action everyone yeah. takes in action scenes something that I find frustrating in a lot of uh, mainstream stuff. They don't understand that when you have people do nothing, that is characterization. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and the, the and hostess action action. on the floor yeah. immediately changes into a zombie. The shit that she does with her body as well, while yeah. just screaming <laughs> and blood's just spraying. It's just like, oh my <laughs> god. So yeah, um, and that's just a signal that this shit spreads fast. Very fast. Um, and so they. Like so I, I think that is one of my quickly. complaints about the movie is that it seems to be inconsistent with how. F I don't know about that. What reference would you give? I don't know. I uh, so the first woman she gets she gets bit on the train and she's going for. Well, maybe it's like once they like if they die then well, it's immediate once they die maybe that's where oh my, definitely uh, yeah it's, it's, is. so when they bite them it's standard zombie rules at least for modern times which is that this bite is going to kill you over time it's like a timer and the second you die you're a zombie okay all right all right, all right. That but was uh, thing. i don't know if they have walking dead rules where you become a zombie whether or not you're bitten if you die um i guess we never get examples of that but i think you do have to be bitten in this that would be my guess yeah and uh, yeah, I would think I'd, I'd give as best faith as I can to this and be like, it'll take longer if you're bitten on the hand than if you're bitten on the neck, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because, stuff. Uh, yeah, there's, there's examples of that, like, in the movie. Yeah. As well, exactly. yeah. Um, because, yeah, we see people get bitten to fuck, like, on the neck, and it takes, like, a couple seconds before they back up again, versus people who are bitten in the hand, and it'll take them, like, two minutes or so before they change. Yeah. Which, uh, but just fast in general. Because I think Walking Dead, it can take like days or whatever, right? If you're bitten on like your fingernail or something. Yeah, <laughs> like, I think so. It takes a while. Um, yeah, and I think that was the same for Resident Evil, actually. Or at least Resident Evil 3, it took a while for the pimps to change. Yeah, a bit on the chest, right? Yeah, and it still took him ages to change. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how, good. though, how, um, how good Rodriguez? those films are at probably uh she got bit in the neck the arm and her hand i think she got bit four times in resident evil one i can't remember but uh i can't remember either well either way uh the natural assumption here is that violence is breaking out people are fucking trying to kill each other for some reason so everybody needs to move into the other carts but uh the more you look at it it's like these things are not people or at least they don't seem to be acted like people and like yeah the one of the main sort of host guys just watches someone just nibbling on someone's hand. Just like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's where the high schoolers get sectioned off on the cart in the other direction while he tries to get everybody to move back, back, back through the, yeah. the other cars. And what's cool about this is that it's panic. It's insane. There's screaming and like that. And then it just cuts to our main character who's really far away, just looking through the, the restrooms to find his daughter and everything's just quiet. It's like, yeah, mm. normal. Makes it yeah. A big trend. It takes a while for them to get there. It's the film a, does a good job of establishing where on the train uh, people are, um, which is more difficult than it sounds because when you're on a train like that, every, every, I guess, uh, was every compartment, every section. Mm -hmm. what, what are the. Well, they call them cars, of, I think, in this. Cars, yeah. All, all the cars, they look the same because the train. But they do a good job to say I'm over in such and such, and they refer to such and such cars, and they 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 will pause to show on the wall what the number is of the train to make the characters aware of it. Yeah. So you never feel like you're just lost, like you don't think, have a uh, sense of scale or direction or location. If, there was a, there was a part round about there was sorry there was a, there was a part round about this bit where I was sort of trying to comprehend. I was like, hold on, how did they get zombie outbreaks like on either side of them? 
on the train and it was during a first watch through I never noticed it but I noticed that when the dad's like sitting someone actually runs past him holding their arm and they've just yeah. came from the part of the train where everything got fucked up and obviously they've been bit and they're sprinting down to like the opposite side of the train and then obviously they turned and fucked up that part of the train and that's how they had zombies on either side of them and that was something that I completely missed on a first watch. Well, and it's, um, like I said, the high schoolers, they go the other direction right at the beginning. So they lock themselves on one side of the train, there's zombies in the middle, then there's our main character and then past that there might be more as well. It's like a... There's lots of splits, and that uh, a lack of awareness of that actually gets some people killed later on because they don't know where the safe cars are necessarily. Yeah. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm just curious if it if it's anything to do with um. I guess it's because there's a lot of um things that you can latch onto when I think it's framing um and where like the camera is positioned. It always it's always on the left hand side of the, or for the most part, it's on the left hand side of the train. And, like, you can see on the other side the direction that the train is going in pretty clearly so that it's just not confusing. I think it's just really clear visual vocabulary that helps people figure out where everybody is. Yeah, I um, think. You're gonna visual want to avoid... vocabulary, yeah. like a versatile verb? Yeah. I, I'd imagine you're going to want to avoid confusing people when you... It's like so many cars and so many characters at different positions. You're going like, to have to do the exactly. best we can to let people know, like... I was just making sense. Well, it's just give people something that they can latch onto that they will subconsciously figure out where people are. Um, and I think, yeah, I I'm, as as the scene's playing and I'm looking at it, it's, yeah, it seems like th there were just ways it was communicated that were kind of subtle. Mm -hmm. And then you can sort of figure it out and they give you enough information to figure it out. It's just good filmmaking, really. Yeah, and... Uh... Uh, is finally caught up with the main character's car while he's looking for uh, the daughter who's now behind him because he yeah. was almost going to check the restroom but he went past it and what's cool is just this is just normal loads of people are screaming and rushing while other people are just like what is going on what are you running what's from what's going on like, yeah. and then one guy comes through and he's holding his neck and he just staggers into a seat and um so it's, it's already just getting to pay off now. It's like the guy who's been desperately telling everybody to move, to get out, to move, to get out. The hostess catches up with him and just bites him immediately. And it's like, down he goes. Yep. Uh, all the sacrifices he was making got him killed just to help other people. Which, uh, hmm. probably be pointing that out as we go. But yeah, he gets uh, thrashed out his neck by the hostess lady. And um, I feel like this is a great little moment for not only just confirming information we already had, but definitely for our protagonist. He watches someone get bitten several times, and then she turns immediately, grabs someone else, bites them, and then the one that she started on immediately gets up. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, yeah. yeah, this happens quick, and it's fucking no fucking around, and it just pans all the way back to him, and he's like, okay, <laughs> like I understand. <laughs> it's like. Yeah. It's like fucking. I know exactly what is going on now. Thank you for showing me like an accurate, exact timeline. Of what I'm <laughs> and uh, there's just this really cool shot of. I'm guessing yeah. that it would have been done with attaching almost the camera to the actor, the zombie rider, yeah. I guess. But he's um, running at a, and they build up the the music as well. But he's just chasing, and it's it's a particularly intense shot, like. He's yeah. just thrashing oh. while chasing our guy, and then um, it probably quickly... has like some kind of some kind of belt attached yeah. to his uh, yeah. waist with like a camera strung in front of him, and um, it becomes a little bit more intense too because right behind him is just many zombies. Like it's already completely infected, like most people, because it's just really hard to escape them, especially in those numbers, to the point where they pile up on each other. Um, yeah. Which is, I thought I, f I mentioned this to you guys, but I thought I first saw that in Game of Thrones, but uh, that came out 2018, this was 2016, which I mean, now I'm starting to think, I think they just took it. Um, <laughs> which doesn't surprise me, because season 8 was a fucking disaster. Well, but World War Z <laughs> did that shit too, though, so... Um, I'd have World, to... World War Z did it very gratuitous. I was yeah, going to no, say, World War Z is the yeah, one, yeah. right, where they make a mountain of zombies to climb over... That's yeah. Right. yeah, That's the only scene I know from that movie. Yeah. <laughs> so I watched it, but that one got around. I was like, oh, look at them doing a fucking zombie mountain. Did, like, okay. did they do the yeah, one they, where, like, a group is sprinting and they smash into it? Like, they create a tidal wave. Is that something that happens? Yes, in? they oh, do. Okay. When they're uh, running around. And, um, they're running around in the city, like, after they've climbed over the wall. 
and there's just yeah a tidal wave of zombies but it's all cgi <laughs> and like and yeah. they they do that in busan but it's only it's a, it's not a tidal a couple wave times. It's, it's, no, I think it's, it's yeah quiet. it's not it's not as ridiculous well, like there was there was two times that, it's much more like bowling yeah. pins where they they clog themselves yeah. up and fall over straight uh -huh. away it's not like yeah, yeah. in when they stop at the train station in all yeah. the uh, military ones, when, they, yeah, when the glass saying, yeah. breaks, I think they had a practical, just a big pile of just like what, uh, faux bodies, essentially, yeah. that was underneath a lot of the actors as they were going over the top. So it looked really good that, you know, it didn't look out of place. It, it really did give that appearance that they were crawling all over each other. Yeah, it wasn't like some exaggerated like that wouldn't happen. Like sort of nonsense like they did in World War Z. Like it did actually look real. And as for like a waterfall of zombies, there was a th there was a part where they had that, and it was shortly after that scene. But it, it wasn't ridiculous. It was still believable. And it's the bit when the soldiers were falling out of the upper window to on top of yeah. the train, like that. Yeah, that was reasonable that bit and that's where you got the soldier that like broke his shoulder and was running around like a fucking mongo yeah and, and he was funny yeah we're already supposed to assume i think that just some of the ones at the front trip and then the ones at the back are so desperate to get over them they go up above yeah. them and then more and more and it just clogs and they mm -hmm. crash down and uh, yeah these these uh zombies they're not uh they're not graceful no um <laughs> they're they're ferocious and yeah this is the this is the one i was talking about where uh he, our guy is running forward and he sees a zombie in front of him who hasn't spotted him yet but then he like breaks his head back flips his body and then comes at him and it's just like with the sound effects especially with like how pumped Ugh. this scene <laughs> is it's just oh it's so intense you're just like fucking yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, and it's so uh, claustrophobic as well which uh, this movie definitely benefits from Not the fact that we've got super fast zombies and very little spaces to run mm-hmm um, and yeah, we finally... the movie doesn't. Even though it takes place in a train, did did you feel like the movie was? Because I never felt claustrophobic. Oh, I definitely in did. In plenty of I movies, did, yeah. yeah. I think that's. I think it's a subjective tism. Um, could it just? I don't know. It, they did a good job at making it feel enclosed, but you never got like the <gasps> like they've got. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Um, yeah, just loads of references, um, all the times that they try and, you know, when they get on, they realize that they are in a car that's between two with broken doors that have zombies in each of them. It's yeah. just a moment of, like, the only option we have is hopefully getting into an even smaller space that they hopefully don't realize they're even in. Um, obviously mm -hmm. when they're crawling through the, the top parts, like, um, how enclosed everything gets, it's just, yeah, they, uh, uh, and there's just so little escape options. Uh, meanwhile, in a lot of zombie movies, you'll have the scaring. The the scariness of the the fast zombies is that you do have plenty of places to go, but they will still be right behind you, sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, um, you know, it's still probably like half the train is chill, and we finally catch back up to where Chad was, and he's just like, lots of people are running around screaming, what "The fuck's going on?" Which is still just this cool element that it's like infecting the train from one side to the other slowly. Uh, yep. And yeah, um, I love his response though. Like at first, he's sort of like grabbing the woman and just holding her back, and he's looking at her like, "What the hell's wrong?" Like he's just sort of staring, like, "What the fuck's going on?" And he's trying to sort yeah. of be chill about it. But see, when he looks behind and sees all those zombies and the women, he just starts throwing punches. Oh, it's, dude, <laughs> it's so legendary because like he does, he does everything. He's super normal, but also leg like a fucking great person because um. The two, him and his wife, just see a guy biting a woman, and it's so bizarre that they freeze for a bit, and he immediately goes to protect his wife, because that's who he yeah. is. And then she's like, fucking dumbass, help her. And he's like, oh, yeah, like, okay, I, yeah. And he's just like, hey, weird guy, get off the lady. <laughs> like, stop it. Yeah. And then, stop uh, it. yeah, then he just comes and he's like, whoa, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> like, why? <laughs> this is like how you deal with, like, a drug, I guess? You're like, hey. Yeah. Um, Are you nuts? <laughs> But yeah, uh, as a, uh, our character just sneaks by him as he's being attacked, yeah. and uh, I think because he's got a child at that point, you don't have to infer anything necessarily, but you can yeah. definitely see on a rewatch that's like, yeah, he doesn't fucking care about any of these people, he's just protecting himself and his daughter. Um, and yeah, there's just this great moment where he sees them all, and he's like, honey, you can run, right? <laughs> like, just... 
oh shit, this is this is not fun. And uh, she's also a fucking great actress in this, by the way. I guess they all are. They're yeah, all great. Um, yeah, they're very good. Yeah, just selling that uh, emotion. So, of course, these two are now at the end of the line. Oh, that's another... Just the way that fucking zombie gets up. I'll uh, try and show that yeah. as well. <clears throat> nice and creeptastic. And yeah, um, it's a little bit undersold because the audio as well really fucking nails it for this. The clickety-clacking and squelching. But yeah, there's uh, several zombies. Even, even that... Yeah, that frame. <laughs> fucking hell, man. That was... <laughs> that's good. And so, um, yeah, a whole bunch of characters are making it into, like, the main car that's got the main set of survivors left. Our protagonist gets in, which means the only people left now are Pregnant Lady and Chad. And, uh, Businessman immediately is like, close the fucking door on him, do it, close it right now, fuck him. And, mm -hmm. uh, our protagonist tries, but it's not quite working, he needs to sort out a manual, uh, release, I think. And, uh, then he's got a choice to make. Will you lock these two out? Or will you wait for them to get there? And it's like a, it's, it's such a classic moment for all these kinds of films because it's just a great way to create tension, right? Because we as an audience are like, oh, we want them to survive. Um, yep. And I think, I don't know about you guys, but I was just like, yeah, he's going to let them in and then he'll close it in the last minute. That's probably how it's going to go. Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen as well. But he closes them out. <laughs> it's yep. just like, wow. <laughs> and uh, Bam. you can right tell. Their faces as well. You can tell there's enough time to let him in, especially yeah. the pregnant lady, but he's just like, nah, it's too risky. Bye-bye. And fucking Chad just punches one out. <laughs> like, as they're getting closer. <laughs> he does not give a um, shit. But the thing is, you can't lock these doors. You can only hold them, and so she just opens it back up, and I'm assuming yeah. uh, our protagonist just gives up in terms of preventing them. And so, yeah, they get in, and they close it right before... And the scene sort of calms back down. That's this. uh... Because we realize these guys ain't smart, uh, the yeah. zombies, so they can't open, they can't really use handles or access things w however they work. Um, and so there's no way to lock the door, and so we just sort of decide, like, I guess you can just leave it as long as they don't activate it, right? And then uh, they quickly realize, like, they're desperate to get to us because they can see us. Like, I was just impressed. The, the, the wife immediately tosses water onto the, uh, the door and puts newspapers on it. Mm -hmm. It's just like, damn, that'll do it. Are those smart characters we're having? Oh, yeah. weird. What? Uh, and so, That's yeah, but yeah. Um, the, the zombies... It shows, shows a lot about the characters in this movie, because they understand what is happening. It's like, oh, apparently there's rules to these guys, or they, they can only act at a certain, uh, in a certain moment. Yeah, like, like let's oh, leverage the open. fact that we've got brains, and they don't. Yes, like, oh, we're just gonna close this down? Oh, this thing is not moving, it's just running against it. Oh, just let it go. Oh, let's just shut the doors and cover it up. It's like, okay, they're chill now, they can't see us. Because yeah, the zombies, stupid. they do calm down. They're just like, eh, there's, there's no humans, what the fuck? They're very, um, they're very in the moment sort of creatures, you know? They just don't live for much else. Yeah, they're, they're like, quite eh. the Epicureans. Yeah. So we could you 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 could say this this starts the arc of our main protagonist, I guess. Well, yeah. yeah. So immediately he's like, "You owe me an apology." And he's like, "No, yeah. I don't." This is like, "You fucking asshole!" I'm gonna feed you to the zombies. And he's like, <laughs> he hey. grabs him, doesn't he?" And he says, "You guys weren't the only ones in danger," which is an argument, but when and he says, "What a piece of work!" Because if you just look at the context, like you could have easily let us in. You decided yeah. not to. And so, like, you know, it's it's definitely a more so I'll feel better about myself if I say I did it for the sake of the, the, the many, all right? That's totally why I did it. it wasn't yeah. out of fear for myself or anything. Um, and so, yeah, uh, they just, all the confirmations are happening. We've got a good, like, f probably 40 characters still. So it's just like, man, we're going to have to thin these numbers, you know? Can't be having this many people in, in the climax. So what, what's going to happen? We just find out that uh, they're on their way to Busan, I think, ultimately, but there's going to be potential for stops, and they find out that one of them is safe. Yes, yeah. We're like, that's where we will go! Um, and the conductor's just like, that's, that's the, I guess, what thrusts the train? Because someone might argue, like, why not try and get off at any place? And I think it's because they're trying to head to places that the military have control. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they, they're told that the first area they're going to go to has that, and... Uh, Oh, look at that as well. Uh, Chad asks someone to give up their seat because his wife is pregnant, and they do. Mm -hmm. Sacrifices people make. 
Uh, and yeah, uh, I think that we get intermittent a couple of calls from um, main character with different different people. He's obviously he's talked to his like uh, he's got a friend who's connected to the army, and someone who uh, someone who works with uh, the company. Right? Are they the same person? I can't remember. I think he's talking I think, to the same uh, guy. I think it's the same guy. Yeah. Um, and then of course his mum. Who the last thing she tries to get through to him before something's clearly going wrong with her is to take care of that daughter of yours. Mm-hmm. Because uh, yeah, everyone everyone's getting fucked in this horrific world, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, his mum his mum just starts going blah 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 blah, and um, it, it sounds like she hangs up as she does that. So you have to picture that she, as a zombie, was like, "Oh fuck this call, I don't want to <laughs> deal with it." Or Great phones, blah blah blah. As she was turning, that was the last act. I will hang up on him. No need for him to hear me uh, gurgling. You know, sometimes it's awkward, you know, with mm -hmm. these calls. Like, do I hang up? Do you hang up? Who's, like, uh, someone's got to be the one up. And I think she made the right call by avoiding that kind of... You know, we, we've all been there. We've yeah. all been there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so um, it's just a matter of, all right, got to get to this next. Oh, I think they actually slow down, don't they, in one stop? And a whole bunch of people are immediately like, help! Yeah, let me in! And, uh, it's just cruel, because you have- all of our characters have to watch loads of people get eaten in front of them. It's like a showcase, because you can't stop to help them because the zombies are all over them. It's just like, Warmed yeah, up. if you didn't need more evidence that, uh... Shit's fucked. This, this is bad. <laughs> We're in a bad position right now. Um, and yeah, there's, uh, just, I think, footage on the news of just loads of people all over the place getting fucked up by, uh, by zombies. Mm-hmm. The, just confirming, though, that they are a little stupid, and, uh, that's the, that's gonna be a main advantage, I'd imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and then, uh, they, uh, they, they're all moving forward, I think, down the cars, and, um, they decide to sort of sit in an area, and um, his daughter gives up her seat for an old lady. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the old lady and the sister, yeah. Who are also going to be relevant characters. Uh, oh, yeah. And he's like, okay, daughter, you fucking, you got to stop, like, worrying about other people. You got to worry about yourself. And uh, the subtitles literally have him say, like, you got to, like, chill on the whole being so good thing. Like, watch out for yourself. Yeah, but... At a time like this. No, that's what I mean. Important. It's not it's not an unreasonable thing to say that you need to yeah. look out for uh, yourself is what his goal is there. But then she says uh, Granny's knees always would hurt or whatever. Uh, like the yeah. idea is just a, a basic understanding of decency that she yeah. doesn't want to give up, basically. Mm -hmm. and you can tell it's like struggling for him to... Uh, square it away, I guess. Like, yeah, yeah, I guess you could like, give up a seat, but like, seriously, you gotta, you gotta put yourself first. And there's just uh, actions to sort of judge throughout the film about that in terms of what the right thing is to do in all these different circumstances. Um. Yeah, and I think uh, we just see businessmen talking to people about uh, different stops because he's very much uh, on his own sort of adventure as well. And it reminds the main character to talk to his guy about just get, trying to get more information as well as an option in the next stop. And um, while he's doing that, the first thing Chad says to the daughter is like, is that your real dad? <laughs> 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 and his wife's like, dude, like, what you... <laughs> why would you say that? <laughs> and uh, yeah, they just confirm his job. And he's like, oh, he's a bloodsucker. <laughs> um... Yeah, there's there's loads of little bits like this in the film where it's just standard dialogue, but it, 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 it makes the characters that much more endearing. Um, yeah, good stuff. And yeah, she just like offers, I think, a little sweet, and then they're talking about the pregnancy, and uh, the, the, the 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 like she puts her hand on it or something. And the chat is just like, I made that. I made. That. <laughs> <laughs> you can He's just a really down to earth kind of guy that you like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I Very think um, he snuck up on me a little bit. We'll get to the moment where I, I was like, holy fuck, this guy's great. But uh, on rewatch, I just like I immediately like him from the second he's on screen. He's, um, 
yes, just right. f fully understandable as a person. And yeah, um, it's just a nice little human moment of like, hey, a baby's on the way and everyone's happy about that. It's like, yay, mm -hmm. in the middle of the zombie apocalypse. Woo. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, he gets the call and uh, the friend is like, I'll get you out while everyone else goes with the main army. And what's going to happen with them is they'll be quarantined and put through all kinds of different checks and stuff. While if you go a different exit, we can get you out straight away. So he's like, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. um, and he goes through it all, but what he doesn't realize is that Hobo Man was listening to that conversation, or at least he, he realizes he was there too late. And so mm -hmm. he's just going to hope that Hobo Man is kind of just a nobody crazy man. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm sure he doesn't realize anything. Yeah. And, um... You can't help but think, of course, about, like, oh, you're going to get you and your daughter out the nice and safe way while the others are going to have to go through uh, whatever else. Just like, I don't know. Um, I guess you could pull out some people additionally if you wanted to, or you could not. It's, But he's committing to just him and his daughter. Yeah. And so it feels like an act break almost. And uh, we, we, so we're arriving now at this uh, stop. And the hopes are that the, the army's got this place under control, and uh, it's GG. And it's kind of funny, because it's just like, hmm, we're a third into the movie, and they're trying to say that the army is going to sort us all out? Like, hmm. Now, yeah, are they going to do the, oh, the army's one, just going to kill everybody sort of thing? Yes, there are concerns. There is suspense. And yeah, uh, the, the station itself is just blank. Nobody meets them. It's just like, yeah. hmm. But, um, of course, they start getting out, uh, but Businessman doesn't head out in that stop. He immediately goes to the uh, conductor and says, we gotta leave now, go to Busan. Mm. And then he even says, uncouple it and just take us. And it's like, I think he says how many people can be um, taken in the in the main compartment. I'm not sure that that's because he wants to save as many as possible, rather he just wants to know that he can definitely go in there. Yeah. Because um, I don't think he cares about anybody but himself. Yeah, um, doing a good job of making him very unlikable in this movie. Oh yeah, uh, whenever I see people talk about this movie, they fucking hate that man, and I understand that. <laughs> we'll get into it. Yeah, very um, hateable. I see. I think I, I don't know if we mentioned earlier the that school uh, guy, the baseball guy. He immediately grabbed a weapon when he realized there's danger. He immediately grabbed the uh, yeah the baseball the bat. bat from yeah um, the um the surviving the high schoolers. All the guys have baseball bats, and the girl is just st staying behind. Yeah, uh, the main. High schooler guy. Um, yeah, he grabs the conductor and he's just like, "How many can fit? We gotta go right now." And he says, "Not only can they not uncouple it without like a you know special uh, station, I'm assuming to do that, mm. um, but he also says he's not leaving without you know other people, which is uh, baffling to businessmen. <laughs> like he yeah. has to deal with this from several people in like, the what story. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, I'm back. Oh, we just we, they just arrived at the station. We were just talking about how uh. Uh, conflicting sort of motivations for characters, right? Because, like, a lot of them just want to get out because they believe this place is safe. Uh, the conductor is just like, I want to make sure we get as many people as possible. Business word is like, can we just uncouple and leave? Me and you? <laughs> like, I just want to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a little, little trip. Just just me and you. Um, and so, yeah, because this is it's a fucking zombie horror movie and everyone is chill at this moment, they're sort of just <laughs> on their little escalator just being like, all right, then. There we go. You just sit there like, oh, man. <laughs> what's gonna go yeah. wrong mm -hmm. and uh yeah uh he obviously makes sure to just try and slink away our main character with his kids while everyone else is going the main way and even uh chad notices and he's just like oh just ignore him let him do whatever the fuck he's doing <laughs> um but unfortunately for him hobo man overheard the conversation and in an attempt <laughs> to justify why he is following them he then lets the girl know what they're doing there and then she is like we've got to tell other people and he's like, fuck that. This is for me and you. And she like tries to leave and I think he stops her. And then um It's like, you you gotta help them. And he's like, no, we don't forget them. We're on our own. And she like stops and just says, You already care about yourself, that's why why mum left, or whatever. It's like, oh fucking hell. <laughs> like mm. bring bringing the zombie right now. We got zombies to deal with. And yeah, before we can see any like, resolution of that, Chad notices there's a riot shield with some blood on the floor, which, to be fair, could, you know, that could exist for any reason, really, but it's still just a little bit like, hmm. Mm. <laughs> Why would that be the case? 
Like, I guess someone could have left the riot shield on the floor, I don't know. And yeah, uh, Hoberman spots someone that's looking to meet them, but you can see he's walking a little, a little odd. Uh, so our character's getting there, and it's just like this, this suspense building of like, wait, someone's about to go get catastrophically wrong. And you can just see all the soldiers outside, standing. And then Basically as the... Away from the station as well. Yeah, because yeah. you see them... <laughs> they're, on the, they're on the fucking it, escalators going down. It's so yeah. great. <laughs> it's so yeah. fucking yeah, great. Yeah, because you see the... Because they're on escalators going down to, I guess, like the plaza or the open... The main area, the open space. And so you see the feet of the crowd outside first. Yeah. And you could just tell by the the feet and the legs that they're... That they're zombies, the way that they're just sort of stumbling around, and they're all in the yeah. boots and the camo, and you're like, oh shit, and you're like, this is really, really bad. And so, <laughs> it's uh, once you get low enough, you can see their faces, and then the zombies spot them, and they all start spreading toward them, and it's like a conveyor belt feeding them humans, because they're just cycling <laughs> down. Yeah. And it's, oh, it's so unfortunate. Um, but again... I like Ch Chad just immediately grabs his wife and lifts her over it, and it's the way yep. he does it. It's like he just goes, nope, and picks <laughs> his <laughs> wife and sets her over the it's escalator fucking, and jumps over. <laughs> it's honestly great, because even she is like, whoa, what the fuck are you? And he's just like, go, 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 go. Like, <laughs> we're not dealing with this shit. Uh, uh, just quick action, smart guy, and wife first. Really hard not to love this guy already. Um, yep. And yeah, so obviously a lot of, uh, let's call them fodder, get get wiped out here. A lot of bonus lives our characters have get taken out. Um, and it really whittling us down to the people we know. But um, yeah, the high schoolers are obviously trying to trying to get out of there too. Conductor spots it from the top of the steps along with businessmen. So everyone's just panicking, trying to get back to the train. That is now the goal. Um, and so coming back to main character... Uh, even his, like, bonus exit has been overthrown with zombies, too. And it's only yep. just when he's, he gets a phone call from his friends saying he can't get through to his men, so something's fucking wrong. And, um, it's something, that, it's something that he, to be honest, if he was trying to help him out, like, it's something he probably should have mentioned to him. Oh, yeah, the station's safe. I haven't been able to talk to any of my men, though. Probably not know what I'm about. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, I guess the problem is we don't know exactly when this happened. It could have been recent, I guess. Um, might have yeah. been got through to him, and then, uh, sort of like a montage cut on the train, but, yeah, um, as soon as he sees the zombies, he immediately looks back at his daughter, and this is, this is a moment, because the thing about films like this is I'm never quite sure what's gonna happen, because they don't, uh, adhere to tropes as often as, uh, Western movies will often do, and so, like, there was a chance here, I was like, is the kid gonna die? Are they actually gonna kill her? Because of, <laughs> like, because she has loads, of, well, I say kill loads. Kill that kid! There's a zombie yeah, running, zombie running right for you, and you're just like, "Holy fuck! Is this gonna be the horrible reality that our main character has to watch his kid die in an attempt to mm -hmm. save it?" But an elbow comes right <laughs> in when it needs to from Chad, who, uh, yeah, that just means that he took the time to help a kid in right. when trying to escape himself. I'm just like, oh, what a legend! Yeah. And um, yeah, he gets. He has the MVP this entire fucking movie, though. Oh, like, yeah, he is. He absolutely is. He should be everyone's favorite character. It's obvious. Yeah. Hands yeah. down. <laughs> and so, um, uh, he and the high schoolers are just getting everybody in that they can, while the main character gets attacked by a zombie, so he's, uh, a bit busy. He shoves a book in its mouth, which, uh, again, just, yeah, that's probably a smart move. <laughs> like, I guess yeah. I have to bite down on that. And, uh, we get a complete, glorious role reversal, where... Uh, Chad has got the door, it's locked, and, um, our character is stuck on the other side. And there's not even a hesitation, Chad is immediately like, come on, get the fuck out of there, asshole, run. Yep. And, uh, I like we that also... he takes time to call him an asshole still. That's, yeah, it's that's, great, uh, he calls him an asshole good. throughout the film. <laughs> um, and yeah, Hobo Guy actually helps the main character, so he puts his coat on top of, uh, the zombie, and because the zombie yeah. can't see him, he basically just is completely confused, which I think is a nice way of sort of partially setting up what we're going to be getting later. And um, the main character, he gets in like half a second before all the army of zombies gets in. Like that's how much yeah. they put on the line to save him. And uh, it's really interesting yeah. to think about in terms of the whole sacrifice stuff because what knock-on effect will that have? What will main character do as a result of uh, people t saving his life and stuff? 
But yeah, we get to the really unfortunate part. A lot of people in their rush to get back to the train open a car up and a bunch of zombies pour out yep. of it. And they're just like, fuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and I totally see that happening in real life. Absolutely. When you're that terrified, yeah. Yeah, it just runs like, I want to yeah. get back in there. It's like, oh shit. And then you're dead. And so they're getting dragged in one uh, direction away, but more of our main characters are making it back onto the car that they were in in the first place, and the conductor is just watching until he doesn't going to have to decide when he's going to leave. And I think he does it via, he's got a host that's left, and the host has got a, a little uh, walkie-talkie, and he'll tell him when to leave. But even at this point, the businessman is like, let's go, and he's like, no, we've got to save more people, you fuck. What a piece of shit. <laughs> and then we get the part where the zombies burst through the window, all the bodies just flying down. And um, one of them that falls, this is the one that Dag was talking about, <laughs> He's, his arm is like broken behind his head. Oh yeah. And he, um, he separates the two grannies. I, I don't know why this bit made me laugh so much. Like, <laughs> it's, it's the way he runs. The, oh, yeah. oh, just... <laughs> the poor guy's just hungry. He just wants to eat some yeah. meat. Whether or not his arm is fucked. Um yeah, uh more and more people just getting on and, and at this point they're all closing the doors on the zombies as they get there, so it's stressful because they're only just making it, but at the same time we know that two of our main fucking dudes are all still in the actual station. They're not even at the train yet. Yeah. Yeah. So uh yeah, and um, we get another moment of they get onto a um, desperately main character's wife, old lady, and kid get onto a car. Nondescript. We don't know. Like they just get onto one, and uh, right before they close it, hobo guy is like, "No, no, no, let me in too." And uh, she too. decides she'll save him. Wonder if that'll have repercussions too, in a good way. But yeah, they close it, and it, like seconds before the zombies get there. Um, and so everyone is safe. And then it just cuts back to uh, the doors that our main characters are struggling with. And it's just like, oh, there's so many people left <laughs> to get the fuck out of here. Um, and businessman is like, we can't wait any longer. You've got to fucking go. And they tell the conductor to start up the train, which is just like, at this point, you don't. I think you want to be on the train rather than off it at this station. It's um, yeah, not exactly safe, theory, regardless, yeah. but <laughs> I guess if yeah. you're in a safe car, you know. Um... And yeah, the, this whole time they're just trying before they leave the doors. They just want to get the 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 man, like the manual lock in, so that they can move away. Which wouldn't have been so hard if he had chosen not to save uh, protagonist man. Just uh, just interesting how everything's sort of flowing out and gets it locked up. And they basically crack through it straight away because of the pressure yeah. from all the zombies and they like headbutting it and stuff. Um, yeah, and then we get another unfortunate moment where the high school kids has to watch all of his friends die because they went first without uh, sort of checking the, the land out and they just get hit by a bunch of zombies. And an interesting detail is when he sees that they are done for, he freezes. Mm -hmm. And he's like just stuck. And uh, it's actually our protagonist that wakes him the fuck up. It's like, gotta get going. And uh, really whittling down the characters now. We, we, we dealt with, we got very few left. Uh, but we get a scene that's pretty fucking badass. The three characters are just sprinting to try and get onto what remains of the options for the cars to jump on. And uh, the two at the front being high school get a kid and, and main protagonist, they just get right on. But Chad's a little bit too far behind, so we can't quite reach him. And there's this part that I think has consistently confused everybody just for a second. <laughs> yeah. Where Chad, like, moves away from the train. And you're like, what are you doing? And, uh, Where are you going? And it's the same sort of uh, knowledge as the POV of our main character. He's like, why are you doing that? We're like, why are you doing that? It's like, because there's three zombies headed right for him, but he grabs a baton and a shield and just fucks them up. Yep. <laughs> what it's a wonderful. Legend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then continue sprinting until he can get on with them. And it's just, uh, that was the point where I was like, I don't want this guy to die. <laughs> like, yeah, I never want I was, him to die. I'm going to live forever. Um... He's an action hero. Absolutely. Yeah. And so everyone's back on, with probably more right. than half of them having died. No. <laughs> yeah. Like the, 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 the overwhelming majority of the train is fucked at this point. They get yes. wiped out on the fucking escalators. <laughs> yeah, the, so this, the way it works now is like, the conductor's car is obviously fine, the car behind him is fine, the car behind that is fine, then loads of zombies, then the... 
uh, the wife and uh, the kid, then loads of zombies, and then our characters, the main ones. It's, uh, yeah. Everyone's been split into these sections now. Um, the two cars behind the conductor is the, uh, where, like, the main set of random people are. Because, yeah, our, our peeps just realized the car they got onto is in between two other ones that have lots of zombies on them. Mm -hmm. And the doors are smashed. So, uh, they realize the best thing they can do is get into the, uh, restroom, basically. Yeah, wife immediately goes for that one door as well. Yeah, she, she's quick thinking, which she was yeah. before as well. So, not a great situation to be in, and because phones still work, there's no reason for them to not to, they get to notify our main characters that they are stuck, I think, they're in like car 9, and uh, our guys are in car 12 or something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what's about right. And there's zombies between them. Because this is a film that doesn't forget that phones exist. It's, insane, it's really neat. It? And yeah, what's, uh, what's kind of cool here is, um, Chad almost has a sense of like we like we can't reach him because of that, and in it's our protagonist that immediately takes off his coat in preparation for taking out the zombies. And Chad is like, "What? You gonna you just gonna go gonna go through him?" <laughs> He's just like, "How do you fucking do that?" And then in the background, yeah, got, Chad, Chad sort of did it in a way where he's like, "You're you're gonna go through them, but but you're a pussy." <laughs> <laughs> Look at your twig arms. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, in the background while they're discussing that, uh, the high school is preparing to uh, wrap shit around your arms that makes it harder for zombies to bite you. Which is uh, genuinely shocking to see. Cause it I've really was. So much zombie content where they never care about that. Oh yeah, like it, it's it's the smart thing to do in like a zombie apocalypse because you get so the, the like there are tropes where there is shit that is so fucking obvious everybody knows the bites fuck you up so get some leather or some plastic or something to go around your fucking arms right that's normal or it's always the one where it's like oh better better not look behind me for like a whole thirty seconds and then you get that silent stealth ninja zombie that nobody heard or seen. Even though they're talking to a character who can see right over their shoulder, and then they get fucking grabbed from behind and bit in the neck. Like I'm happy that there's none of that fucking bullshit in this. But this this is smart. This is like a, a smart thing. This this just makes me think that like Americans are retards and like Koreans <laughs> are like really smart and would actually survive in a scenario like this. Um. So they're setting up to basically try and reach through the zombies, or at least they're not going to try and kill them, they're just going to try and get through them fast enough and then close doors behind them, that's the idea. And, yeah. um, he says, uh, you're a fun manager, you're like, your whole thing is leaving useless people behind as he passes them a weapon, and I just think that the implication there is just like, you understand that in this environment you're one of the most useless people. <laughs> yeah. It's just fucking great. And and because on top of the fact that he's been saved several times by Chad at this point, it's just like got some thematic shit going on. Yeah, then we just get this shot of them preparing as a trio yeah. to take on the zombies. And it's just like this film's cool. <laughs> like, also yeah. Chad right in character is like, I'm going front. It's like, yeah. alright, yeah, makes sense. I believe yep, yeah, you're going front. <laughs> Um, and yeah, and they go through a tunnel, and he's like, we've got to wait until we get light back, so that, you know, easier to see. And it's interesting how that's going to play out soon enough. Um, and yeah, so the idea, I think, but is to just... Takes the shit out of them. <laughs> it's, it's, when he, it's when he picks one up and just slams, slams him into it. the fucking roof, man. <laughs> I love that. I fucking love that bit. Oh, he just, he hits so heavy, and like, you actually for a moment yeah. are just like, man, these zombies get fucked up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's a big guy too, so you can believe it. You yeah, know? he's, um, I think once he takes the coat off, you can fully realize like, oh, he's like, he's a big he's jungus. A big like, yeah. Yeah. Um, he's a big guy. And so, yeah, the main idea here is just, if they can breach through them, even for a moment, and then close the door. That's all they need to do. It's not about like making sure they stab everyone in the head so that they get through them or whatever. Um, and they're, they're working out really well. And uh, it's just uh, once once you get your opportunities, you go through. Um, unfortunately, they are successful. They get through, but the next car is filled with the high school friends. Yeah. Which uh, uh, high school a boy just completely freezes. And so they start trying to deal with it. And this is another time where, um, I'm assuming you guys might have been on the same page, but they, 
they do the, the film thing where they show the two people struggling, the two people struggling, cut back to our guy who's frozen, cut back and back, and I was like, oh, he's gonna, he's gonna overcome it, right? He's gonna, mm -hmm. he's gonna spring to action. But no, it's, uh, they go through a tunnel, and it, uh, the zombies get completely confused. They don't know where the people are anymore, and it's, uh, yeah. it's just a weakness they've added to these zombies for this universe, that when it's dark, they can't actually see people. And that's the main way that they figure out who they're attacking. Um, secondary being sound. Yeah. So, yes. ironically, even though it only gets Batman, Batwoman dark and the zombies have wide eyes like Batwoman does when she uses her <laughs> night vision, they <laughs> cannot see. They don't have night they vision. Just, they don't have, yeah, even though their eyes look like they don't have night vision like Batwoman does. Um, and yeah, I just think it's neat that they're avoiding the tunnels and it's the tunnels that actually help them. So it's like a... Mm -hmm. A little bit of, um, like, yeah, damn, you know? Interesting to think about. Uh, and yeah, I think, uh, what's cool is something falls, and it's like, it slightly disturbs them, and so our character uses the bat to hit something pretty far away to move them all across, and I was just like, oh my god. Stop showing me people learning stuff and using it to their advantage. I'm not used to this. Terrifying. It is terrifying. It isn't fair. Yeah, and so they get past uh, car number two. And I think uh, with knowledge they've learned there, they decide, what if we, you know, put the number of your phone into my phone, then activate that phone once we're halfway through, and then they rush to the other side, and then we can get through. Um, yeah. They basically, like, they defeat each of these cars in different ways. It's just like, damn, film. Like, you're, you're really just... How dynamic we're being right now in terms of figuring stuff out as we go and characters just trying to use their heads to best create scenarios that can benefit them. And again, just um, maintaining all of the, the effects, the the darkness, and they're keeping track of their uh, the GPS on their phone to know when the, train, the tunnels are coming up. Yeah, because it's really Small useful boys. and there's smartphones. They're using, their, they're using the technology that they have to do yep. things, it's great. And yeah, they reach um, the wife and kid. And it's just a nice little moment. She even slaps him. <laughs> or like hits him. He's like, ow. Yeah. A nice little touch I, I saw when he threw away his, uh, the Chad's phone. He has like a, that's like the picture of the uh, shit. How do you call these uh, pictures? Ultrasound? That they do? Ultrasound picture of, of his baby on his phone as a background. You yeah. can see that when it's ringing, it's like, ah, The nice detail right there. Yeah. Because he made that, don't you know? He did make that. And he did very well, I assume. Um, but yeah, they get into the other restroom until they... Um, well, you're going to have to wait for the next tunnel, which I think they say is two minutes of tunnel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's going to be a decent chunk of time to try and do something. And what's cool is... Um, Instead of it being like strictly logistics and exposition and just like where are we going next and stuff, they, they lock themselves in and he just goes, Hey, jerk, feel good seeing you, kid, thanks to me. <laughs> <laughs> and it pads over and he just goes, Why is your ringtone so shit? He's <laughs> <laughs> just like, What's wrong with my yeah, ringtone? Yeah, it's gotta change it, yeah. <laughs> How do I change it? How do I change it? <laughs> He's like, it's not bad. How do I change it though? <laughs> and the kid laughs and he's like, you think that's funny, you little rat? <laughs> like, how tall are you? And he fucking like, puffs up his chest. It's just, it's just nice in terms of, uh... Yeah, it's a little bent. Nice chill human shit. Yeah, and so they, he's just figuring out where the tunnel is, and that's how they're gonna deal with the next section. And, um... You know, I think it's enough evidence at this point that as much as he did lock the door on them in the beginning, he's absolutely a, a person who's willing to sacrifice to help people. I think Chad has noticed that pretty strongly at this point. And so he says, um, I bet you never get to play with your daughter. Like, there's a thing about how committed he is with other things. And he's like, when she gets older, she'll understand why you work so hard. And she's mm. like, oh shit, man. Um, stop, stop being such a good guy. He says, dads get, you. dads get all the shit, but no praise, but it's about the sacrifice, right? It's like, movie? 
Yeah. <laughs> You're doing a theme here. You're doing like yeah, this movie, theme. Yeah, what you doing? How do you make me feel? I just want to see people get eaten by zombies. Yeah. I'm imagining an alternate universe where people only know like the shitty movies we get here in the West. And they just think, oh, this isn't how movies are supposed to be. This is this sucks. <laughs> it's been a lot what of time. Doing? They spent a lot of time telling us who these people are. Like what the fuck? I, I do I do like how he ruins it after it though. Like they're looking at him as if like what a what a profound and amazing thing to say. And they're looking <laughs> at him and he goes, What? Did I say something cool? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I can't help but feel like it's a little bit deliberate in that He's, Chad's not got long left, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, you're like, oh, yeah. you're making me really like him. Oh no. Um, and yeah, because we get the scene of basically uh, he calls the girl for the high schoolers and tells her we're on the way, let us in, and then she's like, excellent, we'll do it. And then everyone in the car starts getting way paranoid, and they're like, the fuck do you mean, let the people in? You want us all to die? And mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, but I mean, eh. And they're all, this is like this shot where they're all just staring at her. Like, you must be insane to just let random people in. It's like, I mean, but... They <laughs> they were us, you know, not long ago. It's like, yeah, I guess. And uh, she like begs the, the host guy to do something about it, but even he's just like, I don't know, man. And he was the one that was saying yeah. we have to wait for other people. And I just think that the idea here is that um, the more catastrophic the, everything yeah, gets. Appreciate it. Um, the more paranoia is seeping in, and the more you just like you want to reduce any chances of dying. Yeah. The spreading that fear. Um, but yeah, the so the they've got to get through. I think like two carts or even one actually. They're pretty close to where they got to go, but it's filled with zombies, and so the plan is to go up through where the the luggage is kept. If they can just cycle through that while the tunnel's on, they won't be spotted, and if they make limited sound. Should be okay. And um, they throw something behind them again, so it just drags all the zombies up, clears the way, and honestly, watching it happen, you're just like, oh my god. <laughs> you're just cleverly using your environment and everything that you have at your disposal to get past these zombies. And um, everyone's... Scary. What's interesting about this to me is protagonist gets off, and then he lifts his daughter off, and then... Uh, uh, Chad helps his wife down, and so they're both very concerned about them. Nobody helps Hobo Man get down. Oh like, yeah, he's nobody's like charge, you know. Like it's just you know you'll be fine. You got he's this. He's kind of on his own. No one's yeah. like yeah. Everyone's got their yeah. And uh, he slips on the little covers they have on the seats, which um, yeah, unfortunate, but uh, it makes just enough noise that it's it's clear that we're in trouble now. And there's this cool moment where the little girl goes to help him, and protagonist holds it back and does it himself. It's yeah. like, oh shit! And it's uh, developing. Oh my god. Yeah. Um. The unfortunate thing is they're almost out of time, and there's this this cool bit where the tunnel finishes. All the main characters they move to the sides, and uh, our guy pushes the hobo into into the seats and pushes himself back into the seats, and so they all clear out. Before the zombies can see them. It's just a nice little bit. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, the idea is, like, the zombies are getting closer and closer and closer, just naturally. And so, the protagonist just commits to, we just gotta run. Like, that that's our only thing here. And, um... Not that it makes a huge difference. But, uh, he steps on a can, which would be enough noise to be like, yeah, now we're, now it's urgent. And so they start running, and because of the fact that they're urgent, they couldn't quite get the door closed. Which means Chad's trying to hold it closed, while they they all they need to do is just get into the safe cart, which which theoretically is just opening a door and closing it, right? And then everyone's safe, and 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 Chad can can get in there too. Thing is, with the knowledge that the girl gave them, they have made it so that it is really hard to get through to that door now. They've like um, yeah. attached like st uh, strings to it, and they. Uh, I think I don't know if they have anyone holding it yet, but it's a relatively clever idea in terms of just giving it more strength. Unfortunately, you've now pitted humans against humans, and there's a glass yeah. door between them. Like the zombies might not be smart enough to know exactly how and when to smash a thing, but they've got the baseball bat, and so 
It's just something I really enjoyed while watching it, because in an attempt to absolutely prevent any infection, they're going to just screw everything up now, because the only yeah. choice our characters have is to break that door down. And that's because of the, the paranoia that they can't let them in, sort of thing. Um, and yeah, even Chad is just like, fucking smash it! Like, we gotta get through. Uh, while he's trying to hold... I think a, a zombie's head gets through the door, so he can't close it any further yeah, than that gap. And what's cool about that is, while they're figuring out that door, uh, protagonist goes back to help him with that door. While um, they're figuring it out. And yeah, he, uh, he hits that woman's head, and she goes down. And she looks like she's down for the count. Still wiggling though. So this is like, this is this something. And yeah, so they start smashing that door. And the thing is, you know that the second they smash through it, that's a liability, right? It's like, uh, but the thing is, you got no choice. It's like, otherwise they'll just die mm -hmm. anyway. And yeah, the door's, he's losing his grip on the door, so he puts his hand on it. And the woman who was knocked down isn't quite out, actually. And so she turns back up and bites him in the hand. Yeah. Oh, oh no! And it's just, yeah, that's like the classic drama you get with zombie movies. The second someone's bit, everyone knows what it means. And it's just like, yeah. they're still yeah. there, they still talk to him, and still fight. It's like, yeah, but you're dead now. <laughs> you're on a timer. Um, and yeah, so they managed to finally smash through it, but uh, the second door from the other side of the cart, a businessman closes it on him, but he gets an arm through. So now it's just a matter of uh, strength from either side, which you're dealing with a lot of people on one side and a lot of people on the other. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so the, the, it's just, as people who have seen this movie, and I gave, I gave them all homework, so they should have, should have watched this movie, okay? There's no, because I wouldn't say this is the best way to consume it, this is just us trying to find ways to sort of go through topics and stuff, but yeah. it becomes clear that Chad's not going to be able to hold it for much longer, and it's cracking, which means you got to get through that next door right now, or we're fucked, and, uh, mm -hmm. Not to mention that the wife is, like, a couple seats behind, just watching them, and Chad realizes, like, oh shit, she's probably not gonna want to leave me. So you're gonna have to take her. Yeah. That's what so... he says before she goes as well, because there was a bit earlier in the movie, back when he did the whole, I made that, <laughs> like, scene uh, where the wife mentions he hasn't chose a name yet, because appar apparently it's a Korean custom that the dad chooses the name. Oh, okay. Apparently it's something like that. So basically, as he's leading the wife away, when he turns around and shouts out the name of the baby, it's fucking ah ah. I can't handle mm -hmm. that scene. Oh, I, yes. can't, I can't. Big yeah. feels because oh yeah yeah. He's been nothing but a good man throughout. Yeah, and he even says, "Hey asshole, save her." <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> Um, and yeah, uh, you think about how protagonist left him for dead in the opening, and at this point he's struggling to save his own life because he knows it just he's gonna have to leave him behind. And it's like, man, you pulled out an arc, I guess. Mm, what? Yeah, it's and good shit. Well, I just quickly discover that the most meaningful parts of this film, they're not really to do with the zombies necessarily, that's just the hook. It's like, come watch it for the zombies, but then you're like, oh, these people though. Yeah. <laughs> you come for the zombies, you stay for the character. Yeah. And, uh, uh, going into this, I didn't even know it was a zombie movie. Oh, I, I prefer that people wouldn't know, just because it's a little bit fun to let the film introduce it its own way. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's it, it was uh, it's it's got to be good for a hook, right? A lot of normal people would just be like, oh, "I'll check out a zombie movie on a train. Let's do it." Um. Yeah, she's dragged away, and uh, door smashes, and he he still isn't out of Chad moves yet. He's still got one yeah. left. Yeah. He picks up a zombie, after fucking punching a few of them out, he picks up a zombie, <laughs> turns them sideways, and just creates a barricade, basically. Yeah, he's <laughs> just like, man, you're epic. He's um, a tank. Man's yeah. just a fucking... If it was left for dead, he would turn into a tank. Like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh... And yeah, uh, protagonist gets up to the door, is helping push it, and I think um, the two there's two people on the other side of the door that are trying to pull people off, and a couple of them realize how fucked up this is, mm -hmm. and so the door finally opens. They get in, and they close it right as uh, Chad's barricade falls apart, and um, you can call that a victory, I suppose. They get in, mm. and uh, we just get a really great moment of. 
uh, main character just going fucking nuts on the businessman, being like, what the fuck's wrong with you? We could have saved him. We could have saved them. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, we also lose uh, Grandma's sister as well. Right, yeah. Um, it's a little, logistically speaking, it looks as if he grabs the the wife and the daughter, but he's just too late to grab her. Or at least I think she's like, you're not going to have enough time to grab me. And so she doesn't make any real effort. He just uh, has to end up closing the door on her. Mm -hmm. And yeah, none of that would have happened if they hadn't, if they just let them in. But there is an argument to say like, you know, like if we like had a survival sort of situation with a bunch of people, it would be like if if a bunch of randoms wanted to come in, you do have to consider a lot of stuff. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I think, but I think this is why this is so effective because you can relate to both sides in some way. Yeah, it's just that we've been hanging out with these guys for so long that it, exactly. it's just an absurdity to us that you you. But, you, but if if you would be in there, you don't really know what's happening, like you don't know how. The disease, I guess, is transmitted or everything. It's like, man, yeah. can we really, we really take the risk and let them all in, and then we're all infected ourselves? Like, hmm. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it, there's there's reason to it, but there's also just crazy levels of paranoia. And when he he yeah. like punches him and says, "You, you motherfucker," he immediately is like, "He's infected! Look at him! You can see it in his eyes!" And he's just looking at him like, "Motherfucker!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> serious right now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, there's, he does his little, like, speech, and then the crowd is relatively silent, and it pans, and then you just hear a voice go, like, get the fuck out of here, and, you, and the camera yeah. struggles in terms of, like, wait, who said that? And it's such a great sort of, like, moment of, this is the crowd, this is the mob, they just want you gone. We don't even know who's specifically saying it, but that's how they feel. They're all, like, yeah. tearing up. Some of them look, like, angry and very distrustful. And so, um, I think our characters are just like, at this point, may as well just fucking not be with these people anyway. Yeah, it's not worth it. Um, and yeah, you know, you got like, a pregnant lady and a kid both crying their eyes out. And there's just this shot where she's not even looking at them as she's crying, the wife, because it's like, oh yeah, she's probably thinking about Chad right now. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so all so sad. Yeah, and uh, I think Hobo Guy is like, the first one point. to be like, okay, fine, we'll go to the other cart. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, just... no. He's probably the mo he he's probably the one who's most used to being told to go and yeah, leave. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> yeah, don't you think about that. Exactly. Even in the apocalypse, no one wants <laughs> No one likes the hobos. <laughs> <laughs> I save people and everything. Love me. Yeah, um, so they all move to the other cart, uh, they close the door, and What's interesting is the paranoia from this group of humans means that they decide to secure the door between them and the survivors before the door between them and the zombies. They all work on making sure that the other survivors can't get to them. Which to me is like, man, I feel like the film is saying like the, their attitude as being pieces of shit ends up being the reason that they die because the other door isn't secure yet. And um... Uh, a, a character who never, nobody's really paid any attention to is quite upset yep. that she just lost his sister because of that. Um, and she's just having a little moment to herself about, like, you fucking idiot, always helping people before yourself. Which is, I think, what their relationship was from what mm -hmm. we see. That girl yeah. just looked out for the other one all the time. He's like, what was the point of that? So stupid. Yeah, even uh, yeah, even earlier when they were deciding who gets to sit down on the chair, yeah. one of them was like, "No, you sit down. You're older." You know that sort of thing. And yeah, and she just looks on at the selection of people, and they're all just fucking yelling at each other. So I think she gets a vibe of, you know what, feeling a little bit nihilistic right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, businessman notices it just too late. And she opens up the door, and it just, I think it just cuts to, like, our survivors just hearing screaming and blood, like, just getting splattered across the door. Because, uh, the zombies are in. Mm -hmm. Um, and something I just want to bring up now, because I think it's kind of interesting, uh, we find out that the host and the businessman survive. And I think on first viewing, I was like, how did they do that? 
But what's interesting is uh, soon after the zombies attack, they actually go through a tunnel. Nope. Mauler's robotin for me. Not for me. Uh, he's not for me. Yeah, not for me. That's, that's only you, Rugs. Um, I guess. Well, yeah, I was just saying, they go through a tunnel soon after that happens, and so presumably a uh, businessman and yeah. host would have used that opportunity to get to the uh, the restroom. Which, uh, I just think is neat to think about. Super neat. And so this was a part, I think, because at this point, I'd seen, like, the first third before I decided to rewind and just watch it with Fringy, and I think at this point, it's like, man, it feels like we've had a whole movie now, but there's still a third of the film left. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess, yes, other stuff has got to happen. Um, and so, of course, they are heading to Busan, but uh, the tracks are fucked on, like, a, a... I think it's just, like, a train yard before getting to Busan. So they're going to have to trade trains. Yeah. And that seems like a relatively simple prospect, right? In theory. But nothing without is... Without an apocalypse. That's simple, nothing is, is simple. <laughs> And yeah, just pacing-wise, we just calm down for a bit and just accept the fact that things have gone to shit. Mm. Um, and something interesting happens. Uh, we get a call from the guy who works underneath the main character, and he theorizes that it's a good chance that this infection originated with their company. Um, and he like starts uh, whimpering on the, on the phone, saying like, "Is this us? Was this our fault?" And like, this is just. There's no way to be sure, but uh, I felt like, at this point in the story, I was like, oh man, all the bloodsucker comments, the leaving the weak behind, not helping yeah. them, the the company itself, in aid of becoming hyper-successful, has caused incredible damage to the world, um, and all of the things that have been happening in terms of, like, in a microcosm throughout this story, getting some big thematisms right now in terms of sacrifice yeah. and oh, then yeah. um this is right after chad has died to save all of them and our character starts washing the blood off his hands yep which i was like theme, <laughs> theme. <laughs> and yeah just, just trying to reconcile this is the situation he's in and there's also a little conversation he has with his daughter where she uh she said she couldn't sing because she couldn't see him um, yeah. in relation to the recital. Mm -hmm. And uh, that she practiced the song just for him. Because she's, of course, going to be changing her mind a little bit about him after the recent events. All the things that he's done. Yep. That's right. Some... Uh... And things to keep in mind because they'll be relevant soon enough and then the yeah the train has a sudden stop which is because they've reached the train yard and there's a fuck up on the track so now they got to switch trains and um, our conductor is just looking for one that's viable uh while our main characters just get out and start looking around I think another the interesting thing another... with the conductor oh, oh go, go, go for it no you, you go i was just gonna say something i like when the conductor is giving a speech is it's like you get the impression that he doesn't even know who he's giving it to at this point. Yeah. Like, oh, it's, yeah, he, yeah. It, he's sort of saying it, and he, he's, he's relaying the message, but, like, the look in his eyes is almost like, I don't actually know that there's anybody left, but I need to do this anyway, you know, just, just in case. Just let them know. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, and we, it gets revealed that uh, the two of them are definitely hiding in the... Um... In the restroom. So that is our totality of our characters. It's like, how will yeah. this play out? That's um, a, just an, another, another neat thing to stay on the train theme. We're still in the train yard, have to change trains, but we, there we go. get a little change of color, little little new thing that's not inside of the train. We just go outside for a little bit, even though we're going back to another train. We they very much the maintain theme. the train. <laughs> like the, yeah. Uh, just try to trade station, trade yard. It's like, we're still changing it up. Yeah. Also, hi, Rex. Nice Hello. Show. Welcome back. Are we off the train? We're just, yeah, we're just getting into the yeah. train yard now. So, yeah. Obviously, panicked looking around. Um, but the thing is, all the doors are closed. So, you know what? Feeling pretty safe. Feel, feel, feeling pretty good. Uh, Conductor manages to find, while avoiding a couple of zombies, the, there is a train he can use, much smaller one, but hopefully this one can get them the rest of the way. 
thing, things are looking up. And, um... So, we cut to businessman, who looks out of the restroom and sees there's still plenty of zombies, and there's still some that are pretty close, too. And, um... Closes the door again, and the host guy is like, So how's it looking out there? And he's like, Well, yeah. We, we can... We can do it? Yeah. He doesn't have the most convincing face in the world. <laughs> Not <laughs> really, no. He's just like, yes, it is clear. And, uh, yeah, I think you can see this coming <laughs> from quite a mile away. It's like, he's going to push you. Yeah. And he does. Uh, and it gives him the opportunity to get out. And like the asshole he is, he doesn't lock any doors behind him. Of course not. Which means like, I get out of here. that wonderful selection of zombies is now going to be following him. Um... Meanwhile, uh, a runaway train enters the uh, the station and uh, screws with, I guess you could say, like the... Because this is the thing, I think at this I'll point there's not going to be coordination for, like, what train should be coming in at what points. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be crashes, potentially. Uh, even the conductor spots, it's just like a train that's on fire, it crashes in and it separates high school people from the rest of our main characters. And um, we do the the way they split this is we get their story first, which is they go to a uh, try to get through a train. They open one door and the other door is stuck, and so they have to just smash the glass with one of them handy little glass smashes. And unfortunately for them, uh, businessman finds the same opportunity with them, and he th grabs the girl and throws her into the zombies to try and save himself. Immediately. Yeah, not even hesitation, and. Yeah. Uh, High school kid doesn't see that that was the reality of the situation, just that she's being bitten. And so he gets the zombie off, tosses him out, closes the door, while businessman finishes breaking the window and gets out. And uh, this is the last of the high school people. As in, uh, from his POV, I mean. Like, um, and so he's absolutely losing his mind, because that's all of them dead. Poor guy can't handle it. Yeah, he just sits there, waits for her to turn. And then she bites him. Yeah. Good people, it's... shitty ending, because businessmen happen to bump into him. <laughs> like this. Simple yep. as that. Uh, and yeah, then he gets out and he spots the conductor with his, uh, with his train. And, uh, I, I mean, I'm curious about it. I guess we'll explain that part first, just find the visual for it. Yeah. He, um, he's a great dude, businessman. As a, as a bit over. And, yeah, I uh, like the conductor guy as well. He always is kind of like, let's stay as long as we can. Let's, you know, help some more people get on. Uh, like, oh, the, the rail is blocked. I got to go out. I got to find another train and get us another one. So he goes out and does that, you know? Uh, I like the conductor a lot. I, I was being ironic when I said the businessman, but yes, the conductor's a great guy. Um, he sees yeah, businessman, yeah. and businessman steps on a, a, either a rail or a stone wrong, and so he falls over. And conductor decides, I'm gonna I'm go save him. Because he's a nice dude. And the second he tries it, businessman tosses him into the zombies to try and give himself more time. Yeah. Um, but the zombie jumps in, in a way that he's on top of the conductor, but bites businessman. Uh, it's not quite clear, but you definitely see a reaction from him, and I think you hear a sound cue as well. Um, but then he immediately goes for the conductor. No help from business, and he immediately just goes to the train. Another in his kill count. It's just like, fuck's sake. <laughs> He's a real piece of work. Though, conductor so. down. And yeah, what's business cool about um, main characters is that our guy was knocked out for a little bit, but when he wakes up, he's just got a pane of glass between him and just loads of zombies because of the way that the train has uh, fallen. Um, it's just an interesting visual for him to wake up to, I guess. Mm. And so, um, he just sneaks out of the bottom. Like, yeah, this will be easy, but there's, uh, obviously with the train being damaged, uh, parts of it fall, and it blocks the entrance, and so we've not he needs time to be able to move that before he can get anyone else out. And, um, just, it's just, watching at this point, having businessman storyline versus protagonist storyline, and the differences in terms of everyone's actions, we get, a uh, obviously businessman's just killing everybody to get further and further, while the glass smashes on one of the sides. And, because we're basically dealing with a child, a pregnant lady, and hobo man. So, 
when you got that many zombies heading towards you, uh, yes, because he's been pretty self-preservation-y, Mr. Hoberman, mm -hmm. at this point in the story, up to this point even. But um, I think he realizes, as much as many people would, either all three of them die or he does. Yeah. And so he decides to put himself in the way. Also kind of returning mm -hmm. to favor, I guess. To... Yeah, he's been saved a couple of times in this storyline, yeah. so he saves them this time. And it's, uh... But some good people, except for the businessman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, there's a there's just a great little moment where the, the kid goes through, and before the the wife finishes going through, she just shares a look with with Hoberman, because it's it's obviously his he's the reason they're alive, and he's not going to make it. Like, damn, yeah. dude. Sad. Um. Yeah, which means we're really down to four characters now. Fucking everybody's getting slaughtered. Yeah, I'm sure they'll all be fine, right? R right? Like, there's been loads of Fs in the chat because just so many people died so quickly. <laughs> all in a row, yeah, yeah. this is Fs for everyone. Paying all the respects. Um, and yeah, there's just this, this wonderful little shot that I think was going to be used for promotional stuff too, where they're trying to get to the train while an army of zombies is sprinting behind them. Mm. Yeah, it's neat. And uh, they do get on, but a couple of zombies grapple onto it, and then gra zombies grapple onto them, and then zombies grapple onto them. And we get <laughs> something that I don't think I've ever seen before. It is like yeah. a blanket of zombies that is attached to the train. Um, oh, and they do a little the waterfall-y thing again. I think they did that to explain how our characters are managing to st consistently outrun them. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, obviously they're both going to be slowed by pregnancy and holding someone else, but... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're just building this huge thing following them, and uh, there's this cool moment, I assume you guys remember it, where like, one of the zombies starts to like jump over the whole blanket like a fucking yeah. demon thing. It's just like coming toward him, and he just dodges it, and it flings into like one of their metal stoppers for like yeah. a train and just fucking slams into it. And it's just like, oof, there he goes. I think the sound effects again open. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, um, we get the happy ending. He kicks off the zombies, and uh, that's that. Credits. All right. Oh, Wait a well. minute. That's not what happened. What? What do you mean? <gasps> you're lying. You're lying right now. No, you're lying. You're a liar. Well. Um, I thought that that was actually potentially the ending. Um, that yeah, he was gonna me too. <laughs> that it won't be hard to defeat Conductory Man in some way, shape, or form, but it wouldn't cost. Because the, these three together, I feel like there's a whole story you can tell with that as well. But that's yeah. a different story to tell. This one ends with... And it's quite neat as well, because he sees his skin, meaning like, oh shit, zombie, close door on him, done. But he's not turned yet, so he just awkwardly opens the door like, hey, <laughs> yeah. mister, I ain't feeling so good. <laughs> it's like, oh fuck. Yeah. It's like, god damn it, and you, because you're not going to jump off. You're not going to do that. Well, no, this is, and, and this is the most human he gets as a character. He basically just says, like, I just want to get back to I my mum. get to my mum, yeah. It's like, oh, he is a person. He's a real bad person, but... Yeah. yeah. He is a human being. He was afraid. He, yeah. Um, because yeah, presumably he was bitten quickly on some part of him, but uh, when he, yeah, but he, the, the, they have a bit of a back and forth until I, I quite like it when he, he realizes that he's the zombie and he's like crying and he looks down and it's just long and enough then, to be yeah. like, Wait, are you, are you? and then he just goes, <laughs> and he's like, Oh, fuck, yeah. it's a zombie now. Um, here comes the inconsistent transformation times thing. Uh, maybe with this one. This one I don't seems know. a bit longer than the other ones, for sure. I don't know that it changes much of anything. He just gets to talk for a little bit where he wouldn't have before. Yeah. We just don't know how long he's been sitting there turning, That's right. I guess. Yeah. Uh... So I'm trying to think of... Uh, If you remember, Chad actually became... He had, like, pale eyes before he became a zombie. Mm. He's there, uh, he's yeah, there for a little like bit. That's Part of it, yeah. And uh, that's the same for our main character and for um, uh, Businessman. So I think, yeah, th relatively I think it's consistent. I think it's fine, yeah. yeah. I'd have to check. I think it's fine. I think it's okay. He's not there over multiple scenes and stories. 
like in I don't know Resident Evil for example that's the first one that pops to mind but fuck there's no way get... you can make a consistent ruling with the Resident Evil franchise yeah <laughs> no, no. just when they when they get bitten in the middle and they just die at the end or to get turned at the end um, but yeah, this fight scene, just a microcosm of the whole film's, like, philosophy, basically. Uh, he's attacked, and um, then I think his daughter screams, and that distracts the zombie, and he goes for the hit, and then he, like, tries to, like, go, whoa, no, 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 and gets him back, mm -hmm. and he's close to being killed, and then the wife tries to help him, but then the zombie goes for here. And um, from what I could tell, it was on the Saga Watch tour that I, I think this is what's happening. I think protagonist decides to um if I get him to like cuz he puts his hand on his mouth mm -hmm. and I think he uses that as like a yeah just chew on that for a minute and I can move you into position to get you away and I I, I assume it was a decision of like I ain't risking those two I um, think so maybe yeah But yeah um this is, by the way, I thought that the girl was fine in the whole movie, but it's around about this point of the film where she becomes a better actress than most people who are working today. Yeah. <laughs> she's excellent, yeah. Yeah, really. Because the second she sees him bitten, she's already reacting as though he's dead, which is just, like, obviously she understands how this works. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, flings businessmen off, and uh, it's just sad for as an audience because you're like, oh man. <laughs> like, Here we go. This I was just, like, uh, when when I watched this whole scene, I was on the edge. I was like, I don't want him to get bitten or die. I I want him to live. I like this character. He's come so far, you know. Yeah, he he, he became a better person and everything, and then he gets bitten, and you're like, no, you bastards made me care about the character in the movie. You fucks. <laughs> I forgot how it felt like. Yeah. Um, also, uh. James said, people bitten on the leg slash hand do turn slower, only exception being the teen. The thing about the teen, if he's talking about the girl, she's bitten on the thigh, but she's bitten for a certain, like a, a, a decent bit. amount of time. Like, we, I don't know, you could be like, like, you could just argue that it chomped into that thigh, you know, she went more. Mmm. So, uh, you get a little bit of room with zombie stuff, I think. You just have to, however long it takes, will be correlating with the significance of the bite, unless it's like a blatant contradiction. I'm most okay with it. Uh, if there's yeah. wiggle room yeah. and stuff, and um, it's not, it's not o overly inconsistent. Oh, oh god, we're losing everyone. <laughs> oh my god, and can me, 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 Metal, and Dan? Can we do this? Can we bring it home? Let's hope we can. Yes, right. yes, I believe, I believe so. I believe so. Uh, so, and now I forgot what I was saying. So just go on ahead. <laughs> well, there's some things about as well. Like, uh, was that the best strategy? And it's like I don't know. It's a stressful environment, and I mm. think, like I said, my take is that he commits to. Uh, sacrificing himself to make sure those two survive. Yeah. It's, it's also as well as, like, he's not a fighter. Remember, he's a fund manager. He's he's not a big buff guy and he doesn't know how to fight. Like, there was there, there was so many opportunities where all he had to do was sort of grab the guy by the scruff and throw him over the railing. Yeah. And he could have, like, easily done it. But, again, he's not a fighter, so he probably just doesn't know that shit. But I mean, obviously, like, him sacrificing himself is obviously, like, the smart thing to do. Yeah, it's like, a I think if he stays he, on the train, then he'll just kill the woman in jail. I think he's just a guarantee to him that um, they're safe, and that's his main goal. Especially the, yeah. with the pressure he's got from Chad having died for him to be in this position in the first place. Um, something I really love when he's gotten rid of him, is he immediately starts trying to work with the... Like, he needs to make it so that they can definitely keep going. And if you look, yeah. the, the daughter immediately wants to go to him. The wife is, like, already looking at him like he's a zombie because of just the yeah. nature of this whole thing. And I just think it's just really good stuff in terms of she's already, like, petrified of him. Mm. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he just quickly figures out, like, you just need to hit the brake when you're in a position that you're going to need it. And um, I think even, like, when he sits her down to look at it, she's just scared of him the whole time. It's just a great dynamic change, because he was the one person protecting her the whole time, and now she's, like, terrified of him because he's a zombie at any moment now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when he says goodbye to the daughter, holy shit. Yeah, she's, oh. go she's going for it. Like, I don't know where they found that child. So <laughs> I don't know either. This, but Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah. So good. It's, they straight up, it's like having an adult in a child to <laughs> do the acting, because like it's just uh, it's pretty heartbreaking watching it. 
basically say goodbye to him. She's like, damn, dude. And, well, she doesn't even want to. She, um, is gripping him and he has to pull her hand off. Which, um, you know, just, we got that as, like, a reflection of the beginning of this being that she was desperate to get to the mum, even if it means, like, just ditching him. And at this point, he has to ditch her for her own safety. Because of the little adventure they've been on. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it's just he's running out of time, so, uh, closes the door on her, and, uh, the wife grabs her as well, and there's just this shot where she's just losing her shit while trying to make sure the child doesn't actually get to him before he changes, and it's just tragedy all around, you know? Yeah, Absolutely. it's a big sad. I was saying, this is, um, before I cut out there, saying this is kind of like the opposite of a series, like, I don't know, maybe a Final Destination, where when it comes to the characters, you're just like, oh, shut up, just fucking die. <laughs> just, just, just die. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, the, we've we've watched so many zombie movies where not only do we want some characters to die, but then you have like an army of the dead where it's like, will they make it? And I'm like, I don't care. Like, why would I care? They're just horrible. All of them are horrible people, and I barely know any of them. It's like whatever. But uh, man, these characters don't want any of them to die. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, he goes to the edge of the train, and as he's turning, he's just thinking about the the birth of his child. Oh, and that's just... fucking heartbreaking, that bit. Mm -hmm. that, that whole bit is fucking heartbreaking. And yeah, he, uh, he smiles right before dropping himself off the train. Because you know what? He's probably at peace with the fact that he did fucking great. And, uh, it's all about sacrifice. And the thing is, um, funnily enough, I don't know about you guys, but when I was watching the film, I thought it was gonna end there. I was like, I don't know how you get a better ending than that. Because that, that just seems to complete the film. Yeah, yeah, but, that's um, where I thought it would end, too. And I, I think after everything that they'd all been through, like, oh, they're just sitting there on that fucking train, what the fuck happened to them and everything, like, we just, well, so, I, I, I think after, like, all of the struggle, there would need to be, like, some kind of, at least a hint towards a resolution. Well, so this is the thing for me, I, I was like, I can assume that they made it or whatever, but, and so I was curious what they were gonna do. I was very fucking happy with the with the ending. So they realize that the way is blocked in a tunnel. That's uh, I'm pretty sure they're just basically at Busan at this point. And so they get out, and they're heading into like this horrifically dark tunnel with a bunch of corpses on the outside of it. With uh, one of them like even jitters because they're zombies. Yeah. And so I think when I was first watching, I was just like. God damn it, there's probably zombies in that tunnel. Please don't do this to me. You cannot end this film with those two getting killed. That would be fucked. <laughs> like, it's not fair. Um, but the environment here that we realize is that these zombies are dead on the edge of the tunnel because any that, that approach get sniped by the, uh, the military that are on the other side. And you're like, oh, okay. But there's this moment of you can't quite tell necessarily with silhouettes whether or not these, cre these people are zombies or not. And so um, they get the go-ahead to, you know, for safety, just execute them. Don't want to risk it. Mm -hmm. But what comes to save the day is the song that she couldn't sing. Because the, the idea here being that the dad may be dead, but he's always going to be with her. Yep. And yeah, they hear the song, and so they're like, nope, they're definitely not zombies. If you remember as well, the film closes out with her singing it, and again, it's just like, where did you find her? What the fuck? <laughs> Child's I mean, wonder, like, What do you tell kids? Like, to, so that, so that they, they're acting, but they don't think about the fact they're acting too much, and I don't know. Natural. I swear to God, she's Maybe. better. Maybe. I, I don't know, it is Korea, you've heard about what they do to K-pop stands, they probably, like, legitimately made the child cry. <laughs> <laughs> they beat her, they, like, slapped her. Oh no! <laughs> you will deliver an amazing performance, or the beatings will continue. <laughs> well, you know what, we have to make some sacrifices with great art. <laughs> it's, really it's about um, sacrifice. <laughs> and that's what's so powerful about it. You want to yeah, be a star, that's... don't you? That's Train to Busan? 
Yeah. Done so. Very good. Uh, just fully recommend. One of the best zombie movies ever. Great character work. Yeah, that was really impressive. Really well paced. Really fun environments. Yeah. Lots of intelligent decisions made by people based on just really interesting information that they acquire through very dynamic and natural ways. Um, it's just filmed very competently. I just don't, don't know, like, the soundtrack's fucking a, a banger to go with a lot of the action scenes in different parts, and then, yeah, the actors, man, just bringing that script to life, so. How long was this movie? Because it hours. felt long, but not in a bad way. Oh, like, yeah. Like, there's was a lot like, of stuff going on, you know? It was chunky. Like, you you get through a sequence, and you're like, man, that was, that was quite the meal, and it's like, it's not over. You're like, oh, boy. <laughs> Um, yeah, absolutely good stuff. Nice to see something good once in a while. And yeah, the uh, very pleased with that movie. The actor for Chad is going to be one of the, the main Eternals in a new MCU movie. You guys excited? Oh, re oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> well, Why so would you tell me this? <laughs> this? This is something I definitely want to talk to to Dacula about. Are you excited for the American remake of this film? No, it's going to be absolute shit. There's like, oh, we're going to be. There's literally no need to make it. We already have the film. Yeah, I know. Right? Like, we already have it. Just fucking, just watch it. Like, I, I don't understand. Like, basically, the, you know that they made a train to Busan two, and it was fucking terrible. That's what I've heard. Yeah, uh, I don't intend to watch it because no one's recommending it. <laughs> it's like, oh. Yeah, it's it's like the first fifteen minutes is quite good where you're sort of thinking oh shit oh this 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 may actually this may actually be pretty good but then after that it just gets ridiculous there's like there's dumb stuff in it where it's sort of like mad max people are still living in like south korea and all that and there's even like there's like a 10 year old girl who it turns out like she's a fucking absolutely amazing driver in a little mad max car like <laughs> pulling donuts through alleyways and shit and it, it's stupid it's it's stupid and it's so, it's not good we, at all. So we went from pretty grounded to completely over the top. Yeah, over the top and like uh, like just dumb. It was it's like it's a dumb movie. If you, I mean, if you just want like a dumb action movie, like it's fine. But I, I mean, it's I realize that obviously like Train to Busan is a fucking really hard fucking thing to follow, right? It would be really yeah. really hard for them to like. I mean, it can be done. I mean, the raid fucking did it they, they made a sequel better than the original and the original was fucking superb but like yeah it, it's almost like it was made by like someone who just did not have the exact same vision as like training busan it was it was really bad like they, they even have like this whole scene where they have like a, a zombie coliseum and and it's Jesus. to get the stat oh. yeah it's it's got the standard like Mad Max shit where like everyone's wearing leather and they have tattoos <laughs> and mohawks and like it is yes yeah, it's, it's crap. You basically you won't be getting this again. You'll get something completely fucking different. But they're in the same franchise. It, it's like a Cloverfield sort of situation. I'm guessing. Where yeah, you know, it'd be like this is part of the franchise. But if you like the first one, no guarantees. <laughs> like okay. well, there, there, there is like a good bit at the start where. It breaks. I didn't look up anything about the movie. I didn't look up anything. I just wanted to like go into it and watch it. And there was a part, I believe, at the start where they're on a boat, and like the an outbreak happens on the boat, and it actually did look quite good during that point. But then mm -hmm. uh, the gist of the story is uh, it fast forwards time, and they're all living in China. That's where like a, a shit ton of like South Korean refugees are all. They all are, and they all get treated like shit and everything there because you know of like fucking foreigners and all, all this type of fucking thing. But then uh, the premise is they get hired by like the Chinese triads because <laughs> there's a there are basically everyone left South Korea in a hurry. So there's a there's like a bank that has a bunch of gold still in the vault and like it was no it was a truck. There was a truck delivering a shit ton of gold and cash, and they've they've put together a team and like, <laughs> to go in and, and like extract it and everything. And like one one person in the team is literally like this fucking fifty year old woman, and it's like okay, is she like a demolitions expert or an electronics expert or something? And that's why she's getting brought along. Nah, she's just an old woman. Like that's, that's, <laughs> that's like nothing to her at all. You know, and it's, it's yeah, it's, it's fucking stupid and it's quite shit. Like I, I will admit, like the old like war veteran grandfather guy, he was he was a pretty good character. He was funny, but apart from that, that was shit. 
And it is, and you, you did not give a single fuck about any of the characters. Like, you, you genuinely like, didn't care. If you can just get people caring about even one person, it can rescue the movie. Just having one person that we're like, oh, you know, kind of like, like if you if you had Chad, but in a in a kind of a shitty movie, but he was still like a really good person doing interesting things and stuff. It's like you, you can rescue it a little bit, but yeah. fuck, so many movies we've watched lately where there's just like no redeemable people and barely any people in general because they're characterized so shittily. Yeah, because like uh, you know, um, we we kind of talked about it as we were talking there, but just if someone was to draw back like uh, the high schooler. He's like mm. aggressively helpful when he thinks he can save lives, but when he realizes they're dead, he just freezes consistently throughout. Mm -hmm. And like someone might be like, "Well, what, what, what?" And it's just like it's just he is a person at that point. He's consistent. That's how he behaves, and uh, it just gets me to believe. It'll really help with immersion. I would say is one of the main things. Instead of it just being like anything might happen, he might say anything because he's just anybody, depending on what we need for the scene. Um. Now, I have I have something else to curse you all with. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> so, um, someone made like a breakdown, I guess, of how good the movie is. Oh! And, and then they were like, I'm also gonna do a breakdown of how bad it is. Oh! And I think the idea oh, is, well. I'm gonna do Cinema Sins' format on Train to Busan. And so what's confusing about this video and I've seen people talking about it in the Discord already. You can't tell, so he'll like label criticisms, but you, but you're like, but he's called it a spoof, and so you're like, so is, are you criticizing it or not? Are you being real, a spoof. Okay. And so like the conclusion I got when I was looking at it was just he does believe these things could be considered flaws, but they don't matter that much to him. So I think that's what we're supposed to go in with. I'm not sure. Okay. Um. But yeah, okay. uh, it, we just click the old watch together link. It's only a, it's, it's, it's honestly by EFAP standards, this is a short video that we're going to be looking at. Um, <laughs> getting the audience to care about a single character could save a bad movie, but Waller, I thought you hated The Last of Us 2. They fucking killed him in the first two minutes. <laughs> 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 Alright, um, my water, I'll be right back. Yeah, Whoa. I think uh, Fringy will be back at any moment. No worries. He's gonna love this video too. I'm sure of it. But um, we, you know what? While uh, yeah. while he's getting that water, uh, Dank, what what movies do you think that I I should check out the in the same way I should have checked out Train to Busan that I probably haven't heard of? Um, but mostly like Korean recommendations, like uh, Memories of Murder. I thoroughly enjoyed. Because mm -hmm. it's the whole did he, didn't he, and everything, and which does kind of get ruined when the actual killer like handed himself in and went, It was me, <laughs> by the way. Ha 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 ha. I'm like, <laughs> like gloating about it and shit. But there's another one, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called Identity or something. I'll double check. But it's basically a guy, the, the premise of the story is it's called Forgotten. That's what it's called. A guy thinks that. <clears throat> Basically, he's, the premise of the story is his uh, brother gets kidnapped and then three weeks later, his brother mysteriously reappears. Like, he sees his brother getting kidnapped, but he can't get to him in time. He gets piled into a van and fucking taken away. Uh, and he notices things about his brother where he's not acting the same and he starts to get this whole, someone, this isn't my brother, this is someone else right. pretending to be my brother. And... The path the movie goes down is just, it fucks with your head. It's really good. I, I really enjoyed that one. Mm -hmm. um, the Wailing is quite fucked up. That's sort of based on like old like Korean superstition about witches and wizards and demons and shit like that. And it is a, right. it is a bit of a supernatural one. But one of the most fucked up ones, which is brilliant, is I Saw the Devil. I Saw the Devil is Finally, fucking excellent. Finally! Someone saw oh. that fucking movie! Oh, uh, <laughs> just, there's so much stuff in it. I've, the way that they put it out is basically like, uh, there's serial killers all over, like, South Korea, and, like, each serial killer sort of has, like, their thing, like, their technique, the thing that they do. Like, one guy's a cannibal... And all that, and like the guy who's actually played by the same guy that played Old Boy, um, he likes young girls and he likes to rape them. Yeah, this is this movie's got two rape scenes, two rape scenes in it, and uh, but the serial killers all like know each other. 
and like shit, and they like hang out and stuff mm. like that. But basically, the serial killer targets the wrong person, and it turns out that the the women that he killed, her husband's like this ex black ops special forces guy who knows how to find the killer, but instead of killing him. He like tortures him just at random yeah. periods. Like the killer's just trying to go about his business and do his thing. And then this black ops guy will turn up and does like horrific fucking shit to him. <laughs> like really bad things. And then he just leaves. And then it's funny because you've got this serial killer screaming, like, leave me alone, leave me alone, and all that shit, man. <laughs> but uh, but there's a scene in it. I'm not gonna say what happens, but uh the the scene in the taxi. When he gets when he gets picked up as a hitchhiker, like watch the movie just for that scene because it it goes on for way longer than it fucking has to, <laughs> right? But like in a good way, like I would I highly recommend. I saw the devil. Definitely yeah. fucking watch that. I right. one years ago, and I I recommend it in here as well. So we should so that we should watch it. So I saw a few from chat. They said uh, old boy, the host, the raid films, and Parasite. I have seen all of them because I'm a good boy, and I have seen yeah. some of these things. Um, I watched. I also watched Spike Lee's Old Boy. What a great film! No, shut up, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, is that like an American uh, remake or something? Yes, it is. Yeah. I need to watch. Uh, yeah, American uh, remakes are shit. It's a rule. I don't know why they do them. Like, has has there ever like been like an absolute banging American remake? Like, I, a one that fucking there's one that people like, reference, and that's usually The Ring. That's usually the one of the better ones. Uh, I forget who but, uh, made it. I mean, to touch Was, on the thing of why they do it. There are people who are like, I'm not reading the subtitles for Squid Game, I'll watch the dub. I speak English, so I don't need oh, no. to read the subtitles. There is, if there, this if, thing, there's if, a market like, for it. Um, yeah, there is. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, Gore yeah, Verbinski. Um, people often say like the Ring original is still better, but the, the American version wasn't that bad. Um, That's I, think that was, I think that was before a time when people like massively consumed Eastern content, though. Uh, people think... were mentioning Magnificent Seven because yeah. it's based on Seven Samurai. If that counts. Um. Well, so um, interesting thing about that. I feel like they're different enough, right? Sequel, yeah, or a spir spiritual yeah. successor to it. Um, it wasn't Unforgiven based on. Uh, no, somewhat based on Unforgiven's original, and there was a Korean okay. remake. Oh right, I see. Which is okay. really oh, fucking the opposite. cool. Wow. Yeah. Or <laughs> I can't remember. If, I don't want to say it could have been Japanese or whatever. I'm not 100 percent sure because I didn't look too far into it. But yeah. Ken Watanabe is the... Cowboys with Samurai. You got a, you got a story. Yeah. Um, and I kind of want to watch it. Uh, because um, it, I just want to see how they interpret Unforgiven. How you they know? remake other people's that stuff. That would be yeah. nifty to see. Hmm. Yeah, it's called Unforgiven. It came out in 2013, and um. Like I said, uh, Ken Watanabe is the main character. Oh boy! So that'd be cool. Yeah, I, I have no idea how good it is. It's just really interesting that they remade Clint Eastwood's movie. You know, it's just like, oh man, that's cool. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, uh, if you want to, you got the link of New Fringy. So, uh, just to give you a, a brief right, thing, Cinema Sins, but not from Cinema Sins, for Train to Busan. Oh. Uh... Which apparently is kind of a spoof. The okay. thing is, well, well the problem with that, as I've That's already how I over, understood it, how you tell it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the problem with it is that if I say, like, I'm going to pretend to be a lumberjack and then I chopped out a tree, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like, so you're still doing the thing. I don't know. So, like, it, I was yeah. about to say, it, it's not the jokes on you I'm pretending to be retarded, it's like adjacent to that. The jokes <laughs> on you, I did the thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna Jesus, cut down this loud. tree. Fuck cut it down, Lumberjack. Joke's Fuck. on you. I, oh my I, god, that is loud, yeah. I jumped, like, legit. <laughs> Some, <was> like, Duh. <laughs> well, someone in chat's asking about True Grit, and yes, yes, I do think the remake of True Grit was really good. Uh, that was, I think, True Grit's a remake of uh, another American movie. Uh, yeah. By the same name. Well, I think we were talking about the, um, like, the, 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 the international remakes. I Maybe guess this is a say. rabbit hole. <laughs> maybe True Grit is a remake from another movie. I mean, That's maybe if movie. so, I d I didn't know. I thought that the the one with uh, John Wayne, I think I thought that was the original. Maybe I'm wrong. It is based on the, the like, 1968 novel of the same name. So I suppose, um, yeah, because I I know the Magnificent Seven was based off Seven Samurai, and I mm -hmm. actually like the one they did a few years back. I, I enjoyed that one. 
so. Um, with this video, by the way, I just want to keep in mind, I'm pretty sure this person loves the movie, but he okay. has found flaws that he wants to point out, I'm assuming, and that's where he decided to make like the CinemaSins style video. So we'll just see what, right. what the it's flaws are. It's not so short. It's 15, 16 minutes. <laughs> Rags, have you been to Eva before? We've covered like fucking hour long. Remember the hour and 10 minute video? Lord of the Rings? <laughs> we got through it, though. It still isn't short. This, this is no. a new DC. 65 spoilers, seconds of uh, opening credits and logos. It really is never. Wow, you sure are a parody of Cinema Sins. Yep. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. You've already nailed it. <laughs> Explain to the film how the virus started. One of those, it's up to your own interpretation type things. Why is that a problem? Why? Wait, how's God? that a sin then? I don't even know. Well, Does Cinema Sins typically do that? Like, you, you're allowed. A little to... bit. I guess, yeah, because that's, that's a Cinema Things moment right there. Yeah, I guess so. They, they both do it. Wins and Sins. Yeah. A uh, minor leak from anything that has bio in its name usually isn't just nothing. Um, wait, what? <laughs> what? A minor leak from be? anything with bio in it can't be nothing. What? That's not like, true. That's you can have true. a minor biological true. hazard. Minor, minor leak from the biodiesel factory. That would just kill some plants. <laughs> what if someone just had a piss? It's like this bio. Yeah, leak. I was about to say that's a bio leak. <laughs> There's a leak from my bio dick. It's fine. <laughs> that's right. Probably nothing to worry about. Dick. Foreshadowing. How hard is it to grab your phone? Do you just have short arms that you just can't reach it, or did the plot demand you hit this deer while distracted? So I mean, it just looked as if it was just out of his reach. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he, he had to lean over. Yeah. To oh. try and get it. I mean, and people hit fucking random wildlife a lot. Uh, That's just common. Yep. How yep. does this virus work Arkansas exactly? Deer, I know I'm asking a bit early, but does it kill you or does it turn you into a rabies-like creature? How did this? You are asking early. You have no <laughs> You're idea. You're asking yet. very early. Why are you asking? <laughs> a, it's so a this alien, deer. it just like what lives in people's chests, and then what does it have to <laughs> yeah. breathe or something? Like I don't get it. Does it only <laughs> come out at breakfast time? I don't get it. I like it when they do the the mindless speculation. Like, what am I supposed to believe about this? That there's a ghost puppeteering them? Like, what? What's happening? <laughs> just like I mean. <laughs> I don't know. From a hit like that. Hard to take this intense scene with the intense music so seriously when a smoky eyed deer is looking at me so adorably. Isn't this that ain't adorable? I thought that, that was the Crazy. juxtaposition. It's a chill deer, but look at it. It's covered in blood and it's got pale eyes. It's like. Yeah, that's creepy. Yeah. It's supposed to make the victim incredibly aggressive? Why is this deer so nonchalant about- No, the, the zombies there's consistently- no Yeah, there's no target, so they're just looking. No yeah. yeah, so they just hang around. Just getting hit by a car. Did it just turn? Pro yeah, you just watched it. <laughs> we, you just watched the thing. Is, the thing. It could have been you that it was- You saw it with your eyeballs. Could have been that it was bitten and then hit by the car and that turned it, or it could have been that it was already yeah. turned and it got hit by the car. Either yeah. works, so- yeah. Placement. Pardon my pronunciations, but Siakwu, despite seeing what a PR and environmental nightmare the biotech leak has become, that he sells all of the funding to them, establishing him as a typical dickhead businessman. Why is that a flaw? That's <laughs> just apply, the, that's, 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 that's the movie. That's the point. <laughs> okay. What's happening? This is so weird. <laughs> Cinema things again. I don't know. All right. <laughs> Further foreshadowing. I was about. To... Why are you sending? Foreshadowing. That? That's not really foreshadowing. Well, that That's like saying, "Hey, it's my daughter's birthday tomorrow," and then tomorrow, ah, yes, this was yeah. foreshadowed that it was the daughter's birthday. Ah, I see what you did there. For very clever. Well, he said, re there will be repercussions. That, that foreshadows all the repercussions. repercussions. You're like, oh, yeah, come on. yeah if you shoot that present. guy in the head, it will kill him. <laughs> That's foreshadowing for when he shoots him in the head and kills him. <laughs> It's a, I mean, it might qualify as bullshit. It was just like, okay, you were. Wow. What are we doing? <laughs> it's in the movie for the father giving her a Wii and not a Wii U in 2016, but looked up that Nintendo never released the Wii U in Korea. But he could have been more up to date and gotten his daughter a 3DS to show his more materialistic love, Dad. Still, but, but wait, you I, highlighted I, that they did oh. a good job. The, yeah, the, you hi exactly. Oh, I don't get it. I don't things. Because I didn't even know that. I I just I assumed that yeah. you were, yeah. So I, I don't know. The, the film just got better thanks to this video. <laughs> it seems weird too that they didn't release it in South Korea. You think that they would? Yeah. yeah with how connected they are and plugged in they are. Product placement. Convenient. The kid Kim Suwon kept the console's box to make this scene emphasize how much. I used to do that as a kid. I really liked the boxes. 
Um, yeah, some people uh, do yeah that. I kept my console box. In case it's, I needed to move it or... Not know. that weird, and they have nice graphics on them a lot of the time. Father doesn't pay attention or give his daughter the time of the day. Oof, I know Suwon prefers to be with her mother since her dad is an untrustworthy workaholic, but she really is driving a dagger into her father's heart. How's that a <laughs> sin? I don't understand. I don't understand. You're Help just me. describing the film. You're describing <laughs> events that take place. It's like sin. Like, oh, look, it's nighttime. Ding. The amount of foreshadowing in this movie is through the roof. Conveniently timed is that, and that's bad. How's that a I, sin? I it's like, yeah, whatever you start, you have to finish. Foreshadowing, sin. Like, I'm confused at the dynamic here. Vehicles to suddenly Very stop strange. the protagonist as he is casually driving to show that something is going on, cliche. What? <laughs> something is going on. Like, <laughs> the something is going on, cliche. That's probably the best see, cinema see thing. See if they had none of this shit and just a woman jumped on the train and started biting people. You'd have been like, what the f- what, why, Yeah, when? there was nothing like, to set this up. What the fuck, sin? Uh, uh, what, what he would have done instead it was he would have went, there was absolutely no suggestion that a zombie apocalypse was going on. Oh, <laughs> another sin. <laughs> Man, like, damned if he did, damned if he didn't. Fuck's sake. It was that way. Is He's that... just observing things that happen. That would be cool, though, if you had a zombie movie where you kind of establish a character or two or three and then just boom zombies. There's no setup for it whatsoever. It's just from their perspective. That's what it would be. Just boom, zombies yeah. all of a sudden. It just hits like a freight train out of nowhere. To be fair, that's um, what the, the main character experience is, right? Like, he has no reason to assume anything. Like, we get a lot of uh, little bits here and there and we're like, ooh, but he's just like, why are people eating each other? What the fuck? Yeah. Maybe, maybe this is what no the guy shit. thinks Cinema I don't Sense understand does. the scar- I don't know. Oh, uh, wait, sorry, what was that? Maybe that's just what the guy thinks Cinema Sense does. I don't know. It's maybe weird. But the, at that point, I guess... But I, I, it's so confusing, because like, it's just... What value is the video but at that something point? something is going on, cliche. <laughs> no shit. I don't understand the scarf thing. How is she supposed to wear it? Quarter past two? <laughs> to the left? I mean, the way that she did it? <laughs> it? Listen, if Corella taught me anything, it's that fashion makes no fucking sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this playful banter is delightful enough for me to take off a sin. So you are. Well, this is why Except I get really it. confused. I don't now, like the sin about character. what you're going for, because you just make observations that are. Well, I guess it's just you. You're like, oh, this is really good, so I'm going to take a sin off. It's like, so this other thing do is you really not good. Like it's the a other sin. stuff. Yeah, like that's why I'm confused. She was saying that, that 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 female actress looks like she's been stung by a lot I'll of like bees. This is her female. Ah, well, well. <laughs> um, not in twenty, not in twenty twenty one. They're not. I suppose it's true. <laughs> she uh makes me think that she could have been cast when she was younger as one of the creepy girls in a horror movie. She's got that kind of face, With, especially yeah. the hair as well. But just like, yeah, you could have been the, the the spooky girl that climbs stairs backwards or whatever. <laughs> That's what they do in those films. <laughs> Except it. This guy sucks at his job. He almost deliberately allows a loudly gasping woman to enter the train right behind him without proper clearance. Um, I don't know what. So like, if she was waiting for him to turn before she went in, then that's what happened, so that she could get in without so, having uh, a ticket. So, considering that she sort of lingers on the door, um, and how she just runs past, uh, could have filmed that better. I would have filmed that better. I feel, I feel like, yeah, it's a bit of a stretch that he didn't notice. Mm. Maybe. Well, I don't didn't know. He, um, I mean, he, turned, he turned because of the noise, though, right? Did he? Allows a loudly gasping woman to enter the train. No, I right think he's just, he's just checking. I think the, he's just looking. The, well, uh, if yeah. Anyone's still there. That's I, a, that's in, a... in my mind, it was just like, oh, he, he probably heard it and he was just thinking someone just got on the train last second, I guess. I don't know. I think you he's just making sure there's. People who know, making sure there's no one out there who still wants to board. I mean, you you have. I would just call it a contrivance. Then you just have to believe that he he just didn't notice. He was just like, huh. I was, I yeah, I guess. Hmm. And without proper clearance, <clears throat> the only little girl on the train sees that freaky shit. Taking was in front of her window, it's like the others. Her, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's just like yeah. <sighs> like, 
minor contrivance again like that's that's pretty chill i don't know another sin off for yeah. these gnarly special effects this girl is having an so you are taking sins off for things that you think are good <laughs> But also adding sins for things that he for thinks are good. I, 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 yeah, I get the right. feeling that he, he, I get the feeling the man might might be taking the piss. But Cinema Sins does this in wins. They do this unironically. I was going to say how they operate. It's so. really difficult to figure out what the fuck's because this is the thing. If, why if, it's such a frustrating format. If they like highlight any plot hole at some point, I'd be like, so is it one? And if he went, no, I was just joking. I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> What's <Okay>. happening? <laughs> Panic attack, and no one is checking on her or asking what's wrong. So the well, at that point, the nearest people in earshot might just hear a bit of a disturbance. I don't know that that's enough to make people go like, "Excuse me, ma'am, are you all right?" Do you have the shits, or do I need a doctor? Um, because what alerts them to the hobo one is he sees the, the businessman saw hobo go in there. So, yeah, attendants know, address the issues of the homeless man quietly stowing away in the restroom before confronting the noticeable. Well, yeah, but she, again, wasn't he? Correct me if I'm wrong, but he he saw him go in. He said like he was a uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is different. Nobody saw her go in. More louder and sick woman. <laughs> Two adults allow a kid to just sit there and gawk at a very unstable-looking man. This could be traumatizing. Or oh, so none of them believe he's a threat. They just think he's a weird dude. Yeah. Yeah. But Come to on, be, man. To, I'm not even on? sure. It's not what? even clear that the host guy knows the girl is there yet. You see the views. I don't right? think so. Yeah. And uh, the idea that businessman would care to like protect this little girl is like he probably I mean, doesn't give a fuck. What we delight about him later, yeah. The guy could. He I'm him. surprised he's not shoving her in. <laughs> <laughs> Attack the hobo. Go here. Eat this. Go away. Or them. Eat we this. know later on the homeless guy is nice and all, but is no one concerned about the safety of the kid? I don't think so. I think there's like this is a this is a homeless man who's in the like, fucking I... thing. You shouldn't be here. Stop it. This poor, slowly turning woman casually, jerkingly walks through a whole train car, veins popping out, looking like an erratic bubble. I don't think you can see her legs from where you'd be sitting unless you were looking to look at them. Other Probably than that, her weird face. Other than that, she's just she is acting weird, and I feel like you probably might get people being like, "What the? Okay." I ain't touching. I think her. the thing is though is that a lot of people would just be like, "Yeah, I don't want to deal with that." Yeah. yeah, she's walking away from me. She's gonna be someone else's problem in a moment. So yeah, that yeah junkie off you away go. from me. <laughs> Ew, junkie's belly. Ew. And <laughs> no one in the train car pays her any mind or turns around. Well, we—I don't know that we know. She might have gotten some looks, but that'd be about it. I don't yeah, know what I'm else. Sure, you... I'd have to rewatch the scene again. I can't remember specifically. Well, I just don't know the. Like, say, say for example, you were sitting there, rags, and you saw her wibbling by, making weird head movements. What do you do seeing when you see that? I mean, if she's just walking past, I'm just sort of furrowing my brows and looking at her weird and just kind of watching her go. I would like, if I was with a friend, I'd probably nudge and be like, what the fuck is she doing? And they'd be like, I yeah, think she's drugged. Like, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'd assume, that she was like on a on drugs or something, or she was, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'm not assuming that she's now. a dangerous zombie that needs to be <laughs> pacified. Yeah. You know, I'm just eating. like, oh, yeah. Once? I'm just, she I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I've, I've been at parties and I've seen <laughs> girls like that, and I usually end up fucking them. <laughs> I've, se I've seen weird people on trains before as well. I'm just like, uh, yeah. uh, just stay away from me. You yeah. can go ahead and do your thing. Nah, Claims fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> the two approaches, the two options. <laughs> train to pussy. <laughs> train to pussy. <laughs> Even once, she literally slams her head into the wall and falls to the ground. Still, no concern from the passengers. Or that that could have been enough, yeah, to make someone go like, "Whoa, what just happened?" And if you look down, you'd see someone's on the floor. Um, so that, you know, Gen potentially, yeah. Um, you just have to believe yeah, that know. it didn't alert anybody that sound or enough to make them check anyway. Mm -hmm. And with a train that's moving, um, you do hear a lot of clanking sounds. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you just have to believe that nobody decided to check that. Attendance. Here we introduce the third man I would go gay for right after Steven Tyler and Danny DeVito. We're gonna take a sin off for making a character that isn't a total generic Hollywood asshole. Brad Pitt. I am beyond it. What? Um, but the other so ones Brad weren't... Pitt in World War Z was not a generic asshole. You... He was just generic. He was uh, generic uh, hero he... man. Does Brad Pitt typically play asshole characters? He's much more generic I don't hero know. man, isn't he? He's... Well, unfortunately, he often just gets generic hero man when he's a lot more versatile than that. 
Yeah. And um I guess the problem is if you if it's like assholes, it's like I don't know. <laughs> like Also yeah. most of the people in this are pretty good people. Um yeah. they just get killed. <laughs> like <laughs> Irritated at this point when it comes to this infected girl. Still, no one notices her and until an attendant is casually going between cars. Well, I mean, it's not that long after she falls that she's noticed by you. Yeah. 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 No, and plus, not. I don't think the people who could who are facing her in the next train over or the car over, they might not be able to see with the hallway and where the seats are positioned. I, I just. Someone I don't would know. need to go through probably to notice. Yeah, and. and who would be that? And it's like the most likely people going through right now, probably the hostess and hosts and stuff. So, so that yeah. seems that seems natural that it would be her that notices, yeah. What kind of re-education are we talking about here, Golden Girl? Of course, the one-time assistance is critically needed over a dying woman. The walkie-talkie starts hold mysteriously. Hold on, hold on. They they, they <laughs> did like I'll admit whenever you hear about like dictatorships in Korea, everyone thinks of the North, but I think from the 70s, in fact, I think it was from the 60s through to the 80s, like South Korea was under a dictatorship. It yeah, was uh, and. Yes, people well, did, I mean, did, there's yeah, there's a lot of history there. For, yeah, from what I understand, it was like there was a point when South Korea then started overtaking North Korea in terms of productivity. And um, yeah. I didn't know what yeah. to do with his comment. And also, there, you know, I just, well, I yeah, because like, okay. it's her perspective. <laughs> yeah, he's saying like, what, what kind of re-education re are we talking about? Well, the re-education that South Korea <laughs> did, in fact, do. Well, like, yeah, that's what it's like, 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 come what, on. what kind of re-education? That's a flaw. It's like, what the, the <laughs> character thinks that? Like, that's her perspective. And that's the thing. Oh, uh, 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 what kind of wall? Because it gets the <laughs> same... <laughs> sorry, I don't have a flyer around here somewhere. I'm sorry. It gets the same results as, like, all the other stuff. So it's just like, is it on par in terms of... I just fucking... Yeah, it's just hard to understand, that's all. Walkie talkie starts mysteriously acting up. Minus another sin for how f Well, um, it acting up doesn't have any consequences regardless. She's facing that way. She's waiting for someone to come in. And, um, if you remember, the realization that this person's gotten back up just has a freeze regardless. So I think if. Because the impression I'm getting here is he's saying, like, because the walkie talkie fucked up, she wasn't having her eyes on the body, thus she gets herself bitten. But if you remember, she has a, several seconds of seeing the zombie while she's like a meter away from it, and she still ends up dying because she's frozen in fear. Freaking creepy this scene is, and how gut-wrenching that neck snap is. Yeah, seriously, the sound effects in this really help out the zombies. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Why does this specific zombie take so long to attack? Later on, they don't hesitate to bite another victim. Um, lots of them have different reaction times. I think what you have to conclude at that point is it's literally between the zombies, there's different levels of immediate aggression, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, probably. They're I not all exactly the same. Yeah, they don't. They it's don't like all, all animals, all predators. They're not going to behave exactly the same. Some will be, you know, faster than others, more aggressive than others. Yeah, and um, again, like who slower reaction time of a few seconds doesn't change the fact that the hostess dies. This petite woman can walk through a crowded train car having her neck bitten into by a jockey, no problem, before collapsing in front of everyone. Thanks for picking a great spot to die and reanimate to infect others. Late people mind their own business. I just like the idea that it's like, you selfishly chose to die in a bad place. <laughs> like, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> How long what is the infection dick. rate anyways? The attendant immediately turns, but the stowaway girl is able to get in the train, walk- Well, she was bitten in the neck, so I have to presume yeah, that that's- Yeah, look at that wound. Jeez. And she was chomping into it for a while, like- Oh yeah. Yeah. It might be- she might have- maybe she died, and once you die, you instantly come back up? Well, that's, I mean, that was- Yeah. I like the deer? We talked about, yeah. I think that's it. Uh, it's just- death means you're, you become zombie, but if you get, like, scratched with a tooth, on your toe, probably takes a little much longer. Your car have an uninterrupted seizure before fully turning. Is it the location of the bike that factors into this? I guess we'll find out later. The zombie getting a five finger mm. discount strangely gives up on the guy to either intimidate or attack others. Don't they wait until they have fully killed their victim before moving on to the- Again, that's- no, the, they all have different like sort no. of priorities. They can get distracted by noises if they think that a new target is just pressure. Like, it can be anything because these, these creatures are pretty mindless. Because, like, trying to draw one definitive rule about how they will eat and move on, I don't know, it just feels like the, it's a bit restrictive considering how wild these things are. Mm. Yeah. Next. What happened to this guy's eye, and how did it get that swollen in the span of the 20 seconds his neck was getting bitten into? I, 
A wound? <laughs> I don't know. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> it's just a weird <laughs> one, yeah. Like, I don't know exactly why the eye specifically look. What a weird thing to comment on. Okay. The fastest conversion rate yet literally turns the second the girl gets off of him. No, he turns the second he's dead. Yeah. What are um, we doing? This, this really feels weird, like... I mean, but okay. All I'm learning is the film holds up pretty well. <laughs> the only similarity between this movie and World War Z, the crowded zombie effect. Two extra and sins for making me think of that horrible Brad adaptation. While what? Alright. Don't make me think of World War Z, I guess. <laughs> okay, otherwise your movie's bad. This woman is getting nod in two with the couple there. Gong Yu and his daughter are at the glass door waiting while a horde of full sprint zombies are approaching. Well, yeah, he's Wait. panicking because there's a fucking zombie in front of him. Yeah. It's only once he realizes it's distracted by Chad that he moves through. Why? That makes sense, man. Remember, we were just shown that all the zombies fell over each other because of the, the wave thing. Which means he could have- yeah. he would know that, and he's now got- I've got time behind me, there's a zombie in front of me, what do I do? And he hesitates for a moment. It's completely normal. Yep. Gong tells the burly guy to let go of the door because the zombies can't open it. But it's a pretty simple knob that can easily be smacked and opened. Maybe trying to find a lock on that door just to be safe and secure, maybe? Well, so this is just them figuring out if it's true, right? Like, if they were to hit yeah. that handle, they would immediately grab the door. You just close the door yeah. again, yeah. And then, of course, they come up with, like, how do they see us? It's oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, uh, I knocked <laughs> my desk and everything shook and it's upset me. Oh my god. But it's okay. My god. How was this video uploaded to YouTube? Did the team filming it, finish recording, get bit, turn into a zombie, and decide, hey, this stream. will probably get me tons well, of views on YouTube? Well, no, so it's, it's a ni this, this is a 19 minute quick. recording according to that, and he cuts it off the moment the zombies get to him. Apparently he didn't get yeah. bitten, and then he uploaded it. 19 seconds. Or it was a live minutes. stream and somebody just fucking clipped it. Yeah, there's loads of ways this could have happened. I don't know. See, this is the weird kind of sort of breakdown <laughs> where I'm just sitting there like, why are you so bad faith? Like, why can't you assume anything normal? <laughs> yeah. Like, this could have literally yeah. been anyone's phone live streaming, like you said, and then someone else does something with the footage, or that he just didn't get killed. We don't see him get bitten. If I upload it. The parallel of the daughter's selflessness by giving her seat to one of the elderly sisters Ugh. versus the Ugh. father telling her to only watch out for herself is great character building. Minus one sin for that. Yeah, so now I'm lost. <laughs> you, are, you are explicitly removing sins for things you consider to be good, but there are things you've added sins for that were, that were good, that you thought were bad. But then he's also missed loads of good stuff. Yeah. So it's confusing. Nice roast. Minus one sin. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> this is such <laughs> a genuine moment between these three characters that I'm gonna go ahead and remove another three sins. Three! <laughs> what the fuck is happening? What is the scale? This, this is Cinema Sins type 17,000. This is insanity. Gong hey, has a section whatever. of phone contacts called Lemmings. How cynical do you have to be to refer to people that you do business with as well, No, you don't- that's that, could, what they, that could literally be a fun name. It doesn't have to be- No, that's, that's, be, that's, what yeah. his, that's what his- that's what his team is called. Well, this- So Lemmings is probably, like, more derogatory, but it could actually be a joke. Like an in-joke with them. No, he's- he, he, I mean, he said it to this one guy, this assistant or whatever, who comes in, it's like, Are you working for the Lemmings or not? Or something along those yeah. lines. I don't know why yeah. you, you bring that up. Well, that's what he's saying. He's saying that, like, it's yeah. just in this the story. It's, um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so I would argue that that is... You can have all kinds of group names for anybody in any way. Like, it doesn't have to be cruel. He's, he's saying, like, why? Yeah. How mean of you to do that? It's like, well, no, it's probably just chill. It's like, that group is yeah. the lemmings. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say as well. So, be good. Lemmings. What if you had a call come in in a meeting and someone sees that you're calling them a lemming? That's fine, dude. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. They're gonna be fine. <laughs> They'll make it. It's gonna They'll be okay. Live. Why is the Dijon mustard station so desolately quiet and barren? You would think the sound of an incoming train would attract a horde or something. Well, all there has to be is just any other sounds outside that's distracting the zombies. And they're not exactly Maybe. right next to them. Maybe yeah. if it's a distant sound, they might not necessarily even care about a distant sound. That yeah. doesn't sound like anything that they would recognize. <laughs> Changing a knife to a bullet to the heart of the father. That is one sin. Wait, so a bullet to the there heart is worse than a knife? Time. Yes. I don't know about that. Because <laughs> you die faster. D Did would you? you do it once? <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm just thinking it, shit up. <laughs> it, it depends on the knife or the bullet. I just, I, you know, if someone was like, oh, we upgraded from stab to the heart to bullet to the heart. I'm like, I don't know. Is that. 
Okay. Is that an upgrade? That's a weird upgrade, but okay. <laughs> it's technology, like an it's an upgrade. I don't know. <laughs> no one here is hesitant to move forward, seeing as there's no military or security personnel to greet. Well, so they're hesitant. They yeah. are hesitant. Look at them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, a bloody riot shield on the floor is a dead giveaway that you should stop moving forward. No. No. No, it's not. It's just not. no, it's not. You have no be, idea. There's so many reasons that could be there. What the hell? Yeah. Imagine he just went, zombies, rad. <laughs> <laughs> what? And start going back where you came from. Let's go ahead and just stare at everyone getting eaten alive for an extended period of time instead of, you know, hauling ass out of there. They panic what... and then they run. What is it with you yeah. people? Yeah. <laughs> These are human reactions, Jesus. How was this specific strange. soldier able to limp away from these ravenous, jumping star- There are all kinds of things that could have happened to facilitate this result. Uh. Like, why do you ass He assumes, right, that this happened because there was ten zombies and one limping guy. How could you have escaped them? Instead of assuming ten healthy guys, one zombie attacks them, the infection spreading, one guy is injured from some scenario, could have been bitten on the leg, slowly escapes while all of his men die, gets around the mm -hmm. corner, they all chase him. Yeah. You, again, it just to me it's just bad faith. You assume a weird scenario that makes it an impossibility as opposed to all of the things that could have happened. Craving zombies, and why isn't he showing signs of infection since he looks like he's covered in bite? Because he's not dead yet. Is he covered in bite? Or is well, he just got blood on him? He's, he's got blood on him. Know. We don't know what his yeah, wounds I don't know. are. Yeah. It's, it's... Comprehension. I don't know what his wounds are. Yeah. Oh, mother fuck! Wow! Don't do this suspense where we think the girl's gonna die and the dad somehow saves her. Oh, thank god, and that's, I'm banned. That's there. bad that you got <laughs> suspense there, that's, right there. Don't, that's... don't make me concerned for, for a potential <laughs> result. No, uh, thank Boy. god he was there. Minus one. However, it was a pretty deus ex machina for saying- No, it's not. The zombies are coming no, from the same not. direction as the survivors. Yeah. What the- uh... That's not deus ex machina, that's just cause and effect. He doesn't want a little girl that's... to die. No. That's just dude X the stupid. Well, it's just, it's like I intend to save someone's life and I save them. Wow, Deus Ex Machina. Like <laughs> what? <laughs> Want to come out of nowhere in the nick of time to save he Didn't come out of nowhere. He was nowhere. heading that way. Yeah. He we're, was going we're back the way he came from because there was zombies and then he saw the girl almost getting eaten by a zombie and he knocks the shit out of the zombie and then they grab the girl and run. It's, um, that's just, that's, mm. Her and be a real daddy. Uh, oh, I mean, dad. Uh, as you can tell, I'm pretty conflicted. Over the, over this scene, I mean. Let's just stare at the zombie with its head covered for an extended period. He was about to die. He realizes he's not about to die. It takes him a second to acclimate. Human beings, mm -hmm. 101. Yeah. The time to show how in shock I am while literally just feet away, people are getting eaten alive and could possibly immediately turn or have- He doesn't even know the capacity people... for the situation what? yet. Look at him. People are not allowed to panic in movies, okay? That's not allowed. You can't panic. You have to make 100% clinical, rational decisions all the time. Remember, he literally is like, hey, asshole. And he's like, ugh, fuck. Like, yeah, and he's like, come on. Yeah. It's just, yeah, he's fucking panicking. People do this. Attackers shift their gaze to me. Yeah, let's just go ahead and stare. Gong gets up just in time for a second wave of the horde mode to come and so it's very the easy. hallway right behind. You complain he takes too long, and then you're like, "Wow, lucky he got up before something else happened." Like, <laughs> pick one. Pick. Come on. Decide. Have you ever been too most... slow and too fast at the same time? Yep. Ridiculous scene in this movie. How is this wobbly glass door and wall preventing a horde of these zombies from breaking or pushing through? There's um, like five people. Those uh, things are durable. First off, those are durable. Second off, it's being pushed at by both sides. Yep. Yeah. Which probably helps keep it intact. Yeah, that's just the nature of barricades. You got two sides of pushing against each other. I don't know. That's just how the that glass works. Glass isn't necessarily. Yeah, it depends what how it's treated, or even if it it could be like a really thick plastic. I'm I'm not even sure. Ooh. Measly bolt would not be able to handle that. Speak. Well, it doesn't. Oh, it wouldn't. <laughs> like it, it ends up not holding. Then it them. does it break. Yeah. So. It, of the devil, right. these glass windows that would probably be able to handle a lot more punishment than the- Also, can you make your what? mind up? God. Jesus Christ! <laughs> you just said, it's, hey look, these doors, they should break. These windows shouldn't, though. Yeah, the, the are doors are doing? also reinforced on either side by, like, steel. Like, that's, yeah. that's just a window. 
Jesus. <laughs> and you don't even know how long they've been bashing against that particular yeah, window. That's like, right. why, why, why? Force get shattered to pieces to add even more tension from both sides of the people trying to enter the train. Time to stare and shock more while these things get there. <laughs> people are shocked, Sin. <laughs> <laughs> Can, Can you believe that like an old me, lady would, would be frozen be with fear? No, old women yeah. are very much known for being shad warriors in the middle of yeah. zombie battle. Bearings yeah. <laughs> to attack more. Here we go, shutting the door just in the nick of time before zombies slam their face against the window. They were being chased by zombies. They were being chased and they, and ran... they closed it because, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's common in zombie movies that when you close the door, the zombies immediately stop and go, oh, damn, and then walk away. <laughs> oh, that was, it wouldn't be dramatic if we banged against it now. I guess we'll do something else. Yeah, we, can't, we can't go up and bang against the window, man. We'll look stupid. Like, <laughs> one, yeah. the pregnant woman yeah. gives the homeless guy a chance just in time to shut the door before zombies slam their face against He's being chased. Yeah, he was being chased by zombies. I don't just... This is so fucking weird. This the is very part strange. Two. Dramatic convenience. Poppy gets the door finally locked in all four doors. It's not convenient. It's not mean? dramatic I mean, convenience. It, it, That's it, it, him accomplishing a task that he is uh, working towards fervently. Yeah. In an attempt to complete a task, he conveniently completes it. <laughs> like, what? What is happening? Yeah, they decide to start does. cracking. <laughs> Did half the zombies in this pile just die breaking through? A lot of them aren't even squirming. They're all just kind of limp. Kind of like the well, they got bodies on top of them, so they're probably trying. This is such a quick moment that you don't even have the time to really assess exactly what everyone's and, doing uh, here as zombies. And also, they they probably are props. They'll be like that prop is a bodies. Prop pile. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is yeah. a prop pile. That's why it's not moving that much. Last night I had with my ex. <laughs> Finally, speaking some sense into the people that just stare at shit going on. <laughs> this guy needs to what? watch some live leak just to see how people <laughs> react in crisis situations that suddenly occur. People freeze the fuck up when they see something traumatic and they don't know how to handle it. Yep. That's just how people are. Yeah, the only time you can make these criticisms is when you've got, like, precedent for the character to not act this way or reason to believe that about their history. Like... To say the average human being when seeing people getting eaten, especially their friends, is, is bizarre. I know those were your BFFs, but you gotta keep moving. Plus, <laughs> oh, and they were just your friends. They gotta, you gotta keep going. You, you see can't what's dwell important? On that. that was five seconds ago. You can't dwell on the past. Yeah, just the, little, the floating angel while you're dealing with all this. Just like you know, the smart thing to do here is to continue running, not to be in shock. Thank you for listening. And minus one sin. This train is taking a while to get to full speed. Enough for Papa to grab a riot shield and nightstick, beat a few zombies back, and get on. Super convenient. Yep. A pregnant. I, I, I mean, that's a train. Know. Trains are not really not really built for you yeah, know quick tra acceleration. Tra yeah, trains don't teleport immediately into a hundred miles per hour. Like it's not, it's not a fucking Tesla. It's a train. And it's not. Right. Wait till this long. guy learns how long it takes for him to stop. He's gonna get really upset. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't know that the conductor decided to delay the speed so that more people could try and get on. Like, you don't know. ...an elderly woman and a homeless man are able to keep a retractable door from being opened by a horde of zombies. So the interesting thing about that is that the zombies might not be helping themselves if they push on a particular part of the way that door moves. They might actually be screwing themselves over if they push on the wrong part. And all you need is for someone to punch that zombie that had the head in the way, and then they close it. And then they can't see them, and then it's fine, because the next time we see them, the door is closed. So, apparently that's what happened. Well, I'm finally glad to see initiative into preventing bites by wrapping the forearms to protect themselves. Walking Dead, you've had nine seasons to do what a Korean movie did in an hour. My the Walking Dead's like the bottom of the barrel, come on. <laughs> this one sin. He just straight up wrecked that zombie into the ceiling with pure manliness. Although badass, still, how the hell? With how cramped. Um, he's pretty strong. I don't know. I guess he's really strong. Yeah. These cars are. How did three guys stun and push all of the zombies to the side long enough to get through unscathed? Um, so they got protection. They, they, they hit them in the head. The quite a well, bit well, with the bats. Like what well, you've seen it. Over. You've yeah. seen the whole scene, how you saw how they do it. Like, there's, there's even a part where uh, Chad Watch pushes... the scene! <laughs> yeah, he pushes a couple of them down and several of them are on top of each other, so they're struggling to get back up. So it's like, yeah, this, the scene shows you how they do it, it's pretty cool. The baseball team <laughs> decides to stare for an extended period of time without attacking to give our high school friend here PTSD. 
Okay. The, what, it's, it's, like, it's like two or three seconds. I don't understand. <laughs> Kid, do something for the love of God! Why no. do this... <laughs> <laughs> This guy is just like the manliest Chad Navy SEAL special <laughs> operator crisis scenario master. He never pauses to think. He never has to just do anything mentally. He's just, once something happens, he's like a machine. Instant reaction. He knows exactly what to do at any time. No preparation. Mm -hmm. Nothing can surprise him. Zombies pile up on daddy so much and only one goes after Gong. A convenient- What? Why is that a sin? Several zombies go after one guy, one of the zombies goes after another guy. You're like, okay? Time to discover that darkness pretty much blinds them. Oh, we're done with that then. Gonna, oh, it's gonna worry about copyright for a second there. Back to back roasting. Remove two sins for those. That's not a roast. He said his ringtone was tacky. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> it's like that's not roasting someone. Maybe it is to this guy. Maybe that's like top tier. Maybe roasting. I don't know. I, I would expect a super cool Mega Navy SEAL operator zombie death machine to be a bit more. Eh, maybe that is a uh, try a little harder. Okay. Even more foreshadowing. Although I do hate this ass hat, he makes a fair point when it comes to people getting through that many zombies without getting bitten. Still, you he's can an check asshat. them when they come through, How right? You could. Wait, um, that's that's the thing about right. this position is that it's unreasonable in terms of just like we just assume they're infected, we can't keep them out. It's like you can check, you can push them back out. Like uh, it's just that the, the paranoia is enough. But I don't even know what his point just, was just then. Just put on a sin for him being an asshole. That many zombies without getting bitten. Still, he's an asshat. How oh. did they get an elderly yeah. woman and for more importantly, being an asshat? That's <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Woman up the uh. luggage rack without either making noise or having a zombie aimlessly wander into them while they're. Uh, when you're looking to not make any noise, I'd imagine you're going to be very careful to go up carefully and just. I don't know. Like, is he saying even the creaking? They did it. Uh, they were very careful. Yeah. Also, the zombies aren't wandering. They're just. Kind of twerking out. Getting everyone up there. <clears throat> Did you really need to have the crunching of a can to start running? Just go! Can one of- Well, so when you, when you step on the can, that's shocking, and it stops them for a moment to both realize what just happened. It's not like he steps on the can and goes, well, I'm running anyway, bye. It's just like, oh, fuck, I stepped on a can. Guys with the baseball bat bash the only zombie's head that got through the door so our boy doesn't get bit. You don't need five people to negotiate getting through the last door, damn it. I didn't. So, protagonist goes back and starts doing that, but it's not enough because there's several limbs that are through the, the hole. A rice gum was uh -oh. in this movie. Ah! Ah! No! Oh, Jesus Christ. Don't yell. <laughs> what the hell no. was that? Just don't tip to anyone who makes YouTube videos. Just don't ever fucking do that. Never, never do it. Well, never, ever. Do, There's never a scenario where you should do it. But if you do, just turn it fucking down a bit, you know? Like, or step God, away from volume. your microphone a this little This is the kind bit. of shit that makes me never watch any of your videos again, because <laughs> yeah. I don't know when I can just... Because at any point when I'm listening to this on, like, a speaker or something, I know that you're the kind of person who will randomly yell extremely loudly and i'm just fuck it i'm not gonna watch your shit anymore oh daddy no this is probably the most powerful scene in the movie showing how basically sensationalist and frantic people would be to close each other out in anarchy minus one sin bring it a day don't understand okay. there's so much more to compliment if you're gonna do this this way <laughs> but okay tear to my eye daddy says the baby's name <laughs> Minus one sin. I'm guessing manliness slows down the infection time? Why does she No, it's about he's right. He's also larger. In the you get bit in the hand. He's bit in the hand, yeah. Yeah, he's so not suddenly. only bit in the hand, but he is a big boy. So he's it's probably going to take longer for the infection to get through him. Did she just not want to live in a world like this? I, genuinely watching that scene, I think that he considers grabbing her and she basically says, don't, I'm not, you're not going to get to me in time. It's not, I, I don't, I didn't get the impression she wanted to die, but I don't know, maybe. No. Was she suicidal? Did she want to traumatize her sister? I have so many questions! Closing the door on impending zombies in the nick of time, part three. This, what? They were there, I, I don't they know. They were there, yeah. <laughs> um, it's another important I mean, all scene. The...
The transforming Gong confronts a man that embodies the selfishness and cowardice that he had been for so long in the ass hat. Minus one here. The sister zombie here. Wait, he, wait, wait. This he, went up. He said minus one and he added a sin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it went up. Uh, Maybe that's fool. part of the spoof. I don't, I don't know. It's I, hard to tell at this I point. Cowardice <laughs> that he had been for so long in the ass hat. Minus one here. The sister zombie here is so docile. Do elderly zombies not feel like being feral? Why would the fear? Well, so, again, yeah. he, he doesn't know how an old person's body works. <laughs> it's, not as, it's not as strong or as agile or any of those other things, because it's a fucking old person. There's a reason we put them in homes. <laughs> <laughs> people push the quarantine to a safer portion of the car. Wouldn't they want to be further away from the known infected? No. Well, so that requires them all to move out rather than the other people being cast out, if you know what I mean. Um, it, it, you could argue logistically that they would be more invested in being in the, the next car while they stay here. Um, but I don't know. They, they, they seem to tell them to get the fuck out of their place, which is this. So It's a, it's a toss up a little bit. One thinks to stop this lady from approaching the door until it's too- So, they don't notice she's doing that because they're all concerned about the door. Late? Okay. Karma is a bitch and this scene is killer! Minus five damn sins, cause why not? Gong gets a call from Kim saying that the assets and stocks they sold at the beginning of the movie were a direct cause of the YS biotech outbreak. Although the facility already had been dealing with the leak before dropping all funding, it seems like this scene was shoehorned in to have the main character somehow be related to the outbreak and ultimately have blood on So you didn't get the impression that it was tied to them from the opening scenes? Mm. I yeah. did. Yeah. This was just the, the payoff of the POV character realizing that that's the case. I felt like this was yeah. baked into the story from the get-go. His hands for his selfishness. Speak of the devil, he washes the blood from his hands. He survived? Why would you trust this guy? Why wouldn't- He had no reason to not trust him. He probably assumed at that point that they're working together. Yeah. Either of you shut the door behind you? I mean... 50 50 they're rushing to get i think that their intention there was to open the door go through next door open the door and then they realize it's stuck and so they start bashing it like that's an easy mistake for them to make um and it wouldn't change anything because uh businessmen would have opened the door son of a bitch holy crap jin he here is already showing late signs of infection the yeah, she was chewed the- like, so we don't see yeah. the totality of the- what it does to her, but since she's changing fast, then we have to assume it bit the fuck out of her. Like, th this is easy stuff, I don't know why you just assume- it, a leg bite means X time. It's like, that seems like a really limited view. Well, at the beginning of the- Especially because if you bite into, like, um... What are they- what's the- isn't the biggest blood flow, like, vein in the, um, the thigh? Mm, I yeah, so. the yeah, yeah. thigh. The yeah. thigh. So if it really chewed in there, I don't know. <laughs> movie was bit in the leg and was allowed to run, get in, walk around for a bit, and convulse for a few minutes. Jin He literally gets seconds before seizing up and almost dying. Yeah, it, it, so the bite would have been like all you have to assume is the bite was more shallow with the first girl. This one was much deeper. It's still fast. Simple. Like yeah. it's not taking minutes. <laughs> so. Damn it, Captain Asset! You ruined everything! This is some Call of Duty logic. Giant vehicle crashes and the main character somehow survives, passes out, and gets woken up in the middle of it's hell. Not crashing onto them, it's tilted onto the other one. You yeah, see that in that scene you're showing right now. How's this Call of Duty's thing? Isn't this just lots Ice. of things? That you're in an accident and you wake up uh, after it and you realize that you're in some serious shit? Like, that's just... How's that Call that's, of Duty? That happens a lot. I guess because it happens a lot in Call of Duty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all I would have as well. <laughs> Do you remember how many times it happens in Amnesia Rebirth, Mel, where you get knocked out and oh. wake up and just like, oh no, I'm in a different place and everything's horrible. Yeah. That game's very good. Stuck between a train and a... What? Train I don't believe that you mean that. I, I really don't mean it. Place. God! Oh, Jesus. Oh my God! <laughs> Stop it! Uh, I guess Braggs is lucky that he's not here. Yeah. The homeless guy. All right, I'm turning back up. He's gonna scream again at one point, isn't he? <laughs> probably. Yeah. Paid you back well, for saving him part. and is sacrificing He'll scream himself. when our main guy gets bitten. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry. The least you could do Where's is thank stone? him. You know, I love this shot. What? It reminds me of that opening scene. In Wait, did he say the least you could do is thank him? 
<laughs> they you did. actually say that? I did. The homeless yeah. guy paid you back for saving him and is sacrificing himself. The least you could do is thank him. So, here's the thing about facial expressions, my man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's thankful. You know, yeah. I love this shot. It reminds me of that opening scene in 28 Weeks Later, but I also can't help but think, where the hell were all these zombies when the train first stopped? Apparently. So, the train crashing releases a lot of the zombies. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, holy crap. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that after the little train they got out from under, like, falls down fully. Yeah. Like, see how it had a little gap and it falls down fully? You see them all climbing out the top. Yeah. These feral-minded zombies are coordinated enough to grasp onto each other in a big... Coordinated enough to simply grab... The thing that's in front of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're so coordinated. ...ball and climb on top of each other to get onto grab. the train. How do the zombies holding directly onto the Christ. train car with their hands have enough strength to carry the weight of 40 to 50 other zombies? Um, that one, that one is tough. You've got a couple of zombies at the front holding it, so it's a distributed weight to a degree, but that is a tough amount of weight to be able to hold right. for, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I bet the ones on the bottom- Again, consequentially though, this gets stopped. Nobody gets hurt, <clears throat> it's stopped, so. Yeah. ...are all ripped to shreds. Another bit of infection rate BS, Asshat got bit before getting on the train- so again, so this is what I mean about, uh, maybe I'm being really generous, but it seems like this is all you have to assume is however he was bitten, it would have been shallow, and it would have been maybe lower on the leg or something, because it yeah, has to... Yeah, it took a while. We don't see the bites and, and how deep they go, so if they take longer to fully change, then you just have to assume the bite wasn't as significant. Easy. ...and still has not fully turned, yet the girl he indirectly killed turned almost instantaneously. I guess it was just so they could have the last direct conflict with my fear-mongering, selfish side. The second you saw Ass Hat look away, knowing he was infected, why did you not attempt to throw him overboard? Because he doesn't fucking know what to do here exactly. He's stressed the fuck out. He's dealing with someone who is pleading to him, and then he stops talking. Sorry, oh, I've just realized the time and I need to run away so that I can catch my train. Well, it's all right. You actually managed uh, to almost see the whole video. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> if, if, you, if you need to go right away, go right ahead. But I was going to say, if you want to let people know where they can where they can find you and what you're up to. and I'll, uh, You I'll can you find me under your fucking bed tonight. <laughs> oh, sick. Fucking dreams. Nice. But, uh, nah, you can find me at Count Dankula on YouTube or Count Dankula on uh, Twitter. What's, um, yeah. You got any plans for your newer... Uh, you mad lads? Mad lads? Uh, I've got a mad lad coming out. I never tell anybody who they are beforehand, but I've got a mad lad coming out next week, and then... Nice. Oh, no, I should have a mad lad out in a couple of days, hopefully, and then I've got another mad lad next week, which is, like, I believe is going to be over a fucking hour long. It took me so long to film Damn, it. Damn, dude. Noise. That must have been a particularly yeah. mad lad. Yeah. It was. It basically, his entire life was a fucking shit show. <laughs> like, <laughs> the yeah. best kind of person. Yep, pretty much. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run now because this is the last train home. So if I don't get it, I'm fucked. <laughs> dude, dude. I, just, I hope yeah, there's no, no zombies dude. on it. I guess. Um. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Haha. <laughs> We're gonna uh, run to catch the train. Yeah, bro. Right. <laughs> I'll just right. hold on to the back of it, you know, it's like dragging along the ground. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the drunk man's way of doing it. All right, well, yeah, thank you so much for joining us, dude. Thank uh, you. We'll catch you again sometime. Have a, have a good ride home. No worries, guys. Wait. See you later. Bye bye. Right. See ya. All right, let's finish this fucking thing. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Keeping his word to his fallen new brother, he sacrifices himself for manly man's pregnant wife, while also succumbing to the very selfishness that once plagued him. Redemption at its finest. Goodbye, one sin. Even after watching mm. this four one. times, I still <laughs> Holy shit. One. <laughs> this scene drove home this character and the movie in general. Because I'm such a sap, we're gonna have the sin tally right now. Two slow walking, non jittering people in the tunnels, <laughs> okay. and you don't think to at least attempt communicating with them before you pop. They're gonna be pretty ruthless at this point in the infection. Yeah. I would imagine. Not yeah. gonna be taking any fucking risks, and he says, unable to verify. And at that point, high command's probably gonna be like, wipe them out. Yep. Yeah. Woman's head. Finishing the movie, Suwan finishes a song that she could not do without her father's presence, and it ultimately saves her life, as if her father's advice and spirit looked over her one last time. Minus yeah. one more sin. Minus one. <laughs> All right. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Well. Satire. They were a bit bitey. <laughs> I think I've been poisoned by my constituents. Oh my God. <laughs>
Can I offer you a nice egg in this trying time? Yeah, he's got an egg! <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, jockey. Is oh, yeah. All right, I think we're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm happy to. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Train to Busan's pretty good. Yeah, that's a good movie. Would Con recommend. Consider this the EFAP of recommending it. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> just two hours of talking about it, and then an hour of whatever that was. Um, yeah. This one was weird. Like, this was if this was like a proper spoof. I mean, I guess it's there just was, there was a spoof was like plus it. ten. Like, was, I think it's bad. just mixed messaging, and it's kind of the frustrating. It's one of the frustrating things about cinema sins, and it's the frustrating thing about like anything that's in that style. When you say, "Yeah, some of the points are legitimate, some of them are obviously bullshit, <laughs> and some of them are jokes," I have no idea what I'm meant to be taken away from this. I have yeah. no clue. It's just really frustrating uh, as a viewing experience. It's like, is that a joke? And it feels like you can just pick and choose when it's a joke and when it's real. You know, just like, yeah, no, that was a joke. No, that was obvious. <laughs> Idiot. That was obviously satire. Anyway, um... Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I, I could honestly make... picture him being like, well, none, none of it was serious. And I'd be like, well, but some so of the things you said... did you not said... believe anything you said? Oh, like, when you were really sad about the guy and the flashback to yeah. his uh, kid? You meant that. And he'd be like, oh, no, 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 I meant that stuff. And I'd be like, okay, so what about the valid flaws you brought up? And it, like, and he'd just be like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess so. And I'd just be like, god, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, um, but yeah, uh, Rags is having internet troubles. He's uh, still is still down, so he'll he'll come back as best he'll and as fast as he out, can. I guess. Um, but I suppose we will we? just start reading Us? super chats. Uh, oh shit, boy! Yeah, because yeah, that, that, that is the main two <laughs> things that we were going to do today. So um, on to the third and final. What a quaint EFAP. We'll have, yeah, to see, yeah, we'll have to see what people think of this one, because this is a very unusual EFAP, to be fair. Uh, kind of. Hey, we do well. like things, guys. It's nice to talk about the things that we like. Yeah. Hell yeah. And yeah, Train to Busan is just a hard recommend. It's just a great story. I was yeah, gonna it's say, really it's good. like, talk about the Ruby Rose thing. It's like, but Rags isn't here. I don't know, it seems a little bit sad that he doesn't get to talk about any of his perspective on it. Shouldn't we wait, hopefully, until he returns? Since, it's, it's more than likely his, his internet will come back within the hours that we'll be talking about the messages, yeah. so. Um, also, uh, I just got added saying Ruby Rose, uh, Warner Brothers have responded about it. They have, yeah. Uh, what have they said? Out of curiosity. So their response was that she is like, th that, hold on, let, fuck, I need to find it. Um, so the response was they said that, um, that it's revisionist history. And oh that they chose not to exercise the option to bring her back for season two because of multiple complaints about workplace behavior that were reviewed and handled privately. Mm. So that's their response. Mm. Spicy. Well, yeah, I guess it's... I don't know what, what comes of it after that, yeah. This was... Yeah, someone in chat said, no you, basically. It's like, yeah, <laughs> no <that's> you. Basically, <laughs> the response, yeah. Yeah. Well, because we haven't mm. talked about the whole thing. We said that we well, were going to um, talk about it. Yeah, well, we? well, it says Rags is green right now on Discord, so he might be coming back. Um, and if he does, we'll have a little chat about it. Sure. So, um, first super chat of the night. <gasps> and that's, that's all it says. So, oh. Nice. Good oh, job. Right. You did it. Lord Longbone of Mjolnir Town Abbey, have you given any more thought to Kong Fap of Peter Jackson's Long Kong when there's less going on? It'd be an epic movie fap. P.S. Hello, Wagsies. Scritches for the good boy. Someone's gonna have to say thank you in Rags's voice. Belch. That's that's not. Right. <laughs> thank you. I was right. panicking. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Well, yes. Uh, there is an intention to do a, a long Kong fap long bong kagonga donga donga at some point. Um, that's racist. Also, is this louder than usual? Let me know, I chat. Know. Ew! Why can't I control it? <laughs> Shitty Mario Party Six. Hmm. You this chat? You this? See him clicking the controller, but nothing's happening. I have big concern. Did you cut it again? No. <laughs> I would never. It is a GameCube game, and the controller is set. So what's going on here? Dumb. Hmm. Try rebooting it. See what happens. 
Um, Metal, where's the train to your blowhole? Uh, it's, uh... It's left? Um, um, uh, I, I don't know. It's a secret. Alright. But it's always... <laughs> your, you're always watered. My blowhole is always watered. Oh, there you go. I think the control's working again. Alright, well, I fixed it with a genius restart. Good job. Bet you're jealous of my powers. Yeah, it should work in IT. I should also, do well. <laughs> I guess I'll lower the the game by one. Where are you? It's on four out of one hundred. I put it to three. <clears throat> Fucking loud ass games. What'd you bring me? An NDA clearly expiring. <laughs> well, um, this is the thing. When I read the stuff about Jacob, I was like, all right. I mean, we, it, I'm still gonna try and maintain my principle. We gotta hear it from him as well, his perspective, you know. And whatever the mm -hmm. specifics are. Um, sorry, Muller, I'm watching Lord of the Rings Two Towers. Hi, Rex. Hello. Yeah, there you go. Nailed it. Um, that's fair. <laughs> I can understand watching Lord of the Rings Two Towers. That's fair. Um, favorite character? Mine was Asian Geralt. I mean, there is only one favorite character, okay. Yeah. Bad man. <laughs> There's a correct one. Do not fuck it up. Um... What's this madness? And EFAP on Wednesday? Yeah, and you're still getting another one on Saturday. And then another yeah. one on Wednesday again. So it's and giving us the sleep back. Or me, I guess you guys can sleep when I'm away. Also, there's no reason to keep that a secret, because I guess they've got more homework now. You guys gotta see Squid Game before next Wednesday. Uh, oh, that's um, Wednesday. Oh, yeah, so only a week from right. now you will have to have seen that show, because we're gonna go through it. Um, gonna funnily watch enough, tomorrow, right? I went through it. A, people in chat, were any of you on Real BBC when I mentioned some of the the criticisms that I got? Like, <laughs> people be like, "You're nitpicking. Stop it. Leave the show alone." I was like, "Oh man," because uh, there, I actually quite like Squid Game, um, and you'll find yeah. that out next Wednesday. But you'll also find that I I consider there to be some flaws. <laughs> a little pedantic mm. baller. I mean. What, well, this is the thing, I'm at home now. The EFAP pedantry caves, where we mine pedantry infinitely. So it's all happy. Um, like peasantry. <laughs> but yeah, you better, you better finish it up by Wednesday, because we're gonna go through all of the good and bad. Just like we did today, except it's a little longer than Train to Busan. Like, a couple mm. minutes. <laughs> um, uh, fuck. Have you done EFAP 144 Super Chats yet? If not, when? Um, they could end up being the last ones we end up catching up on. Depends on how it all sorts out, but the way we've been trying to do it is um, there's a main sort of backlog that I'm just chunking through, and then there's uh, any time we get a new set that, are, that they're usually the ones that are tried to done first. It's the best we can do in terms of trying to keep them as relevant as possible, but um, we're not through them all yet, so I don't know that 144 has been done, I'm afraid. Good day, everyone, and remember, no matter what, don't ask Dankula to say the phrase purple burglar alarm. That's, that's, that's the, the big scar. <laughs> uh, that leaf. probably would have come out very different. <laughs> like, that wouldn't have been easy. Damn, that's something we probably should have gotten to say, actually, yeah. Yeah. Shame. Um, I rewatched Train to Busan for this and can say its sequel was one of the most disappointing sequels ever. Glad to see you guys covering this movie. You know. Sounds like it. Maybe we could do an EFAP movies for that. Just to see Fuck. what it is. I mean, sure. <laughs> hey man, I don't know that it's gonna be the worst thing. It, it, Dank said the opening 15 minutes are pretty good, so... Why that? It's better than most of the other things. Mm-hmm. Would you rather fight a chimpanzee once a year with a sword, or a chicken every time you open a door? The chimpanzee. Um, I'll take the, the chimp, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm fighting a chicken. Just one. I'll be fighting a chicken like fucking 10 times a day. At least. Yeah, <laughs> every time I... <laughs> like goddamn! Every time I get out life. of my bathroom, I took a shit. It's like a fucking yeah. chicken in my hallway. Because of course, like, the off. chimp is not the chimp is a harder opponent, but with a sword as well, that just makes it way like yeah. I ain't fight the chicken every day of the week. Every <laughs> not every day of the week, every fucking hour of the day. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I gotta get up to take a piss in the middle of the night. You open the door. Oh, well, fuck! The so, chicken will run at you with the pants down. 
<laughs> there is a wick around, a, a kind of wick around. Leave all your doors in your house open, so you got that. But then every yeah, time but, you go outside, and also every time you need to unlock or you know just lock the doors and then go outside and go you know buy anything, and in your car too. If you open the door to the car, you have to find a chicken. And then when you get out, you gotta you, you gotta go do it into too. the shops. There's a chicken waiting for you yeah. to fight you. <laughs> It's like, wait, I'm, I'm doing groceries any minute it, now, just have to kill this chicken Exactly, it dominates your life. The chicken will dominate your life. I'm changing up this time. I'm making Wario a shit AI, but I'm giving him a star. We'll see how that plays out. Um, Count, can you retell that one story with a guy having a smoke in a train and another guy telling him to stop? Last time you told it, I didn't understand the punchline thanks to your Scottishness. I'm afraid Dank ran out of time. Uh, have to go catch his train to Busan. To, to Haggis. <laughs> oh god, that is that's. Aww. Oh, that we're gonna get banned from through. YouTube, dude. <laughs> what do you mean? There's a town probably called Haggis. It's just it's just cultural appropriation at that point, then. Yeah. Okay. Na naming things from another place. You're just taking this stuff. Stop it. <laughs> Uh, hello everyone. Hope you're all doing good. Currently going through the EFAP videos and I'm on 18. Bilbo Baggins, look at women, rhino milk, future spiders, rags, and then an eggplant. And look, he's here. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Hope you're ha having fun with all them EFAPs. That's, that's yeah. good stuff. Rags, now that you're here, we, we were waiting for you yeah. to arrive before talking about the Batwoman situation. Oh yeah, that's right. There's been some, uh, there's been some Batwoman developments. I don't have, um... Do you want to do you want to frame it, Fringy? Because I'm not well, 100. So I'll tell you what, yeah, Fringy, there, there actually, that, yeah. before you start, someone sent me a uh, someone sent me some stuff that maybe you could use. Uh, give me a second. So, da, 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 da. <clears throat> let me post these for you. Oh, I've got like an article that just has it all oh, okay. written down. Because the way that it was communicated initially was um, suboptimal. Right. Like, I got really yeah, long paragraphs. Place. And she wrote really it in bad the, punctuation. the font that's like hard to make the fucking words out. Yeah, well, yeah, there was the one that was in cursive that I legitimately was struggling to read. Um, but there's an article that just puts it all there. So I guess the. I'll just do the summary, I guess. So she said, like, I'm gonna say what happened. Um, she, there's some guy called Peter Roth. I think he's the president of Warner Brothers Television. She basically accusing him of like, um, she said making young women steam your pants around your crotch while you were still wearing pants, or like, and then apparently hired a private investigator to get information on her so that he could fire her. That was her claim. Hmm. And then, uh, and then, uh. Something that's cut, uh, yeah, so she, uh, she suffered from a broken neck, rib, and a tumor, um, but was told they wouldn't make their day if she got an x-ray, um, and then, uh, she was told that she had to go back to work ten days later or the whole cast and crew would be fired, um, Roth told her that she wouldn't recast and she had just lost the studio min uh, millions and cost so many people their jobs. Um, when she said that you could have just rewritten it to give her a few weeks to heal up. Apparently she took a pay cut to do Batwoman. <coughs> um, and she couldn't participate in Comic-Con unless they redid the schedule, but they didn't want to do that. Um, uh, and then I'll just, uh, sorry, let's, let's go down. So they were t talking about how like a bunch of people got injured on the set. Somebody who got third degree burns on his whole body. They were Damn. given no therapy after witnessing skin fall off his face. Um, and then they were told they had to do a sex scene without a minute to process, having lost two stunt doubles and so suffered a cut to the face so close to her eye in a stunt that she could have been blind. Um, and then there was a crew injury in which an assistant was left quadriplegic, uh, paralyzed in all four limbs. The studio, she said that the studio blamed it on her being on her phone even though she needed to be using her phone. Um, the crew member in question received no help at first from the network, as they had to investigate, leaving her to raise money herself. I remember we that was we heard about that like last year, right? The the GoFundMe? Yeah, the that particular person? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then continues to say that uh, the showrunner wanted to keep filming during COVID stuff. Um, and a bunch of other shows got their production shut down on the same network, but apparently they wanted to continue. Uh, and the only reason that it didn't happen was because the government basically said can't. Um, and then uh, then she said that Dugray Scott was acting like an asshole on set, basically. Yeah. And that he, um, did she say he abused women or stunt people? Or yeah, something? so he said, she said uh, that he heard a female stunt double, he yelled like a little bitch uh, at women and was a nightmare. And then um, Ruby Rose sent out an email asking for a no yelling policy, which was declined. Hmm. Um, and then <clears throat> apparently uh, <clears throat> she was late one time because she was in the hospital. Um, and she was told to get a taxi because she was not allowed to drive, but they didn't want to do anything about that. Um, oh my god. Yeah, so that, that was what she said. Um, and then the response from the studio was that that was revisionist history, and that the, the truth was that the network didn't want to bring her back for season two because of multiple complaints about workplace behavior. They were extensively reviewed and handled privately out of respect for all concern. So that's, that's the, that's, that's where it's at right now. Mm. Um, what a shit show! Just in yeah, 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 yeah. It just sounds shit. <clears throat> it's um, I've seen people comment in as well. Just like God, the, it's so obvious, right? Because like all of the virtue signaling they do in terms of like <laughs> what the show is all about, but at the same time, like mm -hmm. the amount of damage that the people who work to create that show endure. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I guess that's the thing. Is like. People have been hurt on this show. We remember hearing about it last year, or it was the year before that. I definitely remember about a woman who was injured and had to set up a GoFundMe. I definitely remember that. Yeah. Where the, um, you would need a GoFundMe if it I, was... Well, that, right, you know, that's, the, that's the part. That's It's like, you would presume that you would get support from the studio if you were injured on set. Yeah. Especially if you were doing your job and then you got hurt because of stuff that was happening on set. Um... Yeah, that, like, as someone's mentioned in the chat, the injury stuff would be well documented. It's like, yeah, I guess, uh... And Ruby Rose said she had, like, a documentary worth of information on it, I guess. But, like, you need to communicate that more clearly next time, because, goddamn, like, the format that you used to say all of this is, like, not great. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can barely read it. It's, it's really, yeah. I wonder how much of it is true. Mm -hmm. I know, guess that's, that's the, the thing. Yeah. It's, well, because somebody, to... somebody's not telling the truth, um, or alternatively, there's truth on both sides. <clears throat> Which is probably the case. Well, yeah, I guess that's... Uh, damn, dude. I guess I'm curious, because something's got to come of it. Because it's like, that's a lot of things that just have been uh, put out there. Like, I don't, I don't know that the response that they've given is, like, enough to address every single thing, you know? Yeah, I just, I have no clue. That's the thing, it's, uh... I don't know, yeah. I mean, it, who part. knows if it's true that we're just caught in this weird situation. Um, uh, I, I actor, mean, I, by the way, oh, yeah? The actor who plays Cyborg has, like, tweet out support for her as well, and it's just like, this is probably gonna get around. Okay. It probably is to be gonna fair, get around. Um, it's probably the most serious of these kinds of things compared to stuff when they say like dude, I was yeah, mean, mean things were said to me. This is like three I was, or four people yeah, seriously injured, yeah. seemingly. Well, yeah, because somebody said she was in hospital. It's like yeah, she was definitely injured on that show. Like I remember where you heard about it again last year that Ruby Rose got injured on that show. Like seriously, get spinal surgery, right? Well, I mean, you saw the pictures, of, there were pictures in the, uh, the yeah, post that she yeah. put up of her in hospital, and, like, they kept filming the show, yeah. so she probably did, so, like, she did go to hospital, and then she would have had to have gone back to, like, film the show at some stage, so. Well, and can we, is there gonna be proof to be found that they said 10 days, otherwise we'll fire everyone? I guess there'd be a timeline, right? Like, when did you get your treatment, and when were you back on set? I just mean like um, proof of like that message because that's gonna, oh, that's damning as uh, fuck to be like well, if you don't yeah, heal fast really enough bad. we'll fire everyone. It's like oh my god. <laughs> yeah, are, are these texts? Are they emails? Are I they... guess. Well, I guess that's the thing is you need to that. Yeah, you, we'd have to see that. 
Because if if that if that one's true, like Jesus oh, Christ, that uh, yeah, because yeah, right now she's got the benefit of why would she lie about that? But mm -hmm. especially if it's it, so many things. So yeah, which like, means bam, like surely bam, it can bam, be. Bam. You'd hope it can be proven for her sake, because if they can imply I guess, otherwise. Uh, I guess the big thing would be if if some of these other people who were um <clears throat> the people who were injured, if they spoke out as well and corroborated what she yeah. said, then it's like oh man. Well, she's not looking good. the biggest voice that could do it, right? Outside of Scott himself, like, saying, I did yeah. this. Uh, all the, the people, mm -hmm. but, like, she's the biggest star of anybody who's been on EFAB. She's uh, definitely the biggest one, one yeah. On <laughs> EFAB. <laughs> um. <clears throat> yeah, Bryce. What a shit show. Well, also, no. what a shit show. <laughs> yeah. said, uh, there Damn. was There was a part two of this, sorry, like, Warner Brothers have responded, you said? I, I read out the response. Oh. The I oh, I thought I read it out while it was here. Yeah, the response was they said like you we didn't we didn't this is revisionist and revisionist we decided history, not to yeah. bring you back because of complaints uh that we reviewed. Um mm. it's, it's 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 like a corporate response. Yeah, it does um, like it. But I mean I imagine she's gonna respond, so I guess we'll have to see how that all pans out. Mm. <laughs> it's a weird one. Terrible. Yeah, it just sounds shit. Like, if, like it just sounds um, like what a shitty environment to be in to make a show. Yeah, if that stuff's true. If, if that's like, what true, a nightmare. Yeah. So, it sounds awful. What a freaking like, nightmare. Yeah. Does it? Um, do you think it changes anything about the, our coverage of it, or is it just like, damn? Um, well, I mean, we none of the, this information wasn't known. Um. I, we knew about injuries that happened um, on set, but I guess uh, how it was handled and stuff like that, that was uh, that was unknown mm. information. I guess it's just, um, like, that really sucks if it's true. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. It's, it's just sour, that's all. Because obviously uh, we've recorded all of Season 2 stuff, for reference chat. Um... We actually, mm -hmm. there's a second episode of Bat One coming out soon, right? For season three. Uh, yeah, I think well, yeah. I'm pretty sure like already it's coming behind. out now. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't checked um, the Batwoman subreddit, but I have to assume that they're having trouble with this. It's awkward to support the show, you know. Um. Yeah. 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 Nice. I wonder if um. What's it? Who's the name of the new Batwoman? Javicia, just some like something like that. Yeah, Javicia some Leslie. Yeah. Name. Uh, but yeah, I'm wondering if there's a. I mean, it, what if she quits? You know, what if she's like, you know, in solidarity with Ruby Rose or something like that? That'd be wild. <laughs> oh, well, then, Rex, yeah, I guess she, that'd be the end of the show, right? What if she stays in the show and, and, to improve it from within? <laughs> <laughs> burn it off. She doesn't want to burn it all to the ground. Mm. The CW. <laughs> Honestly, if she left, they're probably just trying to appeal to get Kate back. But the new actress, I mean. I guess, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably. If they lose both of them, then yeah, they'd be like, what the fuck do we do now? Recast Batwoman again. Man, if you had no clue about the matter of that show, and you just go from the end of season one to the beginning of season two, how weird is that? Like, they chose <laughs> to recast Batwoman and make this person, but okay. <laughs> that is definitely a strange one. But I love Ruby Rose. <laughs> hey, I genuinely missed her in season two. Yeah. <laughs> Rippy Fat Batwoman. I mean, obviously all the season two stuff will still happen. I just, I, I imagine we'll find out when we watch the next one what the vibe will be. I don't know if it changes much of anything because a lot of um, amazing stuff has horrible production stuff going on. Mm. But yeah. I, I don't know how much this changes. Yeah. I guess we'll just have to wait and see how it all pans out. Mm -hmm. Don't make Alice into a bad woman. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, they would. They would. <clears throat> My lords, the Count and Metal, Wonderbar. I know, yeah. right? Full cast. Wonderbar. A new EFAP right as I finish work. Accompany me home, you massives. Also, hi, Rags. Play... Hello! S.P. Tarkov, my single-player mod of choice. S.P. Tarkov? Yeah, I don't know what that is myself. Mm. 
Uh, just got done with 150. Can't believe you guys spent over 24 hours literally only bashing one woman. Also, <laughs> hi everyone except Rags. Also, hi Rags. Hello. Wait a minute. That means they said hello to everyone. That is. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. We we went we went hard on Grace Randolph. Can you believe it? I can. I, I rewatched a lot of that the other day. <laughs> I was laying down and that shockingly video was bad, bad video. That was a really bad video. Kind of interesting the mileage of different videos because the one we just watched today, we got through that one really quick. Like, um, it was dismantling the points, which is super fast. But the Grace Randolph one, we couldn't get past the first minute in like an hour. There was just so much wrong. Um, am I the only one that sees an owl giving the middle finger when I look at the Hulu logo? Hulu? Let's have a look at the Hulu logo. Hulu. An owl? Yeah, an owl giving a middle finger is what they said. Um. I don't, yeah, I don't see it. I mean, it's just uh, the weird Hulu, right? Like, it's kind of, I thought it was going to be yeah. up to some kind of shape, but I don't really see it. I just, I just don't see it, yeah. I wish Sorry. I did. Um, good movie. Dad was definitely a diversity hire, though. They were all <laughs> diversity hires. <laughs> None of them were English. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I was outraged. Uh, thoughts on comments Ruby Rose made today? Well, there you go. We just did that. Yeah, Neato. there you go. Oh, apparently, so the U's in the Hulu thing would be the eyes of the owl, I guess? That's what they going mm. for? Wait, Hulu? Oh. You mean like the streaming mm. thing? No, the other Hulu. Oh. Mm. I haven't seen the movie yet, but it's I on. Just, yeah. Um, it's on. I on a movie list I'm working through, so drop in this super and leaving to avoid spoilers. Yeah, this is one of them EFAPs where, if you haven't seen it, I would actually recommend watching it first. Um, yeah. Yes. You can always come back another time. A spoil fab. Because when it comes to stuff like fucking Black Widow, I'd be like, you don't. I don't know if you should see that movie. Don't. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Don't see it. Fuck like it. So bad. Um, I had an argument about objective standard, and we reached a stalemate. I wanted to ask, what makes a movie objectively bad? Um, simple version we usually go with is just, uh, what is a story? Break it down into component parts, and then does it fail to meet that? definition that category basically in the same way that you could do it with a lot of how we categorize everything um yeah, what we often go to work is, like is a, a bad house. chair yeah uh but yeah pretty much it's inconsistent with itself doesn't have cause and effect you know it's pretty basal stuff like that mm -hmm. nothing too complex honestly where the tipping point is i don't know can be difficult to figure that out, but uh, when you deal with something like Black Widow, it's like, well, it passed the tipping point for sure. Everyone knows that. But something yeah, like a thing, um, then another thing, like none of the parts just work. Mm hmm. Where's the exit in this game? What am I supposed to be doing? I'm going the right way. Yeah. Oh, I did. Nice. Um. Hello, all. Has anyone here heard of Sturgeon's Law? If not, I'd get Wikipedia Andy on the case, because I believe you guys already get the principle. I think I've heard that before. I don't know what it is. I... I don't know that I've heard of it. Um, any of you guys able to have a look at that? Uh, say it isn't one more time. Isn't that Sturgeon? Isn't that like the, the SNP or something? Stur Sturgeon's Law, uh, Sturgeon's Revelation, commonly referred to as Sturgeon's Law, is an adage commonly cited as 90% of everything is crap. <laughs> so. The adage was coined by <laughs> Theodore Sturgeon, an American science fiction author and critic. 90% of everything is crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. It does sound familiar. It does sound familiar, yes. I mean, the, the adage gets truer and truer every year, it seems. Voltaire expressed a similar idea in the short story, The World As It Is, published in 1748. You have read some very despicable things, but in all times, in all countries, in all genres, the bad abounds and the good is rare. Based Voltaire. 
Yeah, the the, uh, the original. So the September 1957 issue of Venture, um, and on that hangs Sturgeon's revelation. It came to him that science fiction is indeed 90% crud, but that also Eureka, 90% of everything is crud. All things, cars, books, cheese, hairstyles, people, and pins are. To the expert and the discerning eye, crud, except for the acceptable uh, tithe, which we happen to like. I saw somebody mention 80-20, but that's a different principle. And like 80-20 is, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that's more like rooted in like numbers. 80-20. Um, yeah, the, yeah, right oh, that's right. Someone said, uh, copious production errors, wooden acting, there's more to a movie's quality than just the writing. So when we're talking about the writing, that's what we're talking about. Um, yeah. We often talk about acting on EFAP. I don't know why you'd think we missed that. And like yeah. you know, cinematography and stuff like that, it comes up. Yep. But uh, we focus on the writing mainly. Um, also, yeah, I, I'm guessing we've not read this part out yet, right? Because he just posted it, uh, the. Um... Yeah, do Grace Scott. Same so, yeah, he's. That's what he said. So this is the thing when a claim comes out, there's this. I think we have a bias toward claims sometimes because with these because just like yeah. why would you say if it wasn't true if it's probably true i guess i could see okay it's probably true well hold on and then, i mean you never if if it was her fault she got fired if she didn't get the compensation she felt she needed if she had a bone to pick with a cw i mean well so this is the, the, what i was saying is like you take a step be, yeah. you take a step back and you go wait but all of it could be lies or misrepresentations you have to keep that in mind and that's why just earlier yeah. I was like, I want to, I want to get his perspective before I try and make any judgment. His quote is literally, "They are everything she said is entirely made up and never happened." Like, oh, uh, oh. Hmm. <laughs> I guess that's the thing is you just gotta wait and see as more perspective come out. Yeah, there's not much to do with that at this well, point. Well, yeah, uh, it's just state of limbo, isn't it? Uh, yeah, two two actors have made claims that oppose each other, and it's just like, all right then. We're gonna have to need yeah, evidence. We can't really do anything else. Yeah, yeah, I can't do anything until then. <sighs> it's really unfortunate, though. Um, yeah. Because, you, you know, like, we all. If, if someone's like, genuinely, do you guys think that you want the show cancelled and stuff and you want it in office? Like, I mean, yeah. I also would want it to be good, and I also don't want the people to suffer when making it, you know? Like, much, I, yeah. I would prefer by far that everyone's having fun making it, but it is absolute horseshit. Like that would that's fine with me. <laughs> um this is just bad news. God, it makes you wonder like if it's true, is this happening on other shows? You know, is this a company wide thing or is it just this group in particular? It's it's, it's I don't Well know. I said um uh, something critical of like the CW on Twitter, and someone was like, "Oh, well, this is this this isn't the first time the CW is something like horrible in production with this." And I think Brown Table or High Top between now, like, like they can't keep getting away with this shit. And I was just like, "Oh, have the CW done more shit like this?" Well, yeah, because I'm unfamiliar with that. That's I don't know. Um, speaking of really stupid characters and horror movies in general, don't watch the new Halloween. That's all I've been hearing. The only praise I'm hearing for the new Halloween is enjoying it ironically. Or, or rather, as a movie that is self-aware stupid. Which oh, is strange. if it's self-aware stupid, it's not as... Mm. Well, it's, it's just, I just didn't understand that that was Halloween's vibe, you know? But, um... Are we talking about, are we talking about Halloween Kills, or...? Yeah, the new one. Okay. Wait, that's supposed to be a Halloween movie? Like in the series? Or just yeah. this holiday? It's the sequel to the reboot, right? Oh. Okay. Hey, EFAP and friends. Just got through with my best friend's funeral service. Uh, don't forget to tell those you love how much they mean to you. Also, hi, Rags and Fringold. Uh, hello. I'm sorry to hear about all that, though. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. sucks. Uh, uh, a good sentiment, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Deep Sleep 1-3, Don't Escape 1-3-4, best point and click. Um, wait, how am I supposed to read this? So, <laughs> Don't Sleep, I guess, is a game, and 1 through 3, and then Don't Escape 1, and then 3 and 4? Maybe. I, uh -huh. I guess, yeah, they're, they're probably franchises. <clears throat> um... 
Pale Mewchly, Fringon, Mootle, and of course, Mad Lad Donkula. Um, Pale. Yo! Vorsh is still unironically evil. Uh, the A Train wants to choo choo choose you, and hi, Ragu. Hello! Choo choo choose, that's Simpsons. That's a very choo memorable choo episode, that one. Hey, look, oh, Lisa, you can point the second his heart rips in half. And uh, now. <laughs> that's, that's been referenced, like, so fucking much. Yeah. It's insane. That's, uh, that's a good one. Uh, Muller, you hear there's an atmospheric horror game on Steam called Chasing Static, set in rural Wales. Very positive rating at the moment. Will you be in it? <laughs> Will I be in it? <laughs> <laughs> I can only hope. Um, but hey, uh, uh, I'll have a look at that at some point. I'll put that in my notes. Sounds interesting. Uh, you guys should watch Return of the Living Dead. Definitely one of the best zombie movies. We could do um, a Romero arc, I suppose. Maybe. Um, I don't see why not. Even throw in Snyder's Dawn of the Dead at some point. We love Snyder films on EFAP. Oh, yeah. None but favorites. quality from Zack Snyder. Zachariah Snyder. And me. Did I just hear you say kill me? No, end me. Um, do you think Az has an issue with the main character having an Asian kid this time? Peepo, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to show you I mean peace, I will leave this. Hi, Rags. Hello. That's a peace offering. As a peace I like how that's become a thing. That's a peace <laughs> offering now. <laughs> I mean you no harm. Hi, Rags. Um, hi, Rags. Hello. You mentioned before that despite being both fantastic... Both being fantastic, you prefer the Lord of the Rings books over the movies. How come? Did did I? I can't. I, can't, I honestly so, can't remember. Had someone asked um, me w which one you prefer, I wouldn't have had an answer. I I don't know that I've. I remember you saying that, but maybe. I don't remember either. Mm. I'm not sure. I'm honestly. I don't know which one I prefer. It's been so long since I read the. Um, it, it's been so long since I've read them. I just. I can't recall. I just know I adore the movies. Mm -hmm. uh, you get sent back in time to one moment in history with the sole goal of creating as much chaos as possible. Where do you go and what do you do? Mm. Say so what? You, you were, your voice did an autism for a moment. What's that? What's so you can choose any point in history to go back to and you can do, um, I guess, anything you want within your, your ability, but your goal is to create as much chaos as possible. I'd probably go to one possible. of those times that World War Three was averted and make it happen. Well, yeah, because I guess yeah. I guess um, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody's heard the story, but the uh, the the Russian guy and the uh, when there was a a false like some sort of error that said that there was a bomb there, so I guess like break his legs before he goes to work, so he wouldn't have been there and the nuclear war would have happened. Yeah, you could do it like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of stuff that I could. That I could... I guess more feasibly see myself doing. Um, I guess, um, I mean, I guess you'd be interesting to change history. Like, you go to, uh, what was the theater that, like, you know, Ford's when John theater. Lewis, you just got out, like, look out, he's got a gun, and then save Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, that'd be and crazy. And then just see how, how, like, the Reconstruction era changes with him still around. Well, I was that's not well. wasn't chaos. That would just be making the world a better place. It's something that. Maybe. <laughs> it's kind of mentioned in chat, but imagine going back to like super early humans and inventing the wheel for them straight away. Oh, like, that'd hey, be check interesting. This out. Yeah, and this great, and they'd be like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, because that's gonna like it. It, it seems maybe minor in some way, but it's just like that's gonna have major repercussions, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely, it would. Or I guess, yeah, if you went back in time and started performing magic tricks, like really elaborate magic tricks to trick them into thinking that you're God, and then you spread that culture around. Nice. And call yourself <laughs> Mathulu, and you're like, I'll be returning in mm -hmm. 3,000 years or something. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking one of the big <gasps> things to do would be to bring back techno like schematics for something. Like, there's no, for instance, there's no reason why you couldn't go back to the Renaissance. And be like, yeah, here's 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 a steam engine. 
And see, you know? yeah, cause, and just be like, uh, and here's a working Steam engine, I'll give you these two as a head start, figure it out. Yeah, yeah like, because, so, yeah, and who you give it to. Because if you went back to the Stone Age and dropped in a Game Boy, that's not, you know, actually change fucking anything. Because <laughs> they get well, like, like, what do we do with it? They, yeah. Because I well, can't charge it, so once it's gone, I don't yeah, know. What they yeah, because do. how, how does a medieval person, like microchips, plastics, like, yeah. I, I don't even know what this is to, like, copy it, but you give someone a Steam Engine mm -hmm. schematic or something like that, and you're like, yeah, there's just a bunch of metal and some, you know, tubes and things. Like, yeah, you could probably make this if you really put your mind to it, and this is how it works. So, yeah, well, so I'm going to leave you with this. It's been mentioned in chat that there are instances in the past where technological advancements have occurred, but because it was too early, nothing came of it. So you need to think about what this society needs right now, and then give them that, and then see what they would do with it. Um... Oh, here's, here's, what if you, what if you went to, um, you went to, like, the Americas before uh, the Europeans came over, and just told them, like, all right, so... They're coming there are for people you. on the other side of this ocean, they're coming, you need to Hit be prepared up. for when they show up. Build walls you know? all around. <laughs> oh, just give them a bunch of tech and see what happens if you, uh, if you, like, make them prepared to defend themselves. And, like, well, they just and prepare to sabotage, like, when they leave the boats, they just start setting the boats on fire and stuff. Well, yeah, if you give them very specific information, give them the names of the people who are coming us, like, these are their names, alright? And they will come at this time, Pr be prepared. And then once that prophecy comes true, it's like, oh, we we gotta set our plan into motion. <laughs> um, watched episode six of Squid Game with my GF. Uh, cried at the end. I don't know if the rest of the episode will land, but man, I really love that episode. It's goat it's, shit. It's goat. goat it's shit. goat episode. Yeah, I also got. Yeah, that that one got me. Wow, I was just watching the last EFAB, Dankula was on too. What a goinky dink. Yes. Yeah. The return of the dank. Well. Hi, I assume he had to leave. Yeah, yeah, he uh, had to catch the last train. Ah, uh, I got you. Hi, EFAB crew, discovered the podcast five months ago, and I'm finally up to episode 144. The utter length wow. of you lads is astounding. Jeez. Impressive. Uh, P.S. <laughs> Hail Dank and Hi Rex. Hello. Yeah, good stuff. Five months ago, that's honestly Recent. not that long to be able to get through. <laughs> like, that is, uh, you've been booking, you've mm. been binging. That's not healthy. I wonder if um, that would just be, because obviously I love the idea that someone's getting loads of entertainment out of it, but man, imagine like think, looking at a show, you're like, oh, I got like fucking 200 episodes by the time I catch up, and then the day you finally catch up, you'd be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the end of that journey. Um, Cashoon is pronounced Cas un because cash un I guess not cash un cash cash un also watch 2004's cash un movie I think they recommended that last time um we may we may who knows hmm uh hey Mulder, I know you're not into slashes but I'd love to see a reaction and views on the scream series easily the best and most interesting ones I'll have plenty to say on slashes they just don't really do it for me uh yeah I'm not a fan of slashers I don't take them that seriously. Like, I could totally see us going through the, um, the, uh, Friday the 13th movies, because of the fact that they eventually go to space. That's, like, hilarious on its own. <laughs> and, like, I don't know that I'm ever going to be scared by them, but I will happily talk with you guys about them, you know? What's working and what isn't and stuff. Um... But yeah, uh, Scream is also a series I'd be interested I like Scream 1, um, because it's very aware of its position in sort of slasher culture and stuff. Persona 5's boss theme rules. Check out the track Blooming Villain when you have free time. There you go, everybody. It's almost like a country that isn't infested with wokeism is capable of producing enjoyable media. To be fair, we still get good films. We got them. Yeah, there I don't know why yeah, we do. Like there is um, no good stuff coming out of the West. Because sometimes we we can doom it a little bit like that, but yeah, yeah, we do have to push it back a little bit sometimes. And be like, hey, yep, the ones that we praise here and there, you know. It was only 2019 the Joker came out, right? A lot of good movies came out: Marriage Story, Ford v Ferrari. Parasite. Judge oh, well, I guess that doesn't count. I haven't. Well, yeah, we. <laughs> I still need to see Parasite. 1917. Yeah. 
1917, that's right, yeah. Uh... So yeah, what a shame that Wesker betrayed y'all, lol. Oh well. Hey, your name is Alice, right? Oh fuck, may I have your autograph? What is this reference thing? I know it's uh, Resident yeah, Evil, I but still. <laughs> yeah, I don't know exactly what it's trying to refer to. Oh, and by the way, there's a, an account that's been pointing out loads of major plot holes in those films that we don't, I don't think we ever actually talked about because we just didn't pay that much ones? attention. Yeah. One of the ones he said oh, was Oh yeah, like, I could totally believe that upon closer examination, yeah. it absolutely <laughs> turns into nonsense. But when you're with so many things to comment on live, you're just going to catch the most... Uh, you just, you're not going to be able to catch them. Because, I, yeah, I don't think I ever um, really looked at them that way. Like, I was just like, what's this one going to be? And I, I didn't, like, I guess we still comment here and there on, like, continuity, but one of the things they were bringing up was... Um, when we first meet Wesker, he's like the undisputed boss, and he's telling the scientist that is uh, Ian Glenn's character exactly what to do. But then he, Ian Glenn later becomes Wesker's boss. Like, it, it's like, why? And it's just like, well, because uh, uh, his star power made it so that he was just going to be the main draw of the films at that point. It's kind of strange. Which is not someone I really paid attention to. And they were worried, worried about selling the virus still when the whole world became a desert. Remember? It's just like... It's so strange. Yeah, like we, have like... To, we have to be a company. We have There are no customers left on the planet. But it's really important that we still do some R&D for this stuff for whatever reason. But um, we definitely obviously make fun of a lot of things that don't make sense in it. But this comment section on those videos has been some fun stuff to read. Because I've just been like, oh fuck, I didn't even realize that. Um, another example is the origin of the virus and the origin of the Red Queen's design. That changes in the last movie compared to how they establish it in, I think, the second movie. Uh, it's like, like, genuinely, the description is just completely different and contradictive. It's just like, huh. Hello, I'm back. Whatever, I guess. Okay, it's alright. Um, Cash In 04 is a Japanese movie, but the only country to have a Blu-ray of it are the Germans. How the fuck does that make any sense? Well, Mel oh, just come back, on. so, yeah. I'm pretty sure the Japanese were honorary Aryans, so uh, I think go. it all exactly. slots together for me. Which reminded me of like one of the best jokes in uh, uh, Jojo Rabbit. I think that's that's that might be my favorite. <laughs> they don't look very Aryan. <laughs> Between you and me, they don't look very Aryan. Um, I want to watch the CFAB live, but now I have to rewatch Train to Busan. Hi, Rex. Hello. That is a good problem to have. Hey Mola, thanks for recommending Buffy. I'm on Season 6 and Angel Season 3 right now, both good. So far, I liked Angel Season 1 and 2, Buffy Season 5 and Season 3, didn't like Season 1, have mixed feelings on Buffy Season 4 and 2. I, honestly, that's pretty much my take as well. Oh, well, sounds <gasps> like you got a similar one. What do you think about those seasons? So yeah, one bad, two pretty bad, three great, five excellent top-notch shit, and then four is like a mixed bag again. Um, and six is, is oof. Mwah, beautiful. Um, hi, are we talking about Squid World today more? Actually, I, I, I just let people know, but we'll keep doing it. You got you got homework, EFAP chat, as well as Metal and Rags. They got to do it too. Got to finish up Squid Game within a week. You got one week to do Squid it. Squid World. Squids. Everywhere. I'm You're going to touch it. The series. Mm hmm. That'll be great. But yeah, we'll be talking about Squid World next week. I mean, it's gonna be awesome. Squid World. World. Are you going to cover What If? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm um, kind of happy to just not cover Marvel, honestly. Eternals will be the next, maybe. Obviously, we'll cover No Way Home. No Way Home, that's what it's called, yeah. I was almost gonna yeah. say No Time to Die. I was like, no, that's not Spider Man. No, no Time, time to, to Home. Play. No time to come home, die. <laughs> no Game. time to Spider-Man. <laughs> um, yeah, Eternals we might cover. I don't know. Um, I get the impression that we might need to. Seems like that one's super lore heavy, so it might influence the. Well, other. have you uh, have you heard about what bad guy gets paid at the end of it? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I figure it's, it's yeah. the kind of thing I know Metal and Rags wouldn't care about. I don't know if people in chat will care. Like, in terms of I don't say care. it. I know for a fact you guys would uh, not give a fuck if I told you. Oh, I thought... 
<laughs> I thought if I would care. But people in the audience might care. Yeah, people in the audience might. Well, I know that because there's there's a there's a lot of baiting from from what I understand, uh, including um, Kit Harrington's character, like that he's he's uh, kind of like not in that film much at all. We've and almost filled a like oh later a whole screen of chat saying say it, <laughs> like, <laughs> say it, say it. <laughs> say it. All Why right, you fine. Say that name? I'll say it real quick. Mute if you really don't want to hear it. Um, okay. from what I gather. It is gonna be. Is his name Eros? Yes. That's Thanos' bro. His brother? Yeah, he's gonna be like, You killed my Thano, Dick. Now I'm all sad. See, so this is the uh, thing. I like, think it's played by. Um, lovely shit, though, so by, I don't care. Uh, Harry Styles, right? That's what I've That's heard. Like yeah. The thing? yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm not that bothered. Um, I'm more concerned if they do. Mephisto, Doom, or Galactus, because I actually which care they about are them. Going to do, which yeah. they will do. I don't. <laughs> it's inevitable. Like, I couldn't give less of a fuck about Eros. I was like, who the fuck is that? Gay. Literally. Sounds homosexual. Man, the controls on this are ass. Um. Yeah, uh, probably not covering what if no, and the second one is are you going to cover SK's homecoming video? Um. Hmm. Well, I mean, I it's well. I've seen it. I don't. And, I don't. Yeah, I've seen it too. I, uh, I don't think it's very good. It's have, shit. Uh, have also seen it. Not very good. Yeah, it was really bad. Um, uh, it's pretty bad. Yeah, fat. honestly. Yeah. What was that? Sorry. But I think it would have made a good EFAP. Yeah, probably. Um, it would be a good way to explore. Uh, sort of the. The specific, like how Homecoming does do a fantastic job of coming together. Um, it has. It made us appreciate that movie all the better. It really did remind us about how good Homecoming really is in terms of its construction and characters and stuff. There's so much that Homecoming just nails. And it's, it kind of it does impress me to this day thinking about it because it was it came out right when I was like, man, it would be nice to have more MCU movies with definitive. Uh, soundtracks that are original. It would be nice to have ones that do a better job of world building. It would be nice to have lower stakes, lower instead of like the world falling apart. And it would be nice for the interaction and the, and the world to react to the fact that superheroes are all over it. And of course Civil War does all these things, but uh, Homecoming was soon after. Because I remember Doctor Strange, I do like the character, but the film, like I remember seeing it just being like, oh man, this fucking nonsense. <laughs> like it's just yeah. like, oh. Um, but Homecoming was sort of a breath of fresh air again, just being like, thank fuck. It's not over, oh, yeah. we're still in it, we're still in it. We're interested in actually taking advantage of the world. But yeah, it's, uh... Yeah, I, I, yeah, the video reminded me of how much I liked that film. <laughs> Paradoxically, yeah. considering that the point was that it's terrible, but... Yeah, the well, arguments weren't very... What I find interesting is how much is omitted bad. in the video in terms of just... The film scenes. Well, we're not, yeah, Swap we're not interested of, in talking yeah, about yeah. a lot of stuff in that film. We're just skipping past a bunch of context stuff that could be really important that we just we don't care well, to talk about. We don't really care to talk about what's good about it. Yeah, my it's point just, was more so so much isn't talked about because I imagine it's stuff that's pretty good. And so at that point, it's yeah. just like because if it, I don't think there's a scene in Black Widow I didn't talk about, and that's why right, I'm more comfortable yeah. with saying it's it's possibly like the only film that'll po possibly beat it is going to be Endgame because of all the time travel stuff. But, like, Black Widow is about as bad as you should ever be able to get. Like, it's like, damn, you no, fucked up everything. space and time, yeah. Because they have the the song being sung by Alexia. It's like, okay, you did that. Um, they have the good performance from Florence Pugh. <laughs> like, that one more. You know what I mean? Like, these things were mentioned just because I was just like, yeah, that's, the, that's about what I pulled out of that film for being strong. Um... Mm -hmm. And yeah, Far From Home, like, if we were to specifically just talk extensively about all the good stuff in it, man, it would take a while. And so, um... It would, because that has good stuff in it, yeah. And I want to say, uh, he brought up a lot of valid f flaws that are in the film, but the thing is, like, these are, uh, th there's, there's, like, five or something in total, and it's just, like, the film does really fucking well. Um, so yeah. it's, it's still easily yeah, top-tier MCU. Like, it's, if I was to mm -hmm. oh, honestly rank it, it's probably top five, possibly higher than that. I mean, for me, it's, I think it might top be probably three? my top three, yeah. I was going to say, Civil War and Avengers, the ones in... it would try and beat, right? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, it's really good. Um, yeah, Guardians too. Yeah. Guardians, I mean, as well. <laughs> like, yeah. But I mean, I, I mean, if that video was meant to convince me otherwise, it didn't do very well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on one hand, I'm glad you guys got to watch a good movie. On the other hand, bad movies are way funnier for EFAP. Also, high rags. Hello. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But, I mean, you guys are getting one per week with EFAP movies right now of just the greatest films of all time, so no worries about that. Also, um, I've decided we are going to try and keep it a secret until literally the trailer comes out for next year's stuff, but we've already completely recorded next year's Halloween arc. Yes. Oh my goodness. And it was good fun. Um, I don't think it's a secret for what movie series we're doing, though. I'm pretty sure we've already said it before, and I don't mind people there doing that. There are some secrets. There are some surprises. Well, the secrets, I, I will say, the secrets will be presumably the cast of that, of that series. It is an yes. interesting cast, a slightly unusual one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, th I think I've already sat on a stream before it was Final Destination, so it's already, the cat's out of the bag with that. <laughs> but, uh, it, it was, it was an interesting and fun little arc for Halloween. And I, I just like the system we have set up here, where everyone's sort of listening and reacting to the Resident Evil stuff while we're recording the next one, and it, it's just... Halloween's a fun... It's a, I like October a lot, you know? I've said it before, it's just it's a fun time of year, um, but at the same time, I'm probably going to be recording a lot of arcs now. Um, I could use like two hours more a day so I can catch up on sleep. <laughs> why, why would you want to catch up on sleep? Uh, because I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, I've been... My sleep's been really weird lately like i i laid down for many hours before efap <laughs> just like between when we uh we talked we spoke last i have not been able to sleep i laid down and i closed my eyes and i, I just couldn't sleep until uh, okay. about an hour before efap started and then i was i was finally able to like oh yes i could sleep it was like nah too late i had a bit of that unfortunately i did not get the sleep i was looking for today um you never know with life sometimes, it can be a dick. Yeah, also look, know. in the orb shop they have a little GameCube. That's a Dora bubble. Oh uh, look, that was back when like when you played Pokemon, it's like, oh my game my, my uh my GameCube is there. And I can connect it to my Game Boy Advance. Beautiful in times. My little town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um Fido is another good zombie film. I don't know this one. Do you guys know this one? Fido? Zombie film? No, I don't. No, I don't. Zombie. Uh, when Tony undid the snap, how many people then sudokued themselves after finding their loved ones had sudokued yeah. themselves after... Yeah. There's no fucking yeah. way Marvel's willing to talk about that. Yeah. It would be so fucking Thank cool for... if they had an R-rated movie strictly because of how dark what they're dealing with is, not because yeah. of any particular violent or, or sexual scene. It's just it's so it's fucked up what's matter. happening. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's you you missed an opportunity to tell a very interesting story. Um, to find out about it more about that in whenever it's done <laughs> video. Bringies yeah. video on Endgame coming soon. Yeah. Coming at some stage. Uh, the Dead and its sequel terrify me because I don't want to be the only SWM in a third world country during a Z apocalypse. Oh, straight white male. Mm. I understand. I mean, I feel like whether or not you're a straight white male, you're going to get eaten anyway. <laughs> Zombies don't really matter. They're just going to go yum yum yum. Uh, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies is really good. I wouldn't mind seeing that. That sounds like it's uh, yeah. Fun. We could have uh, yeah that Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer. Yeah, there's got to be a selection of those kinds of like weird variant movies and stuff like that. Uh, you should also check out Escape from Mogadishu, another Korean movie that's quite entertaining and it's a true story. Well, well, we've never heard of it. I haven't. So a sound machine? Yeah, I've I've tried that. I just sometimes I just I just can't sleep. So I'm running a bit on fumes now. So we'll see. Well, yeah, we're on a Wednesday, the uh, full EFAP, which uh, we've been doing a lot of Wednesday um, streams recently. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, stay alive, everybody. We can do it. I think it's, 
thing is, I can sleep, but then this pesky work comes along and wants me to wake up and do stuff. It's like, no. Yeah, other worldly responsibilities really do get in the way. Yeah. Like, ooh, hey. life, ooh. It's like, ew. Uh, you want money? Better get that work done. It's like, yes. Um, I love it when you guys cover good stuff. Halloween greater than Christmas. We still cover good stuff on Christmas, too. We cover Jingle All the Way, one of the greatest movies of all time. Just saying. Christmas. <laughs> Creamy. Uh, any chance for Home Alone arc? Home Sweet Home Alone looks horrible. Owen Hyrax. Hello. Yeah, we got a new Home Alone coming out. Um, they're rebooting. I'm sure it'll be great. Oh, that's so... Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this Christmas Day you're getting EFAP movies Home Alone. I think we'll probably try and record one or two this year. Um, we'll fi figure out some Christmas movies mm. to watch. Should be pretty simple. Like, um, the Santa Claus is, is the one with Tim Allen. That's probably one we should do, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, careful, guys. If Patrick Willems sees characters behaving intelligently in a movie, he might have a stroke. He's just hes just not aware <laughs> that's a thing. He had no idea. He was like, what? How can you have drama with people who aren't stupid? What the hell? Uh, what would you say to someone who thinks that cinematography, camera angles and shiz, is more important than writing when making a movie? Uh, I mean, I, w I would obviously try and talk with them with their reasoning, but I'd probably be like, you and I are probably not going to get along very well in terms of discussing our values and storytelling, so. Yeah. And that's totally fine. Um, I would, though, ask them what their favorite things for cinematography are, because it'd be cool to check them out. Like, what scores the highest or whatever. Um, but I don't know that there's anybody who doesn't, like, go to movies, at least in some way, because they just want to be told a great story. I think you can get sidetracked with other things. Like man, yeah. us humans, we love stories. We're a bit, it's a bit of a, a bit addicted to them. Um, but it sounds like an interesting person, regardless. If, like, they, they, you know, like if we're talking like writing, that's literally like just sludge on a page, but it's really gorgeous to look at. I just, I'd be interested if they called that a good story. Because they called it a good movie, it's just it might be semantics at that point. What picks would you give slow zombies to even the odds against humans? So, probably big on super strength and super yeah. regenerative. Like, you could maybe shoot them in the arm yeah. and it takes seconds for it to heal up. Yeah, super resilient. Mm -hmm. um, or uh, they are extremely contagious in terms of the zombie, um, like, virus, whatever it is. You just can't get anywhere near them. There, it's super. It's it's very very easy to get, very easy to catch. Yeah. Where you have to just isolate yourself in the middle of the fucking woods and going anywhere near suburbs or cities, anything like that. I'll lay down my pride and be honest. Teared up when the girl was crying, Papa, at the end. Haven't cried that hard since TLJ. Why did they do that to Luke? <laughs> <laughs> you just picture you in the, just in the cinema bawling your eyes out. So it's like I know it's really cool. They're like they fucked him up. Why did they do it? <laughs> you maniacs! Oh, the horror! Uh, but yeah, this is, you know, this is a that's a. I don't. I th I'm. If we said this before, I'm totally fine with people tearing up watching media, especially in moments like that, where the whole story is about the relationship between the daughter and the and the father. Well, it makes yeah. sense. It's designed to make you feel stuff. Feel. Um, any of you interested in speculative evolution? Serena, a natural history of the world of birds by Sheath Shether or Sheetha eight 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 is my favorite personally. Speculative evolution. Is that like what? when you what speculate on where yeah. evolution could go, or maybe? Yeah, I assume. Yeah, because I speculative I, evolution. I'm not Reddit is the first thing that comes up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, apparently it's a genre of speculative fiction uh, and an artistic movement focused on hypothetical scenarios in the evolution of life. Yeah, could be interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, ba -ba -ba. hey, fringies, fringes, fringies. Oh, hey. I recall you saying that there are too many FE fighters in Smash Ultimate, but aren't there just as many Mario and Pokemon fighters as well? Their playstyles off also offer different from each other. Okay, 
Oh, the rosters for Super Smash Brothers, I think, should be dictated by the relevance and popularity of that franchise, like its influence. I think that just makes sense. Mario is Nintendo's biggest franchise. It's their most important franchise. It makes sense for there to be a lot of Mario characters. Fire Emblem only got popular recently, and even as popular as it is, it's still not as popular as Mario. They're, all of them have swords. They're different, sure, but there are a bunch of them who are duplicates, and then they just admit that they're duplicates when they have them as the Echo Fighters. Uh, it makes sense to have 10 Mario characters. It doesn't make sense to have 10 Fire Emblem characters. If I can get rid of one of those Fire Emblem characters so that I can get fucking Waluigi, hell yeah, get him the fuck out of here. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's the same for Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon has earned the right to have like 10 characters. It yeah, has. Pokemon's fucking huge. Yep. Legend of there's Zelda has more of a of right to have 10 characters. Legend of Zelda, ha yeah, ex well, there's that as well. They're all fundamentally different from one another. I can't believe when people... I remember this happened, and like it happened in 2014 or something, and I got into an argument with someone. It's like, well, Fire Emblem Awakening was really popular. Come on! Are we are we seriously going to pretend like Fire Emblem is as popular as Mario, or like as relevant as Mario, as important Not as even Mario? Close. It's, nowhere, it's nowhere near that at all. Like, if... If we have to put in a Fire Emblem character, especially when they get added as DLC, and because of that we lose somebody else that we could have added instead, like get get the, no way. I'm sorry. Like get rid of Blythe, Byleth, or whatever he's called. <laughs> put in fucking Crash. Put in Dante. Put in someone else. Anybody else. Anybody. I would much rather than just adding another Fire Emblem character. There you go. Like, That's the answer. I'm, I'm totally cool with them having fun, but the, the, I just get really annoyed when, when people say that because it's like, dude, I'm totally fine with like, fuck it. You can have like five characters, even. That's probably more than there should be, but you know, you can have like five or six characters. That's totally fine. But it's it like I don't see how that's an argument at all. But there's a lot of Mario characters. There are a lot of Mario characters. There are, and they're very different from each other. And it's Mario. They've absolutely earned the right to have that many characters in the roster. And plus, that, you're kind of cheating a little bit there, because Yoshi and Donkey Kong, technically different franchises. They are technically different franchises. They're all part of the broad Mario umbrella, but Yoshi's got his own games, Donkey Kong's got his own games. I don't even think those count in terms of taking up the roster. And if you're, like, sitting there telling me, well, who would you remove from the roster? It's like, well, let's go through the list. Mario's staying, Luigi's definitely staying, Peach is staying, Bowser's staying, Yoshi's definitely staying, Donkey Kong's staying, Diddy Kong's staying. So, who, Wario's staying, for sure. Um, so, who can we get rid of? Rosalina? Nah, we'll keep her in. She's kind of a unique character to have. Daisy's an Echo, so that's totally fine. Who are we getting rid of? Piranha Plant? Ah, uh, yeah, we'll swap him out with Waluigi, but we, we ain't getting rid of... Hey, look, Yoshi says Yoshi. That's how that's how Yoshi. Yoshi pronounces its own name. When you say Yoshi, that's not how Yoshi says his own name. Yoshi! That's well, he doesn't say it quite like that, but he says it kinda like that. I'm with you, Frankie, don't worry. Yeah. I'll get you back, buddy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh so that that's my answer. I don't think that Fire Emblem should have ten characters. It makes sense for Mario. It makes sense for Pokemon. Honestly, makes more sense. Like, there were uh, there were more Fire Emblem characters than there are Legend of Zelda characters. Oh. What? I'm pretty really? sure there are. Fuck. I think, yeah, because I'm pretty sure uh, they've only got, like, six characters. I say only. That's a, that's a decent amount of people, but, like, six. And two of them are two variants of Link. Well, there's... Like, you, you, yeah, there's Link, Young Link, and Toon Link, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they're pretty similar to each other. They're a little bit different, but... Oh, um, <laughs> no, we need more anime swordsmen. So, oh, by the way, this is a bit of a weird time to randomly put up, but I just noticed he's, he was in chat again. There's, um, this, I, I saw this by happenstance that I was like, that's not the same name, is it? There's a, a, cow, a guy called Steven Richter in, in chat. Um, just like his channel, like, ch check that out, I'm going to show it on the screen as well. It's like, <laughs> I love the idea that someone who's making these fucking things is listening to EFAB casually. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> That's um, incredible yeah. work. Oh my it's, god. What the fuck? Look at this shit. So, not that I haven't even seen Venom 2. Not that I would need to, but, uh... <laughs> this is fucking sculpture work. Dude, can you do the thing? Have you done anything related to that? I feel like that would be really neat. Oh damn, that looks awesome. Yeah. 
It's a it's, it's fucking sculpture work, man. It's fucking amazing. Jeez. Hey, um, <laughs> if you want, you can come on sometime and talk about sculpting. This is, uh... That'd be fun. Look at this shit. I'll play the role of someone who doesn't know anything about sculpting who can ask all the basic questions. <laughs> Not like us, who know everything about I, sculpting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, these guys are <laughs> these guys are Raphaels and whatnot. They yeah. can they sculpt away. I made seven sculptures while we were talking about Trent to Bazan. Can we see them? No. <laughs> Already sold. Yeah, he said he listens while he sculpts. That's fucking Good awesome, dude. Oh, no, <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's really cool. Do you do commissions? Obviously, if, uh, if it's under a million pound, I would totally <laughs> pay. <laughs> <laughs> Man, some of these look fucking great. I say some of them, the ones I've seen, because <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I was just, I was just surprised that that work is like movie quality shit. Good stuff. Yeah. Really cool. Um. Anyway, back to Mario Party, of course. Yeah. Oh yeah. For anybody who's curious, that's, the channel name is Steven Richter, and he's done a um, shit ton of uh, movie stuff, from what I've seen. I shall check out some more in my spare time. Uh, Very nice. Some say that he'll lay down a Kung Pao on unruly train passengers and that he's not very fond of fund managers. All we know is he's not the Don, but he is the Don's Korean cousin. Oh my. They are connected. The Don. It, it would make sense that the, the blood that fills the veins of the Don would somehow be going through Chad as well, you know? But oh, definitely. Only lines up. Um, Happy Halloween, Mauler, Rags, Fringy, Metal, and Dank. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Howdy. And happy Halloween. Eve up on my day off? What the fuck? What am I gonna do oh, while I God. pretend to work on the weekend? Well, well, wait, your day- No, wait, sorry, but in, um, in, in Ready Player One, it has to be off today because, you know, fuck you. You don't get to play video games. I thought that was Tuesdays and Thursdays on in that stupid movie. Alright, what's Thursday over here? I, uh... Oh, right, yeah. I, I made a mistake, but still, the point stands. You have your days off on Tuesday and Thursday, you don't get to play video know, games because of this prick. You always make fun of that, but I think mandatory times in which you are allowed or not allowed to have recreational activities is something that people will love. Uh, yeah. Ready Player One is ahead of its time. Uh, hey, look, I have mo <laughs> lots of money and a hot girlfriend, so <laughs> everybody should not be allowed to play video games. Dude, it's amazing, because you know that he was like, I'll probably play, like, Mondays, Wednesdays, uh, Fridays, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, we'll just knock off Tuesdays yeah. and Thursdays, because I'll go on dates with her. Everyone will like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I don't get that. What's that a reference to? Ready Player One. Ready we'll Player One at... Oh, I was just gonna maybe, say, we'll probably watch that free fat movies at some point, easily. That's a yeah. Fucking you terrible movie. The book is worse? No. I can believe I it. The book is really bad. Yeah. It just annoys everybody because you. I was recognizing so much stuff that I like and it just annoyed me. I was like, oh, there's the. Mm. <laughs> hey, that's, that's, that's Master Chief. Look, there's, uh, there's ready. That's like, uh, there's the Iron Giant, except. The context is totally different. Iron Giant different being used as a weapon. <laughs> yeah. It's... Hey, isn't it cool? This cool weapon that didn't want to be a weapon. Good stuff. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, like I said, we'll probably check it out. Also, um, you get an EFAP on Saturday as well. No worries. Uh, so the, the, don't worry, you'll be able to pretend you're not working then as well. And then another one on Wednesday, because EFAP's in a, in a weird time in October. Just stuff happens. Every All of the stuff. Yay. Uh, the Asian version of Chad is Chang. I think uh, Chad transcends any origin Yeah, point Chad there. transcends borders. You could be a Chad worm, you know, depending on how fucking awesome There are worm definitely is. Chad worms out there. Yeah. TFA part 4 when? I need my fix, Molly Mugalu. Uh, <laughs> no, no promises on when. So... I think we'll probably stop when I get to the end of today's Super Chats, because I would like to do a little bit more work this week. And uh, if I can shove it in where I can find it, I will. I'm not saying I'm working on anything in particular, just, just, work, just work. Uh, uh, sleep. Oh, and, and Rags can go to sleep. <laughs> um, I can go to sleep, now that I finally can actually go to sleep. Train to Hassan, all aboard the Nuggy Express. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of just fun. a train of chicken nuggets. <laughs> Dude, I, I will never be looking at nuggets the same since that happened. I will still consume them happily. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I just yeah, say you I'm... know what? You've just made me think I want chicken nuggies 
for lunch. <laughs> just just a bunch of nuggies in my tummy. Uh, Rip Chad, cue MGS3 music when saluting Boss Grave. Yeah. It's a <laughs> sad moment for everybody. The second he's bit, everybody who's watching that movie goes, no. He's gonna be Hey, look, I, I will be happy to see him in Eternals. That'll be neat. I hope I'm happy hope to see him in Eternals. I that movie. I really hope that doesn't happen. Well, to be fair, it's probably for the best. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Well, right, well... I guess it's just I want to see him doing stuff, you know? Because he's, uh, he's a cool character, and yeah. he seems like a cool dude. Oh, yeah. Paddington EFAP movie for Christmas? Uh... I've heard I many any... That's good the things bear about one, Paddington. right? The little stuffed yes. bear? I'm pretty sure Paddington is one of the highest rated films of all time. Like, oh, it's, it's considered excellent. I don't know if that, like, I have no idea if that would work for EFAP movies or not. Is it well, because it, it might just be us having a fun time with a quaint little movie about a bear. No, oh, well, I'm you on board with that. You know, you try it. <laughs> That'd be, yeah. Little bear movie. Well, let me take a look, because I just, I'm pretty sure I've, no, I don't want Paddington the area. Come on. <laughs> you should have known that I went the bear. Hey, Paddington's very fucking you know, interacted with in the world, okay? As a place. Yeah, well, yeah, because Paddington the disambiguation on Wikipedia. My number, my go-to number one stop for information is so much. Mm -hmm. There's Paddington the Bear, the character, then the TV series, then another TV series, then another TV series, then a film series. Yeah, so, um, let me, let me see. Uh, the critical reception. Oh, well, it's just got a really high Rotten Tomato score. Okay, but it has a high average score too. That's, that's something. Because Rotten Tomatoes is super useful as a metric, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, I finished Metroid Dread. Mola, have you played it? If so, please tell us about it. If not, please consider streaming it for Spooky Month. Also, hi, Rex. Hi, hi. I can't stream Switch stuff right now, but this, like, when I'm trying, I'm probably going to get a new setup eventually, let's say within the year, not sure. Um,. And when I do, I'll probably figure out how to get Switch working. And if I get that stream, I'll totally do Metroid Dread on the stream. That'd be fun. You should play it, though. It's really good. Oh, an update for chat. I finished the hard playthrough, but I didn't I didn't beat it quickly enough, so I still don't have all the concept art. Wow, you fucking loser. Oh my goodness. Should I, should I so, play hard I, mode on my first playthrough? Or would that be... You can't play it on your first playthrough. You have oh. to unlock hard mode by you beating it on normal. fucking idiot. Hey, shut the fuck up, Mewpshly. Wow. <laughs> Metroid noob. Speaking to your own mother that way. Hey, look <laughs> at the game that you're playing. Yeah. Look at it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just, it's just interesting. That's all. Yeah, that was a, that was a deep little mini game. They have that that mini game's kind of in uh, Pummel Pie, but much harder in Pummel Pie. Um. Yes. Red is 6 out of 10? Get out of here. 6 out of 10? You kidding me? Oh, no. Fuck them up, Fringy. Beat them all up. Nah, it's, it's okay. I'm, uh, Get a I'm hammer. feeling chill today. I just, I, I, I will respectfully disagree. So we got Fuck, Mary Kill, Yukari Takiba, Cheese Satonaka, and Antokamoki. I don't fucking know what all are right, these places. Let me get, let me. These could be food groups, I'm not sure. But, um... <laughs> okay. Um... So I think I'm gonna peace out now and try to get some sleep for this amazing All work right. tomorrow. Very well, so, Mr. Matul. Yeah. Uh, are we watching more Squid Game tomorrow? Are you guys around? I believe so. Yeah. Cool. That's all. I will see you then. Okay, yeah. bye bye, Mel. Sleep bye bye, bye bye. Sleep Beautiful. Um, should we just leave that one to chat? I have no idea who these people are. I don't know. I don't know who they are. Yeah. I'll read it out again. Well, everyone in let chat, me... give you a vote. I'm looking at him now. I'm gonna kill Antakamaki. I'm gonna fuck Chi So Tonaka Satonaka and I'm gonna marry Yukare Takeba. Alright, I second I that, I guess. Based um, purely on wait, casual based on... observation of their looks. But 
I just looked up the first one. It, this is like an anime character. What age are they? I, I assume they're of age. Yeah, I, I'm gonna... I don't know. The first one I looked up said they were a student at high school. Oh, fuck off. It's anime for you. No, kill that, them it, all. Only, yeah, the answers only apply if legal, obviously. Fucking everyone's yes, in high school obviously. in anime. I don't, I don't, I don't fucking tell it's anime. They could be 10 or 10,000. It just doesn't fuck, ugh. I don't, I don't, I don't, I just don't care. Kill them all. Imagine how much fun being an extra is in this would be. I've done zombie extra stuff before, and all I could think of is how fun it would be to be in. I could see that being pretty amusing, because you've got, like, free reign to just do fucking crazy shit, and you very well might actually add to the creep factor of the whole movie, you know? Like, fucking go nuts, fling your arms around, make some weird contortions, also make grumbly, horrible spitting noises and stuff. Just like, hmm. It's gonna be a wild fucking experience as a... Actor, I guess. Probably. Um, I could say you met. Uh, I guess you could say Metal lost his train of thought. Ha <laughs> ha! Zombies go choo choo. They do. <laughs> yeah, right. S e s s h e w choo choo. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do. That's how they spelt it in this. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, nice indeed. Um, choo choo train. I meant Fat Geralt, also Seth too, but to be honest, I'm not sure I understand. I'm gonna see if there was a. Oh, um, you met Fat Geralt about how Fat Geralt was the only good character in uh, The Last of Us Two. I understand, and Seth, the the sandwich misogynist, or whatever. I don't remember. <laughs> Um, American remake could be titled Train to Tucson. Oh. Train, train to Tucson. Do do. I mean, we'll have to see what they do with that. I'm not looking forward to it. Um, you see The Departed? It, the Departed was based on Internal Affairs. I've heard that. I need to see Internal Affairs, I guess, then, to see what, uh, what it's like, how it, how it compares. Um, check out An Elephant Standing Still. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's the name of a movie. <laughs> I mean, I've seen, I've seen images of elephants standing still, you know. It's, uh, sure, maybe. Watch the Swedish vampire film La Den Ratekoma In. Let the right one in. Child, uh, great child acting and cinematography. I've heard that one get recommended quite a few times as well, yeah. Um... <laughs> A daddy dank got advice for becoming a submissive and breedable femboy. I'm afraid <laughs> he's uh, he's gone, so we can't provide the insight on that one. But yeah, well, maybe next true. time. Maybe next time. Yeah. Um, other good Korean movies are The Man from Nowhere and The Witch Subversion. Have you seen them? Uh, no, no, I haven't. No, did you say you'd seen them, Fringy, or? I said, can't said I have. All right. Uh, have you guys seen Slither? That's a uh, no. I have James not. Gunn movie, no. Right? I want to see that though. Um, it's like James Gunn horror movie that I've heard is is pretty fun, but also creepy as fuck and stuff in different ways, like gross out uh, stuff in there. So I don't know. It might be interesting. Um, the best shot in the film is the zombies jumping over the camera in the train yard. Cinematography in this film is so purposeful and fantastic. Yeah, I, I honestly, there's not an element in the film that's not um, being utilized pretty damn well. You can tell a lot of work went into it, you know. Yes. They didn't lazy their way through it. Peace offering from Duba Media. You didn't say high rags, so I, I don't know. I just, I don't see it. Uh, when did Remarkable Republican fuse with Cinema Wins? Oh my goodness, the person we covered today. I mean, is it the voice? Because uh, I was just like, again. Not the voice. The voice isn't well. Uh, uh, a little bit. Regardless, he was totally doing cinema things, which is the worst of Cinema Sins and Wins put together, really. Sometimes they can say things that are interesting or true, you know. Sometimes. Oh god, sin counter, prepare for maximumtism. Yeah, I know. We got through it quick, though. It was okay. I think most people survived. 
Um, a great US movie I saw recently, rare I know, was The Guilty. Um, I'm not gonna read the premise, because that's a film I saw recently too, and I want Fringy and Rags to see it uh, without knowing anything about it. But uh, the premise is something that we've actually talked about before. Um, I'm pretty sure us three have talked about on EFAP before, actually. And uh, when I found out that's what it was, I was like, oh, this is fucking neat. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Um, but yes, everyone, go check out The Guilty, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. Do it. The new film is pretty damn good. The Dawn would have cured the zombies. Love you, EFAP. Yeah, he would have. But, um... You know, so someone, someone got in the way. Oh, someone... someone broke his hand, and while yeah. he was in hospital, he yeah. uh, he couldn't he couldn't go and help. It sucks, but no, it's reality. Yeah. You are trying to steal what I have rightfully kidnapped. Please watch the Princess Bride. It would make my fucking year. Also, high rags. Um, Hello. We, we could definitely do that. I haven't seen it. But for, I think that movie would work with EFAP movies quite well. Right. And the controls on this are wild as well. From January to October, 10 months of listening daily from episode 1 to episode 157. The expanded universe, minis, movies, and most of gaming. So much content, boys. I believe I've reached balls above Wang status. Don bless. <laughs> Hi, Rex. Wow, that's getting up there. Yeah, I, I'm just, it's just cool to hear. I'm glad you enjoyed it that much. Um, more to come. Genuinely speaking, we, we we are honestly at like 30 EFAP movies that have not been processed yet. Yeah. Uh, lifetime supply of Nuggies, though. I, I, oh, I, like if I could have a lifetime supply, hell yeah. I mean, I, mean, I feel like there's a lot of uses you can make of that. <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like Nuggies I mean, are easy enough to obtain as it is, you know? Sure, but I mean... Imagine if you had, like, a Scrooge McDuck pool of nuggies that you could just dive into. Jump in it and swim around yeah. in nuggies. Swim around in the nuggets. That's everyone's dream, I think, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah, some I mean... people want to have a pool of spaghetti or whatever. Some people want to, you know, a nuggie, nuggie pond. Some mm. people just want to watch the nuggies exist. Some men just want nuggies. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> just the size of a nuggy. The size of a nuggy, yeah. A the size of a nuggy. Yeah. Uh, have you read Hassan's stream super chats yet? Can't wait for you to read out all the funny things I called that cave dwelling knuckle dragon gorilla. Oh my god. He's a very intelligent man. I don't know what you mean. He just started a political podcast with another intellectual known as H3. H3. So I, I feel like insulting his intelligence. <laughs> Just... Yeah. Oh shit. I want, who can I challenge for a star? Luigi. Let's do it, buddy. I'm gonna lose this. Um, but yeah, we've not uh, done that yet. But we get, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. I think those are the ones that come after the, the, the next up for the catch-up. Oh, okay. I know what you guys love Jared Leto's performance in Suicide Squad. How do you feel on a rumored solo movie? No way. No fucking way. <laughs> no seriously. way. No, no way. There's no way they would do that. They Who know that rumored that? Game. Where'd that come from? I, you uh, made that up. I was gonna say, did, did someone say it and then someone said someone said that? And then it just <laughs> got around, yeah. Someone said it and the next person who heard it says, Ooh, a rumor. Whoa. Because I don't think anybody in the universe wants that to happen, okay? Just stop. Yeah. Remember when they said they'd fixed him in the Snyder Cut? Remember that? Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's good now, guys. It's like, wow. Can't believe that shit. That's possibly one of the worst lines is in this night. Why did he have him say he's gonna fucking give Batman a reach around? Why did? Why was that Snyder's vision? Why was that written down? Snyder, your vision is strange. Just tease for a movie that's never gonna happen. Oof. And isn't he busy being Morbius or whatever? Yeah, he's moving on probably. Just he can be a vampire guy. There you go. I guess he's not busy doing that because that movie's been like sitting around ready to go for two years at this point. That would be funny not if you passionately years, created it. And then they were like, it won't be released for like four years. You're like, oh. Uh, well, I mean, it was meant to come out like in July or August of 2020, but then COVID stuff and now it's coming out next year. Damn you, COVID. Yeah. 
I wanted to say thanks for helping me stay sane amongst the passing of my dad and my mum being hospitalized. Uh, watching EFAP has been a huge help mentally. So just another heartfelt thank you and a big high rags to the bestest boy. Oh, hello. Sorry to hear about all that, man. Yeah. yeah hope, I hope, hope your mom's doing better. Turn out okay. Um, hope you're doing all right and uh, yeah. Good vibes for, for, for a lot of the... That's what we're here for to a, to a degree outside of just trying to sort of break down writing and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to make your days go better. Uh, happy to see my three favorite YouTubers on stream together. Then there is that German hobo. Sorry, Metal. <laughs> Jim <and> hobo. <laughs> That's why I hired him. I was like, hey, will you take payment in the form of... Uh, just, just being here, and he's like, okay. I can pull him right off the street, right into EFAP. Chad's cousin could have saved them all, but somebody broke his hand and stole his motorcycle and he missed his flight. Oh, there you go. They made the same observation that we did. Um... SK's homecoming video is super disingenuous and gets frustrating the further you get in. He has a couple of points that aren't terrible, though. Um, yeah, so I'd say the main issue with that video and the analysis in general is that there seems to be this, um... It feels like a, uh... You're... You've misused the tools in a certain sense. Like, it is not... It is not a flaw when a character makes a decision that you disagree with, or even a decision that was kind of stupid. Um, or even very stupid. The fundamental question is, is that a decision that it makes sense for that character to have made? Yeah. Um, and, and if it's and if it doesn't, then we're dealing with a problem. So for instance, if you tell me like, this guy is incredibly intelligent, and he picks the absolute I I'll just use the endgame example because it's really easy. The final battle of endgame kind of ruins all of those characters in terms of intelligence because you've got 20 or 30 people who were really smart, and a lot of whom were tacticians over the course of a long time, like they were in the military or they have some level of experience in this, and they all just unanimously agreed to do the dumbest thing possible. Like, while failing to leverage all of the other options that they have to do, to basically win that battle easily. Like, at that point, we're dealing with a decision that's so unbelievably stupid that there is no way that I can believe that they all agree to do it. Like, it's just, it's ridiculous. It never would have happened. Um, conversely, a 15-year-old kid who's trying to be a superhero making mistakes, like, that's, that just makes, that happens. Like, that's not surprising. That's not a flaw. Yeah, just, that, um, um, yeah. that somebody makes decisions that are suboptimal as a kid who is inexperienced and in certain situations panicking, under stress, conflicting thoughts. Yeah. Uh, I find that he's... Eske just has a little bit of tunnel vision with motivation. Like, uh, if he discovers what he believes to be, like, the sort of best thing the character can do, it'll be the only thing the character should do, or would do, rather. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's just a little bit odd sometimes to listen to because I'm just like, oh, well, it's because they're characterized this way. That's why they're making that choice. And it's like, it, yeah. it is suboptimal. And like Homecoming is a film that is... Because one of the things I praised it for, I think, when I was first talking about it on EFAP was that um, their challenge was to try and recreate a Spider-Man story that everyone is kind of familiar with as an origin point, like Spider-Man 1. And so the lesson is still going to have to be learning about the nature of responsibility, but you can't just retell Spider-Man 1. Um, and so it's like, how do we do it? It's like, you also, we don't want to show Uncle Ben's death, and we don't want to have with great power comes great responsibility, because how distracting is that as a person who's watching it? You're just like, yeah, I saw this in Spider-Man 1. And so, like, in a meta sense, they're like, how can we do this in a different way? And, um, the film is chock full of Peter being, like, high on the hero life as a result of Civil War, and just making some really bad decisions. But, um... They're all, from his point of view, something that's not only and it's all part of good, but helpful. Yeah. I think that's a big thing. Like, it is not a flaw that a character has not completed their arc yet. Like, <laughs> characters making mistakes as part of stories. If well, they're yeah, working so... towards it. Like, that's the arc that they're trying to go on. They're, they're trying to overcome that. I guess a great example of this would be as Chad is heading toward the door and uh, main guy blocks it on him, I could be like, there was plenty of time to let them in. This is fucking, what a stupid decision he made. And the idea that this human being can see that there's room to let them in and then close the door but doesn't, like, that, that's just trying to create drama where there isn't any. It'd just be like, well, 
You have to think about him, his position. He's just like, I think he commits to the safer choice of locking the door on them when he hasn't thought it through entirely and just doesn't want any zombies to get through and he's panicking. There's so much human nature in a lot of the scenarios that like it... Well, to be fair, we did a lot today with that video we were covering where he was like, wow, you're taking so long to react to things. And it's like humans freeze like crazy in all yeah. these kinds of scenarios. Remember, these are people. Like, I'm meant to believe that they're people. People make... People make... Just, people tend to act rationally within the framework that they're operating in. Like, it's not often that somebody will make a decision that they recognize to be irrational. Um, so it's all about understanding what that character believes and what their perspective is. Um, Unlike a kid? I mean, yeah, like... like a, yeah, like a 15-year-old kid who wants to be superhero to be like his idols, and he's making brash decisions. And it's all part of the arc of him basically becoming more responsible. Which, like, it is not a flaw that he does things that are, like, irresponsible. Because that's, that's like, the point. He's working towards becoming a responsible person. He's doing it wrong, and the story recognizes that he's doing it wrong. It's not a flaw. Yeah, that's, I, I just, I, I think uh, SK and I, or SK and us, we, we just don't quite break things down the same way that's totally fine uh mm -hmm. you can do it the way he wants but it's just like it's just not how i view a lot of these uh these films i don't want everyone make it what bothered like you know like cap going for his suit before sorting out um the triskillian that infinitely infuriates me like it's so yeah. wrong it should not be happening and you could be like, yeah, like barely, why, it's there's not no that big of an issue, is it? And I'm just like it's just so arrogant like what the fuck are you doing this is what batwoman does dude yeah, like, time is of the essence. You ain't got time to fuck around. Like, you need to get going. Um... Yeah, and, and I... I just... I will say, though, there, there were parts in that, because, um... I don't know what this meme is, but it's, it's like some meme where... Hey, I'm just gonna repeat the thing that you should be doing in this particular instance. So, like, hit him, hit him, hit him, as, like, a scene is playing out. But, like, that, But it, it just doesn't follow, like, what's being said. Oh, yeah, in terms had, um, of what this character should be doing. Whether or not they were, like, valid in, in their moments, I would seriously, just recommendation. Um, I often couldn't make out the original scene because of this. He had, like, Tasm 2 Spider -Man over it. Spider-Man Amazing Time. Yeah, Spider-Man 2 um, thing of the whistling. I can't see what's happening. And, like, I know that you need it. It works for copyright in a way, and I, I'm guessing, like, I'm sure he thinks it's pretty funny, and several people might think it's funny. I, I just, I was often confused, and then I was, like, getting a little bit annoyed. I was just like, this is going on yeah. for really long. Um, and, like, just when doing I think, the same joke seven or eight times in the video yeah, there, as well. Yeah, so. there are just, there are ways to translate the, the joke in a more punchy way, and in a sense, you might want to try and change it up each time, right, to keep the viewer engaged. Uh, yeah. And I didn't quite get why I kept seeing Electro. I think it might be an in-house meme sort of thing. Maybe, but I mean, you should expect that people who aren't in-house are going to be watching the video. So, like, they might just get confused, you know? Well, yeah, um... But yeah, that's... I mean... <laughs> so, it's always frustrating watching it. It's totally chill. Uh, again, Homecoming and Civil War, they're just... They're films that, for years, I have listened to people try to fucking destroy them, and I'm just sitting here awkwardly like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty damn good though. Um, I don't know if you discussed Eternals this EFAP, but can you answer me this? How are the Eternals different races if they existed before humans? Well, I think they exist like when humans are barely anything, right? They seven thousand years is that the time that they keep saying in the trailers. I was gonna say so, I, I have no idea what people have, yeah. the nature of them are yet, so I'm not really gonna I say guess, much. Yeah, we'll have to see the movie. Uh, and for you, Mauler Baggins, I give you Galaglass Legends from now and nevermore, our most symphonic power metal album. May it kick ass eternally. Hmm. I've never heard of that band slash album, but I guess thanks for recommending. Recomm recomm um, let's hope Eternals gives Chad some good material to work with. It won't. I'm sorry. Nope. It won't. It'll just be Worried it will super underutilize him. Yeah, not only that, but it'll just be probably pretty shit on its own, you know? Um... May it ki- uh, Oh, wait. Uh... It would be a shame to waste a character played by that absolute legend. And high ranks. Yeah. Hi. Finish. 
Yeah, that's, uh, that's the worry. Um, hey, Morlington. Highly recommend Little Nightmares 1 and 2 for streaming. Small, fun games. They're also creatures of the long in them. Your brethren. My. You guys heard of uh, Little Nightmares? No. I've heard of it. I don't really know anything about it, though. Yeah, I'm, uh, I think I've heard of it. I'm, I just don't know much about the games. Uh, Eternals might have other races, but how is there a Latina Eternal, Selma Hayek, came into existence 60-ish, 600-ish years ago? Again, I can't comment on that until I've watched whatever well, the fuck I mean, they're the supposed to be. Well, I mean, people like, who had that tone, skin tone would exist. At the, I, yeah, I guess, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the context is. I don't think I care either, really. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know that, like, what I'm going to think of that fucking me. movie when yeah, I watch it. I don't think an issue like that could ever elevate over the well, realm of, like, that's weird, move on. I guess, well, it's just like, when we think about problems that that film's gonna have, the big one is, why the fuck did you not help when Thanos yeah. was here? <laughs> like, that's gonna be the big question. And their excuse is gonna be terrible. Well, I think their excuse that is, like, the one that they put in the trailer, we're not allowed to. It's like, that, that ain't good enough, my friend. Like, that's... <laughs> that's not good enough. Uh, like, the only explanation could be if we helped, they would have, I don't know, like, nuked Earth, like the Celestials. Maybe, and then that might be... But then again, like, if they just nuke Earth, but the whole universe is at stake, maybe that's a trade-off that you should be making anyway. The kind of things that you have to put together to justify it, you know? Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see what it is. He means the accent? I don't... Again, oh, I... I do we do we talk about how in Guardians of the Galaxy they're all speaking English? And they all have accents. I don't yeah, like it's I don't know, this is weird. You're going stuff. to have an accent anyway, so if it's gonna be something, you know. My accent is true neutral. <laughs> kind of, yeah. The mother tongue. Um, Ringy, you've said in the past that if you came to the US, you would want to go to the the Pacific Northwest. As somebody from the yep. Pacific Northwest, I was wondering, have you considered unaliving yourself instead? <laughs> <laughs> why is... Why would I not want to... Like, why wouldn't people want to go to the Pacific Northwest? I don't know. I, I guess there's some it's lame stuff up there, too. It's got beautiful natural scenery. Like, it's gorgeous. The landscapes. Um... Like, it feels like that, uh, it, it might just be because, like, when you were a kid and you watched, like, cartoons and then they have set in, like, the wilderness, that's kind of what I picture as the American wilderness, is, like, what is up there. Pine trees, mountains, bears, deer, all that stuff. Uh, you should see the great yet brutal Soviet Union World War II movie, Come and See. The child actor in it is incredible, his expression in the cover poster says it all. I've seen a video on that, uh, I, I, yeah, I think I'd like to watch that movie. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, it's not, it's, it's dark. Like, that movie is dark, based on that, uh, that video I watched about it. We still have to watch the, the Soviet, what well, would they do, the Soviet Lord of the Rings? Yeah, if you really want to. Yeah, I think they found, um... Some old USSR um, Lord of the Rings animated thing that was just like not available beforehand. And they just, I guess, they just found it in some archive or whatever. Who knows? If Nintendo asked all of you which of their IPs to make into a movie, whether it be live action or animated, which would you pick? Who would you cast as the characters for the film? Also, uh, high ranks. Uh, hi. Also, oh, sorry, it's not animated. It's a live-action Lord of the Rings from I 1991. Said... So right oh. right before the fall <laughs> of the Soviet Union. Uh, it was uh, it was broadcast once in 1991 by Leningrad Television and then thought lost, and it was rediscovered in 2021. Neat. Um, uh, question? One more time? Uh, so you get to choose one IP from Nintendo live action or animated movie and who would you cast hmm. Hmm. um i like the idea of a star fox movie like an animated star fox movie um yeah yeah you could have action in there more furry bait yeah always good um who would, you, um, who would who would voice that's, who would voice that's Fox? That's what I'm thinking right now. Fox needs to be like he Chris needs like an all American. 
You know what? You probably could do that, and it would be fine, because, like, yeah, I, I imagine think Star Fox work, being the yeah. all-American sort of, uh, mm -hmm. standard one. I guess I'm not... I, I think if, uh, for Peppy, I'd want, I'd want, like, um... I, could you imagine getting Anthony Hopkins to play Peppy here? <laughs> <laughs> like, playing the wise mentor, or, uh, Charles Dance? <laughs> Just tell Charles Dance would, would be <laughs> Andros, maybe. Uh, ma oh, god, that could be really cool. Yeah, maybe Willem um, Dafoe could be. Uh, maybe, yeah. Um, you know what? Uh, and I'm, I guess I'm just thinking like Falco. I probably want, um, hmm, hmm. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm not sure. Yeah. That's tough because I'm just thinking who would who would give, lend their voice really well to that and who, who would be a really good slippy. Slippy could be, because you could put, because Slippy could be either. Like you could use an actor or an actress to be Slippy. An actress, voiced. he could, yeah. Because uh, remember, um, a lot of like cart, like Debbie Derryberry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, her. She, she did a lot of voices, water. like Jimmy Neutron and stuff. Mm -hmm. No, Tara um, Strong was. Uh, oh wait, no, I'll mix them up. Tara Strong was uh, Jimmy from uh, Fairly Odd Parents. Um. Mm. He did, um, also the name Debbie Derryberry. Shit. But yeah, she did all kinds of, she did lots. She was, she was JJ's voice? Damn. Oh, and she's Timey's voice. I knew I recognized her from somewhere. Yeah, that makes sense. I know we've said it a few times. Timmy, not Jimmy, Timmy. Um, I know it's been said, because we've Jimmy said it a Turner? few times, but Metroid, if you had Gwendolyn Christie as Samus. You could definitely fill the height of the suit. Um, I don't know if people would want to see rather that you put someone like a more petite lady in there, and that it's a matter of the suit like maximizing more, height. More and... I don't. I guess I just I'm not fussed. Like it's not not a big I mean, deal. I think Gwendolyn Christie could pull it off. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Um, I, I guess it'd be you, interesting. You, you could make her look battle hardened pretty easy. I was gonna say you could if take you it in a little bit of a route. different direction where she's like. You know, I'm picturing her in some kind of just bar that's, uh, and she's just like the between missions, and she's just just someone who uh, not many people that talk to that much because of all that she's been through. She stays away from people. Yeah. So you, you, there's a story there, yeah. That's a, that's absolutely a story there. Emily Blunt. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. Oh, of course you're right, chat. Ruby Rose, of course, needs to play Samus. Slap a wig on her. I feel like Samus. Yeah, I don't know what Samus is, but uh, I feel like we should probably go for actresses though. Damn. What? Elizabeth. De Ooh, wait, I said I Ruby Rose, name. and you're like, we should go for actresses instead, and I'm like, damn. Yeah, she's. I don't. I don't know that. I've. I've never been convinced she does anything professional in terms of an actress. She's she just a person that turns up. Oh, stuff. I thought you meant like an actor as opposed to an actress. No, I'm saying she's very competent. <laughs> no, I see. I see that now. I thought. Oh, you mean something else? Someone I'm said Margot thinking... Robbie. I mean, she probably could be really good in that role. Don't let Harley Quinn. I was about to say, like, <laughs> man, that is a bit of a, that is a bit of a stain, apparently. Because when I think of her, I'm like, oh, Harley Quinn, fuck. Get away from Harley um, Quinn, Margot. You can do it. Hmm. I guess uh, I'm thinking like, if you did Legend of Zelda, it's like, who would you? Charles Death. I just keep thinking Charles Death is like <laughs> villains, just Ganondorf. Can I mean, you yeah, imagine like? Yeah. It, that would be awesome, yeah. And I guess it's just, who would you want as, like, Link and Zelda? It's like, I don't know, I feel like a lot of people could do that, you know? Tom Holland as Link. <laughs> yeah. Well, feel, you know. I feel like people would get annoyed that, with that, that casting at first. They'd be like, ugh. They would, but then they'd remember that he's actually a pretty good actor. He's a great actor. <laughs> and they'd shut up. And then leave him alone and let him do the role. Um, Gal Gadot as Zelda? No. Amelia Clark as Zelda. I, that could be. You need yeah. to have to stop again, and he's no. in the. You could do Amelia Clark as Zelda. That could be cool. Give her, give her a more uh, upbeat character to play. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. A bubbly character has a fun little romance. As long as Link stays mute, nah. He's talking in my movie. <laughs> Wow. He's definitely going to be talking. Disrespecting the fans. 
I, I definitely want him to talk. I want him to, uh, I want him to have, like, uh, we really build him up. Build him up and, uh, like, if you made that a series, you could easily just focus, like, the first couple episodes on, um, Link living in his little town, things going normal, we get to know his relationships with his family, and then the call to adventure. But yeah, there's your answer. Yeah, yeah, there <laughs> you go. Uh, do, do... Saw No Man of God the other night. Stars Elijah Wood as an FBI agent who befriends Ted Bundy to become a better profiler. Highly recommend. Also, don't forget to watch Fat Man this year. You promised. Fat I, Man? Did I promise that? I don't know. I don't usually promise anything. I don't remember. <laughs> like, yeah. But, make um, sure to not promise things because of how schedules go. But uh, we'll try. Maybe. 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 Big maybe. All the maybes everywhere. Uh, how about Ravenbeak for Smash Bros, Fringy? Uh, I'd be cool with that. Who's maybe Raven it's too Beak? soon, but that could be cool. He's a uh, main villain of Red. Yeah, okay. main villain of... Uh... Well, because there aren't many Metroid characters. It, like, it took five games for Ridley to get in there. Um, and I mean, you don't have many other people that... I mean, there are other people you could use, but for Smash, it's like, you know... You want to pick the real iconic people, you know? It's probably too soon, though, for Ravenbeak. You want to give it more time to see if he has an enduring legacy. You guys remember when Alternate Dimension Beth came into Season 1 of Batwoman? And I do! To, their brains and she got melting each by, other. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. And then they were going to let Alice die. But then was... she got shot by Ned Flanders. Yeah, that was definitive, <laughs> by the way, that it was like... Ruby Rose is gonna let, like, Kate will let you die, Alice. And it was like, I remember the episode being like, right then, you know? Like, we are definitively fucking against each other. <laughs> they flip that all the time. Yeah. Nah, they don't, they don't care. Lads, thanks for doing what you do. Just watched Rags vs. Arnold the First? Was howling, man, quality. Rags vs. Arnold the what? Uh, what Batman and Robin, I think. Oh, right. Oh, it's not Arnold the movie. first. It's Arnold and then I. Okay, yeah. No, that was that's the pun competition. Yeah, I remember now. That was good shit because you guys came close, but I think he beat you by like one or something. I think so. He, he yeah. It was it was pretty good. That was a fun movie to watch. That was. was really great. I recommend Batman and Robin to every household. Uh, Fat Man Free Fat Movies. This is Chris. I hate censorship. Wait, they don't let you say fat man? Okay. Yeah, because really? they've, they've had to spell Damn. it weirdly. Like, and, yeah, they're saying fat man is censored in super chats, high rags and free. That Jeez. is stupid as fuck. Wow. <laughs> What's going on? You gotta protect people from being called fat YouTube, man. <laughs> YouTube will let you have a channel where you eat yourself to death, and that's fine. Just don't say fat man in a super chat. Well, that would be mean. Uh, high rags. Hello. Fuck Mary Kill Samus Zelda Peach. Um I I'd want to marry Samus and go on all kinds of crazy adventures. Yeah. Um I don't know who has more personality than Zelda or Peach. I'm gonna have to defer to Fringy on this one. Uh then again, I, I mean, guess I'm probably not a great Zelda person to defer to because like I'm not like a Zelda right? expert by any means. Like I've actually not played a lot of Zelda at all. If you um, married Zelda, wouldn't you be like a king? And also, king of it well, it depends. So, but also, you need to which Zelda? There are a lot of different Zeldas. Hmm. Like, do I? Is it Twilight Princess? Is it? Is it? Um? Is it like Ocarina of Time? Is it? Uh, Breath of uh, Breath of the Wild. Like, which Zelda are we talking? About? Well, I mean, it's probably not to be specified. I guess you take your pick. Um, I mean, I I would uh. Hmm. I'd probably marry yeah, Samus. I'm alternating, yeah. yeah, I'm alternating between marrying Samus and marrying Zelda. You don't want to be king of the Mushroom Kingdom? Um, I, I guess that's just too fantastical in a way. Like, I can't really relate to actually living in that world, if that makes right. sense. Mm -hmm. Whereas you like, can I would like feel so, Yeah, I'd feel so out of place and, you know, um... But, I... Uh, I think I'm gonna. Hmm. Um. 
I don't know. I guess I'm, I feel like really we're underselling close. Peach. Like, Peach might be really fun to hang out with um, in her off time when she's not being kidnapped. <laughs> you think she's not you know, fun she when she's kidnapped? Cakes and stuff. Well, I'm Why just saying that she's, she's got her? other things on her mind. She's full of fun. She's got other things on her mind when she's being kidnapped. I'm just saying, like, Peach, she, she seems like a bubbly, fun person. Mm hmm. Which is, again, but you just have to deal with the kidnappings. Like, that'd be. Well, I guess you wouldn't have to if you fucked her. That would be one and done. I guess Zelda, like, looks like more of a real human being. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, um, it's really tough to choose between uh, uh, Samus and Zelda. Because, yeah. because you think about marrying them, you get to live in like in their world and do stuff with them. I think I'd rather live in the Metroid world than in a uh, Hyrule. You know, like for all of the issues with like Metroids and Space Pirates and stuff, this is a society in the future with tech and things. Yeah, um, it's more relatable to me. Like, like it's, you'd be I traveling like around, going on missions. But that's assuming that that's the case. We could just presume that they'll live in our world. In that case, I might... If they were going to live in our world, I think that I would want to... Fuck Samus and marry Zelda? Stop saying Samus. I, I just... <laughs> it's an old habit. Um, no, but that's, that's, what, uh, that's what the announcer in Melee calls her. Samus! Oh, oh you're like, right. What are yeah. you doing? What are you doing? In um, that case, where would we have learned it was Samus, then? Uh... I'm not sure. Um... But it is Samus. That's that's her name. I probably legit picked it up from a single person. Uh, well, it, when I was, maybe, yeah. I, I'm, well, I, I think I was it's reasonably up, picked I, up from the announcer. That makes sense. Well, for me, it was. This goes before then. This is talking about like the early Metroid stuff, the the Game Boys and things like that. Because I had friends who had video games and Game Boys and Nintendos and all that sort of thing, and I didn't have them. And so when they would, specifically when one of my best friends in particular growing up, when he would talk about them, whatever he called her, I probably just picked it up from him and it got just ingrained because that's how he said it. Because that's hmm. really the only time I ever heard that name was when he was talking about the character in a game. I was about to say, doesn't, is the announcer brawl that says Samus? Like someone says that. He does say Samus. He yeah. does. Yeah. All right, what a, what a strange adventure. Um, so yeah, I guess if they just transport into our world, I mean, I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> the characters, I guess, aren't thorough enough that I know what I'm looking for for each of them. Yeah. I think I'd feel bad, like, leaving Samus here on our planet without starships and space and stuff like that, you know? Like, she would just be so out of place and you it wouldn't help her fit. Yeah, I mean, but with Zelda, I feel like I could bring Mario, Zelda here you know? and be like, yeah, you know, this is, you know, she'd be able to, I guess, live more normally in a way. I don't know. I I think I'm marrying Samus for sure, actually, now that I think about it. I think I want to marry her. Yeah, it, it's really tough to decide. I'm not, I don't even think I've, I could, I don't even know. Are you, uh, who are you killing for me? Um... I think, you know, I think I'll get rid of Peach. I think I'm killing Peach in every scenario, yeah. <laughs> well, goodbye, Peach. Alright, uh, Gettysburg for War Movies e Arc. Four-hour epic featuring 5,000 reenactors supporting Martin Sheen as General Lee and Jeff Daniels as Colonel Chamberlain. It also shows both sides as neither good nor evil. Um, I haven't seen it. I have not seen that movie. Well, they're saying, would we do it for the war movies arc? The thing is, a four-hour movie? I don't know if we're going to be able to pull that oh, off. Oh, uh, that's wild. Uh, that's a lot to ask. With the we team did that time. once, it well, was really not fun. I was going to say, I feel like we could, but the people we've got for the yeah. war movie arc might want to split that into two two-hour. Yeah, because yeah, surely it won't be as fucking dull and boring as Kingdom <laughs> of Heaven, right? I thought you were going to go with Snyder Cut. Or the Snyder Cut. <laughs> Telling you, Rags, the world is not ready for that Kingdom of Heaven take. They never will be. Uh, they need to fucking rewatch the movie. That's, the people who are most outraged are the ones that watch it religiously. That's the thing. It's just. Ugh. Um, fuck, Mary kill Casca, Charlotte, or Slan, all from Berserk. What? 
Uh, give me a second. Let me open up a tab. Uh, Casca. The other two were Charlotte and Slan. Uh, Berserk. Ber Char. I'm going to abstain from that one. I have no information for that. I'll just defer to Rags' results. And Slam? No, Slan. Slan. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's take a look here. So Slan is some kind of a weird succubus demon. Oh. So, yeah, we can't do that. Because she's... Like, I guess she'll suck the life out of you. Yeah, you don't want a succubus around. They'll get you. Mm -hmm. uh, Casca. Um, and Charlotte. I don't know. I would... I'd kill Slan. Uh, I don't know that any of these people's, like, um... Uh... I guess I'd want to. Who is Charlotte? Uh, the two is it? Queen of Midland. Yeah, we're marrying her. So I'm fucking Casca, marrying Charlotte, and killing Slan. All right, there you go. Um, I wasn't gonna watch Squid Game until Fringy said it was good. Thanks, Fringy. Right. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> uh, tell Rich, t tell Sitch to give me a wrench. Um. Also, all watch Soul Station. I don't know what that is, and I can't help you with the wrench thing. I, I think is you have to donate a certain amount to get a yeah, wrench out of Adam and Sitch. I'm not sure how it works, but if you beg for it, that's probably gonna make it so that they don't give it to you. I don't know. That's my guess. Um, also, I'm all to watch Eternals and Spider-Man and Rags watch Venom so you can explain to each other what happens in other movies beyond these. That could be the new gimmick for EFAP. We just deliberately have people not watching it just so they can be bewildered. It worked well for... I mean, it, it it worked well for asking questions and keeping an episode going. I think so. Uh, it's a neat little format. Um, hey, Fringy. I remember you mentioning the idea of streaming other Metroid games on Twitch. Still thinking of doing that? Um, That could be cool. I guess the problem is that there is just difficulties with... um with doing some of them. Because, like, Metroid Prime, I'd have to set up my Wii U and everything and get all that sorted. Uh, and a lot of the other games just aren't available. You can do Super Metroid, though. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Or, or, I guess, um, yeah, there are other options, too. We'll see. I got other game. Resident Evil 4. That would probably be the, you know, next one. Moobal, if you like Rhapsody, you may like Amorphous. Try the albums Under the Red Cloud, Skyforger, or Queen of Time. Also, thoughts on the new uh, Rhapsody of Fire, the single that came out? I liked it. Um, I'm also... A person friend made me aware of Power Wolf recently. I've been listening to them. They're fucking badass. Bruh. But Amorphous. Maybe I'll try them at some point. Um, I'm replaying Fallout 4 right now, and the password for the terminal was Rags. How neat. Also, hi, Rags. Uh, wow. Hello. Also, just a friendly reminder that Fringy is a proboscis monkey, and his goo is in fact his semen. Oh my goodness. Lies. I'll be back. Lies. Lies. <laughs> um, Frick I Samus. What was that, sorry? About the well, lies. I guess we'll take Fringy's word for it. But, I was uh, gonna say, can we really trust the person that's the most biased in relation to Fringy's goo? I don't know. My cum is gooey. Mm-hmm. Uh, Frick Samus. She'd be great for a date, but she travels too much for a stable relationship. Yeah, but you'd be traveling with her. You'd travel together. Going all kinds of adventures together. Solve mysteries. Yeah, you would be great. traveling together. And your ship would be your home, essentially. And you go from place to place. So yeah. if you... Now, if you don't have a wanderer's heart, then maybe that wouldn't work out so well for you. If you want to you know, set down roots someplace, then maybe Zelda would be more your option. It, it's really tough. I mean, they're both pretty good choices. Depends on what you want, I suppose, or what you find the most... Appealing it's if we're gonna go the, into the nobody game. choosing Peach. <laughs> it's like, no. Nah. Yeah, sorry, Peach. Jesus. You're weird, Peach. Finish. Uh. 
you marry Zelda. She's a warrior princess and seems pretty mature. Kill Peach. She loses by process of elimination. That seems to be the case for everybody, yeah. Uh, ben Shapiro has a review of Squid Game now, for your information, guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just, like, if, if Ben Shapiro reviews anything, it's like, guys, come on. Gotta watch Ben Shapiro's review. Uh, what is the most bizarre dream any of you have had? Also, thanks for recommending Train to Busan, Long Guy. Best zombie movie I've ever seen. Hey, good stuff. Bizarre dream. Um, I can't remember if I've mentioned this one on EFAP before, but one of the most bizarre ones I still remember was... You have to, you have to picture, this was when I was super young, but I just never forgot it because it was such a fucking vivid and strange dream. So picture a completely, just all blackness, just all dark. Then picture like... Um, you know, like mosaic tiles, but colored all red that form a square bath, but it's big enough that it's like two meters for each side of the square, okay? You're standing on one side, vaguely balancing in and among the void, and on the other side is a really big sumo. And he is trying to get around the sides to get to you, and you're consistently trying to avoid him by going the opposite direction, but you're also wobbling because it's quite thin. Uh, I remember that dream to this day. I have no idea what it means. <laughs> How, like, I came up with it. But I was very concerned about falling off the red tile and ending up in the void. Um, but I was, you know, at the same time, I'm concerned about the sumo, so... What do you do, Rags? Like, what do you recommend in that situation? Well, you want to avoid the void, what if the sumo uh, gets you? Well, I mean, I mean, life is a life is full of risks, you know. Are you saying maybe the the dream's point was you don't know that he's trying to hit you? He could be trying to help you. I I am not a, I'm not a dream interpreter, honestly. I I hear some people do that sort of thing. I don't know. I don't put much put much stock in the whole interpretation of dreams thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm certain Sounds like woo. It was probably some kind of dream related to like the subconscious of my future in terms of stealing the Declaration of Independence. That's what I assume it was to do with. Oh, that's a lofty goal. I've seen it done by fucking Nicolas Cage, so I don't know that it's out of my reach, you know? The man is... he's impressive. He's an impressive thief of parchments and scroll work. Documentary... thievery taker. Um, oh. yeah, you got any bizarre dreams you remember? Um... I mean, I guess not, like, individual ones. Uh, sometimes when I take, uh, so sometimes I take melatonin to sleep a bit, and it doesn't help me sleep faster, but I think it does help me sleep for just longer and mm -hmm. a better sleep. But one thing I do know about melatonin is that it has a tendency to give me very strange dreams. Mm -hmm. They're very vivid and they're very, they just feel more real and I accept them just more easily. I, I'll, I will awaken from a dream and it will just be like, I was totally invested in that dream. Um, generally, they'll, they will, I play a lot of video games and they're often video game related. Uh, in terms of settings and things that I'm doing and stuff of that nature. Um, they, they could be... I just sort of, I guess none really stand out too much. Just little bits and pieces that sort of stick around. Like I'm wondering levels and I'm... A lot of the times I'll be... I'm often chased by things. Um, uh, I'm trying to get away from them. Uh, Zombies. Something like that. Something. I can't even remember what. But, um... I wouldn't go as, to, as far... I, would, I won't go as far as to say they're nightmares. Because I don't really get nightmares. But, um... I get those those creepy dreams that I'm not... Not too broken up about when I wake up. You know? Um... Happy to be out of them. Mm -hmm. Just weird, weird ones. A lot of running away from things. Things just chasing me a lot. Um don't know why and I can struggle a lot a lot of struggling 
Who doesn't see? Yeah, it, it's weird. Um, yeah, yeah, it just doesn't. They don't stick with me that well. Just little bits and pieces. Yeah, no, same. I, uh, the only ones I tend to remember are the ones that I start talking about after they've happened. If you know what I mean. I'm like, and then I can remember them. But some dreams I'll have that are really crazy and vivid, and then I'm just like, I don't remember what the fuck happened that made me feel that way before. But yeah, down it goes it's, into the memory hole. Yeah, it's like um, it's like a memory that like a half-formed memory that you've forgotten and you're just sort of trying to pick up the pieces, but mm -hmm. it, they're very elusive. Uh, Maybe that's the... Times, particularly when you, for me. When you retell them, it's that you're copying a temporary memory into a permanent one sort of thing? Something, I don't know. I don't know, there's probably I, I, someone I who knows more about this. I begin to know how it, how it works up there. One thing I do know about dreams that is quite consistent for me is that when I fly in dreams, I have to flap my arms. All right. Bring you got any weird dreams to tell us about? Nope. All right. All right. I got weird dreams, but I ain't talking about them. Because you don't want people to know your secrets. Um, I don't know. Dreams are weird. Okay. Uh, have you played Soma yet, Frongus? Um, no, I haven't, but I will. So it's the best time of year, you know? You're too busy playing Metroid. Yeah, Metroid, me, 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 me. Look at that silence. That's if you, if you right will dread, you'll play Soma. Exactly. Hmm? Question for me. Just... Who do you think would win in a fight yeah. between X, Parasite, or the Flood? Um. Probably the X Parasite, they've got certain advantages. Um over the flood I, I'm not sure though I have to think about that one and the last one for today says boo oh oh that's sorry that's yeah, that I didn't mean to scare you guys you should have a trigger warning yeah jeez um but yeah that's probably gonna we'll wrap up there we got um I, I know so it's, it's five hours and a half you know it's just the shortest stream ever made but uh, there's just a lot of things that I gotta get done. Rags has gotta go back to the sleepy town. I'm sure I everybody collapse, yeah. in chat has, has just got places to be because it's a wen Wendy, as they say it. But uh, like I said, you've got uh, an EFAP this Saturday and an EFAP the next Wednesday and an EFAP the Saturday after that, which will be the Halloween FAP, which will have homework too. But uh, we'll tell you about that on the next EFAP, because that's easy homework yeah. compared to Squid Game, mm -hmm. which all of you, every last one of you in chat, you gotta go watch Squid Game, okay? So you'll know Do what it. we're talking about on, on yeah. next week. You don't yeah. wanna get lost in our conversation. Also, this Friday, Resident <gasps> Evil Afterlife. They oh boy, number the, four. The second best movie in the franchise. Just fucking flawless, excellent. Just, oh. <laughs> Believe me, guys, you cannot wait to see the wondrous film that is Resident Evil Afterlife. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else to, to, to mention. There's just lots of things happening. Uh, the 28th, I think I'm streaming the stupid fucking game with Metal <laughs> that comes out this year. Um, the the uh, dark the pictures, House right? House of Masters, right? Then, oh, yeah. um... I think I've been invited to Friday Night Tights with Drinker, so that's going to be my f Thursday, then Friday, then Saturday is Halloween Fap, and then Sunday... Sun did we yeah, Sunday is Halloween 31st, that's when me, Rags, and Free will be playing Aliens Fire Team, or whatever it's called. Wait, is that half- Oh! I might have made a mistake, we'll have to talk about that. <laughs> um... Oh dear. Yeah. Um... But anyway, that's all stuff to come. Thank you for joining us. And now I will read the last two. Have you ever had sleep paralysis? No, I haven't. No. Uh, Fringy, EFAP con when? Wait, what? EFAP con? Like... I, d I don't understand. What does that mean? They're asking you when you're setting up the EFAP convention, I guess. I'm not yeah, setting it up. <laughs> <laughs> I assume he's not gonna set it up. Uh... If a platypus fought a monkey on the river shore, why did the alligator leap from the tree when everyone knows the croc didn't leave from the river? Mm. And the answer seems obvious Got to me. me. 
Frags, what do you think? Three? He just said he had gone for a second. Oh. So anyway, thank you all for watching. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you next time. Good night and goodbye. Bye.